So let me start off by saying something very important, uh, which is going to be part of our introduction here. So the concept of a great harvest is a concept that we get from the Bible. And one thing I want to point out about this concept of a great harvest, right, is that it's also called a great soul harvest. And it's also called, a, and it's also accompanied with the great Passover and something called the great feast of souls. Now, before I even go any further, let me just say everything I'm about to say today may be wrong, may be a lie. But what I'm, I am going to do is open up my brain to the many possibilities of what could and can't be in our reality. There's a lot of mysteries about our world our life, just a lot of things that make up our reality don't make sense. And some of them do make sense, which leads to questions that, you know, it's just a lot of investigation. But trying to make sense out of our reality sometimes require us to reach brothers and sisters. The people that run the world think so far out the box that when you're on to what's going on when you're hip to what's going on as far as technology and science go if you're ahead of the curve when you bring that back to your friends they think you gone crazy but you ain't gone crazy the people in power are just some crazy people experimenting with some crazy stuff weird ideas and agendas and we're going to talk about one today I want to talk about the concept of a great harvest because the time that the Bible called a great harvest would be the exact time we're in right now. We would indeed be in the time that the Bible referred to as the great harvest. But what exactly is the Bible talking about? That's what I'm here to break down today. And we're going to be talking about the deity called Noah. And we're going to be syncing together Noah to the God and new and to the Reaper and Saturn and to the agenda behind Tesla Motors and Elon Musk. Um, there's so much we got to go over today. But the reason we're going to do that with Noah is because Noah is like the second Atum or Adam to give birth to a new generation of humans and plant life and animal life and all that. Noah represent another reset. Technically, everyone on earth today are descendants of Noah and not Adam. Noah represents the human DNA shifting, being rewritten. A different this would be on an evolutionary timeline moving from one type of human to the next. So if you go on from like Neanderthal to Australopithecus, you're dealing with a different type of human now. Different gener this is how we're establishing the generations of man based upon how the government so social engineering during that time. There were many great resets on Earth, family. And you just going through one in your lifetime. Noah represents a great reset that took place in the ancient day. Now, the same agenda has been achieved with all of these resets that the DNA of humanity has been terraformed as well as the trees, plant life and all of that stuff. Now, how they achieved this terraformation in ancient days may, may have used less sophisticated technology, but they got the job done. 
and we can read about these great resets and religions and even historical events such as mud floods and, and etc. The concept of a great harvest is a concept that was directly created by people in power. In other words, it wasn't a concept created by wrecked civilians or peasants in the society. When they talk about a great harvest, it come from the medieval church. And now here's where I'm going to blow you away. For 7,000 years, they talked about preparing for the hardest in a form for the harvest in a form of spreading indoctrination. So if you want to think about where we at today with the technology, I've been talking about mind uploading and how they're trying to capture human consciousness and transfer it to a computer. Very evil agenda. We went over it a lot. We're going to go deeper into it now because it takes thousands of years to get humanity indoctrinated to a point where they willing to hand over their souls. So they spent the last 7,000 years creating fear, propaganda in the form of our religion and sciences so that it'll make our perception of reality fear based to the point where this type of technology they introduce and now makes perfect sense to us. Whereas an ancient person would totally laugh at it and understand that it was a threat. In other words, telling an ancient person that there's any kind of reason why you need to transfer their consciousness or their soul to anything. I don't care if it's a computer or a tree or a rock. I don't care what it is. Anything. Anything, anything, man, you're taking my soul or consciousness away from it, transferring it to anything, a flashlight, a pen, I don't care where you put it. You would, I, bro, you would be standing there till you blew in the face trying to convince an ancestor why it's a good reason to do that. So it, you have to spend generations downgrading our consciousness to a level where we can be so ignorant to even see that as a solution for a problem that don't exist, by the way. Because death ain't a problem. It's a reality. Because everybody that's living got to die. And you know what? When we talk about mind uploading in a minute, you'll realize that in the future when they crack fully crack this code, they'll say one of the side effects of this technology would be they use another word besides death. I'll read it to you later, but it's basically we got to kill you. They, they say one must be euthanized in order to achieve immortality. So, the Bible tell you the same thing is say you got to die, man, if you want to be born again in eternity. So this concept of immortality through transferring your consciousness away from the earth and out your body is an old one that the church been having. And now they got the technology to bring it forth on a level we couldn't even imagine. We got to talk about this, y'all, because they talking about it. And if you think your soul is important, like and share the video might save someone's soul. Literally. Let's talk about the great harvest because the great harvest is a sick thing. Like I said, I'm going to reach today. Let me go and do it. I don't care if I get crucified. Y'all, at this point, I believe that all of us are not really fully human, guys. Now, you may crucify me for that or whatever, but for a long time, I've been hearing about the concept of archons living amongst us or interdimensional beings. And I'm so convinced it's true. There are some beings living on this earth. They look just like you, smell like you. They human. You couldn't tell them apart, man. But the consciousness inside of that body ain't shit like the rest of us. It's a whole nother foreign thing to this earth that don't even belong here like a virus in your body. 
I mean a true human, the consciousness in you, what makes you a sentient being, it's compatible for a merciful planet, a loving and equal planet of life forms that live in a, a unison cooperation and they had a heavenly type of setting here on earth how man lived in harmony with the animals was even plagiarized in the genesis story you know and how the earth was fruitful and it was just an abode so that's the spirit of this earth of what we call terra gaia the energy that it gives off is one of compassion and mercy if you're really in tune with the vibe of the earth and you're not operating under the indoctrination of these archons, you know that's true. If you're taking the time to smell the flowers, then you know that there's a lot of people who are totally detached from this earth. Now, if I was an alien or interdimensional being, I would be here in flesh, but not in consciousness, meaning the consciousness that brother Sanchez has exists on a dimension that's intertwined within the earth realm. I'm truly an earthling. So are you. Some of us here have human bodies, but we're not earthlings by consciousness. Every animal and insect damn near is an earthling by consciousness, but there's some people who consciousness is totally contrary to every true sentient being on the earth. And it and these group of conscious beings didn't always dwell this earth. There's a group of humans of all colors and creeds controlling the earth in, in, in secret cabals and their consciousness are foreign to the earth. It's totally contrary to the system here, which is why they got to terraform our world to make their self compatible here. Just like they showed you in the old alien movies, the aliens had to invade earth by invading the human body first and blending in with us. And once they was able to terraform earth, they didn't need the human bodies no more. They can show they true selves because now they done transformed our earth to something that they can habitat now in their fle in the fl in their fleshly form they tell you that the devil will show his true self in the end of days and now the government is, is talking about aliens are real now i do think there's a group of archons on this earth living amongst us and just like the movie Avatar, how the humans went into the little alien planet in the Avatar body, I think they're here in these human bodies blending in with us. A lot of these politicians, royal fa all of these royal families, they're not like us. Whatever these beings are, they're new to this earth. And when they came here, they had some type of knowledge of evil that we didn't have. And they were masters of this new thing called evil, which we didn't know about. Um, evil always existed here, but there are degrees to evil. And they, they moved the world to degrees of evil that we didn't even fathom before they arrived. Evil is now the new spiritual system on earth. But I want to talk to you about the great harvest because what I'm saying about these archons, we'll talk about that more later when I get into Anu and the Anunnaki, what they really are, these interdimensional beings. This God, Anu, another form of him is El, the Hebrew God El, and another form of him is Yahweh. The name Yahweh literally means tetragrammaton. We're going to talk about that later because that's another word for time matrix, which is what we're all under, which is what the royal families created. This is going to get very deep today because the concept of a great harvest 
is something a lot of people celebrate. But after this video, it's, I'm going to be honest with you, it's going to really kind of rub you in a kind of frightening way. Now, we talk about Saturn being a god that eats up souls. Now, when you have uh, a god like that that's feasting on souls, you got to picture the concept in your mind of how a whale opens its mouth and, 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 and in that one swallow, it takes in billions of plankton. A soul harvest or what they call a great feast don't mean Saturn ate a few souls. It mean that this thing going to be gobbling up souls like numbers you can't comprehend that the earth going to basically become damn near wasteland. Now, what if I told you, even though that sound like some mythological horse shit, that the scientists are actually planning for that right now. And they're saying that if the 2045 initiative succeed, then human will Human beings will be, most of us won't even be living on this earth. Most of us will be living in virtual space and in and, and, uh, aerospace. So we find that the things that the science are trying to manifest in our time are things that we uh, read in the Bible years ago that they were talking about and even things that were said to come in the book of Revelation for the end of days. With that being said, one way that was said in religion was in the form of a great harvest or what they call the great soul harvest. Now, this is also synonymous with the rapture. In a lot of churches, they teach that the great soul harvest is when Jesus returned to pull all the ripe souls from the earth. I never paid attention to why they called it a harvest, though. Like, why didn't they call it a great soul gathering? It never crossed my mind that this deity called Jesus or Serapis, many in a lot of communities call this God Yahweh or El a fifth dimensional extraterrestrial that literally eats human souls who are ignorant of his magic. That's something to really kind of think about. That's a concept called soul harvesting. In some communities, they call it the Saturn Pac-Man moon matrix. But today we're going to break it down so deep. But we got to crawl before we walk. Just bear with me now. As a Christian, I was so happy at the idea of Jesus coming back to rapture us uh, saints and take us to the new kingdom in the clouds. And I never paid attention to why it was so why it was called at my church the time of harvest. Because that is usually a time when we talk about a great harvest, or what some denominations call it the great feast. I never understood until now I even thought the question why is it told to us like Jesus is going to eat us up I mean it's if you really think about what I'm saying it's kind of uh, weird if Jesus coming back to get us it will be a great gathering why will it be a great feast or a the great harvest feast. Are we going to be eating dinner? No. See at my church, it was just the concept of your soul being raptured by Jesus. It was called a harvest or the great feasting time of. So it, it was like, what is this eating concept involved or harvesting? Um, see, like I told you a minute ago, 
Humanity as we know it has a defense mechanism built into it that's so, so powerful. And that is the mind. The past 7,000 years, you had something called government. And for the first time on earth, humanity as a collective had their minds governed on this earth for 7,000 years. And our minds have been studied. People know us more than we know ourselves. Government, they govern our mind to be able to, the purpose of governing our mind for 7,000 years was to be able to bypass it. Since the mind is there to be a, 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 a protector for the soul, can't nobody steal your soul without tricking your mind. Your soul can be taken from you, but the only way a person can do it is to tri trick your mind first. Your mind, but before you become a sellout, brothers and sisters, this is naturally built in all of us. Before you give your soul away in any way or form to a other, you're going to ask hella questions. And, and, and a lot of these people selling their soul I ain't going to lie. The people who buy them paying a pretty penny for it. So the mind ain't really the goal of the people in power. What they want to possess is our souls. But you can't do that without getting through the mind. The mind is standing in front of the, the soul like, no, -uh, you can't take that. I'm his I'm the soul's bodyguard. So when somebody come around with some some witch, some wizard come around talking that magic talk and trying to get you when the moment the human feel like their soul is being jeopardized or they're compromising their dignity, their moral character or with this new technology of of uh, mind uploading. There's something in the human that a, a red flag go up. Even the people who are the most indoctrinated uh, don't trust mind uploading quite fully. Because our mind is so protective over our soul. It know once you give your soul away, that's it, man. Is That's it. So your mind asks so many questions. Like, you know... It's so crazy how they have to fool you to give away your soul. Even in music, the contract is thousands of pages long. And it's in a secret language that the rapper don't understand. Because they know if he understood it, no amount of money would make him sell his soul in a lot of these cases. Because the mind is just that powerful. No amount of money would allow your mind to come, always come to a rational spot to keep the soul because it's the most valuable thing. Ain't no money, no gold, nothing more valuable than the soul. Your mind know that. So that's why they know it. It, it took them 7,000 years to conquer that defense mechanism called the mind. And here we are now in 2021 willing to hand over our souls. We ain't quite there yet, even though we real dumbed down. Remember, the mind can be tricked with a lot of things. The mind uh, can't get the human to hand over its dignity to these folks. The, the, the mind can be fooled to get the human to hand over its identity to these people now you thinking you somebody else you want to be Beyonce you was fooled to to idolize these celebrities so now you just gave them your identity they 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 they, they got you again the, the mind being conquered in that area so they can conquer a parent's mind and make them hand over the children they can conquer a nigga's mind and make him hand over his life in war to Uncle Sam and sacrifice his life for the country. So the mind can be food to make you hand over a lot of valuable things, brothers and sisters. But the hardest thing to fool the mind and make you hand over is the soul. The dumbest idiot on earth with a NASA shirt on. 
would feel some kind of way if he really knew his soul was going into a computer. Even uh, even that, see, you know, <laughs> nature built us that way to protect your soul. That I mean, once you hand that over, it's literally it. That's why the mind is so hard to trick to hand that over, right? So how long will it take to fight the mind to get it to finally hand over the soul like they got the mind to hand over your identity, your respect, your morality, and all that other stuff? Well, the mind will hand over a lot of things if you give social engineers 7,000 years to study us and rule us. Okay, but when you're talking about bypassing the mind to gain access to the soul, you might as well put your seatbelts on. That's going to take a few generations. It can be done, but it's going to take hell alone. And they've done it. It took them approximately around we go 7,000 plus years we're at now since they set out to achieve this thing. And here we are today and 7,000 years later and it took them hell alone, but here they are. That's how long it took them to convince us generation out the nets with propaganda and science and religion and fear-based propaganda that we need to hand over our souls. So now let's get into the deeper aspect of this because the only way you're really going to understand how deep this goes with sacred geometry, syncretism, and etymology, in which we're about to get into at this time as we talk about the great harvest. So Eagle's theory was to create a problem so that you could create the solution What if I told you there was no such thing as a solution? A concept of a solution is as new as a solar system. Now walk with me for a minute. All right. In a world where problems didn't exist. Because Mother Nature created a perfect earth in antiquity. There were no problems to solve. It was a heavenly abode before these archons came here interdimensionally and started coming into the human flesh via conscious. We're going to get into that in a minute. This happened in 7,000 years ago. The royal families that rose up out of Samaria and Egypt and all that told the people that they weren't for this, from this world, y'all. It was spiritual systems written around these first families as if they were people that fell from the sky. Even in the Mayan world, the uh, priestesses and priests that rule the Mayan world had elongated heads like the pharaohs did. And the Mayans said that their gods descended from the sky. All royal families had a mythological story surrounding them that had the people worshiping them as fallen angels. So when you go look at different manifestations of like Norma and the Sumerian uh, kings and all of them, they got wings and horns and because it told you Satan would be the ruler of this world. But rulers need to be plural. We finna be deciphering all this stuff to make it make sense for y'all because the people ruling the world today, they ain't like us. They are the children of old interdimensional 
beings that like when you die, you leave your inheritance to your future generations and children. But a lot of these royal families are the same conscious beings coming here over and over again in different bodies in different family generations. That's how you get the concept of incest. It, it, even in the old alien movies, when the aliens invaded the earth, the alien species had to practice incest. So like, hold on a second, I'm doing something. So you got different kind of aliens, right? And a lot of aliens practice incense, incest in order to reproduce. That was a scary movie about this mama and son who were like these demon aliens from an underworld. I forgot the name of it. It's an old ass movie. It used to come on as a child, as a child. And the mama and son was also lovers. They were basically demons from another world. And they were here doing, they were doing human sacrifices and kidnapping people for their little blood rituals. That was a good movie. You ought to watch it. I'm going to try to, find it but since they weren't mama and see for, for for the son to be born here the mama had to hijack a lady's body that was a demon that came to the earth right and she took over this lady's body and the lady stopped aging and it just became this demon inhabiting her body but later on in the movie she gave birth to this little ugly little demon, but over time it grew like human flesh around him or whatever. Now this is an old move. I don't remember all the parts, but I'm giving it to you roughly. Anyway, when she gave birth to the son in order for them to reproduce more, they type on the earth. The son and her had to have sex in the movie. Oh, so it's showing you a scientific reason for why incest would be necessary. Now, Noah represents a great reset. Noah didn't put no strangers on his ark. Noah had all of his family on his ark, yet they told you the entire earth still got repopulated. Oh, my God. Which mean Noah would have had to run up in his own daughters, man. Now, we know there were humans on the earth and that this flood story was mythological. But what we want to point out is maybe they're telling the story of how they have to reproduce their generations. Because when you read the Bible, you're reading the secession of some sort of royal alien generation starting with Adam. Adam was the first so-called Anu or Anunnaki. And Adam wasn't born. Adam was created by the hands of God. And this is can be deciphered as a scientist. There were humans living on the earth. If you think Adam was the first man, then you silly. So let's decipher what Genesis is telling us. It was the beginning of a new prototype of human. Something was happening on earth where the gods, which is their word for scientists back in medieval day, the word scion means God. Scientists were gods. They wore white robes back in the day like priests. And they wear white robes today it, with their lab coats on, these scientists doing experiments. Back in the day, you wouldn't call a person doing all that lab work a scientist. You will call them a god in medieval day. So we got to decipher this stuff to see how we still in the medieval time. Scientists 
scientists were experimenting on rewriting the human DNA thousands of years ago, and they achieved it. They've been tampering with us like guinea pigs longer than we know. Longer than we want to believe, which is why the humans today are born so different than the humans we read about in antiquity. It's almost like we're foreign to the very earth we born on, whereas the people in our, our, our original humans, you can drop them off in any jungle and they'll live. You know, like when you catch a bug in your house and you can put it anywhere back in nature and it's okay. Or you know how if, if I capture, if, if you find a, take an animal from anywhere in your state, take that, that animal out the wild, try to domesticate them, then say, okay, I want to drop this animal back off. Don't you know you can drop that animal off any fucking where? Long as it's in nature, it's good. You can't do that with humans today. It's almost like we've been terraformed so much and been downgraded so much at this point that if you don't drop us off by the nearest city, where, where McDonald's and the vaccinations and the doc hospitals at, we won't be able to live. Now, it's a long process of how we get to this point. And what I'm telling you is the way we've been programmed generation out the next for 7,000 years has led to a point now where the way we see our reality, we ready for this new technology that they call soul harvesting technology. It takes so many, so many years to get humans to a level for them to collectively hand over their souls to where you can have this great feast of souls like what we read about. And that's what I'm telling you where we at today. Now, let me get into this great harvest. I'm just going to read around. This is kind of open research. And we're going to get a lot of uh, clarity from here. So. Let me just read this one. It says the great controversy of our day is when and how will Jesus come? I have studied this subject over the years. This is written by uh, Mike Bickle. All right. And I'm reading this from an article called uh, the book of Revelation and the great harvest. So check this out. I'm going to skip a little bit. He just given a little intro. Jesus said he couldn't come back for the souls on the earth until everybody had faith. Why would he say that? They can't have a massive exodus of capturing human consciousness into the beast computer with this Neuralink tech and all of this other stuff, which I'm about to get into in a minute. They can't have that. If we don't got faith in science, y'all remember science just mean God. It's saying the Bible, God can't come back till we all have faith. Our the great harvest won't be possible to the faith get to a certain level. Jesus even said, when I come, will I find faith on the earth? Because if Jesus ain't got faith, if you ain't got faith in Jesus, he can't save your soul. Listen, man. If you hanging on a cliff, whether you got faith in me or not, my nigga, I can save you. You need to ask yourself what kind of salvation is that that requires faith? Because no other salvation require faith other than the kind we reading about with this great harvest. See, this the kind that gets you to hand over your soul. If I wanted to save you out of a burning house, whether you got faith in me or not, I, it don't mean a damn. I, I'm going to save you, man. If a man want to save a woman who getting raped, 
it don't matter if she say, well, I got faith in him that he can succeed or fail. He going to beat the dude ass and save her. And whether she had faith in him or not. Salvation can come without the faith is what I'm saying. What kind of salvation needs your faith? The kind would require you to hand over something. Because for you to hand over it, you got to trust me. Give it to me, man. I'm trying to save you. Give it here. If you hanging on a cliff, I don't need you to hand over nothing. I'm walking over there pulling you up and you don't care if you got faith in me or not. What kind of salvation need your faith? I'm trying to school y'all. The kind that need your soul. It ain't hard, folks. Just think about it. They can't take your soul from you. You got to hand it over to them. And in order to do that, you got to have faith in them, man. You ain't just going to give them your soul without trusting them, no faith. That's why you got to have faith for, the, for Jesus to save you. I'm showing you how all the world religions is going to culminate into this situation and revelation in our lifetime where people going to actually rewrite the doctrines to remember now, no matter if you're a Buddha, Christian, whatever, they all believe in science and trust science. The Dalai Lama is part of the 2045 uh, mind uploading project with Elon Musk, and we finna talk about that later. So on one hand, all the religious leaders teaching you that they God's going to capture your soul. But on the other hand, all of them working with Elon Musk and Mr. Dimitri in Russia. We finna talk about them in a minute. Jeff Bezos, I got a whole list of people involved with this country's uploading. I'm finna go deep today. So we in the time of the great harvest of souls. They got us ready now to a level now where humanity ready to. Uh, for, for the CERN portal, these archons ready to fire up their CERN portal and open up a wormhole that connects our dimension to whatever world they came from. And once you end up on the other side into their world, I'm telling you what I've been reading. It's a very barbaric, evil place where it's eternal torture and suffering. And that's exactly what they're preparing us to go into. Now, watch this now. Y'all think all of this sound crazy, but by the end of this, you're going to see. Now, check it out. It say, and I'm just reading random things. It say, many are prepared to escape rather than impact the systems of the earth, giving dominion to the enemy of our souls rather than restore the dominion that was given to Adam in the garden. Lost at the fall of man, then restored by the work of the cross and the resurrection of Christ, the second Adam from the dead. See, this is how Christians think. They got part of the truth that we fail in consciousness in, from the Garden of Eden. Think about that. The great fall is clearly saying a fall in consciousness. Today, they got technology that's called consciousness uploading which is literally your consciousness falling into a hard drive computer into a lower state. They call it a SOC SS. They got a term for it in certain arenas called SSL, a solid state technology, SST, uh, storing virtual information in a solid state, right? That's a big one. How is that possible? I mean, once your consciousness is transferred into cyberspace, it appears in a solid world. Our world is based upon the same pr principle. This is real technology. Like you can live out your life in a computer simulation and the air inside of there can be smelling just as real as the air here. They can simulate this thing down to the T. It actually make make the uh, one in, in, in their computer system a HD version, they can enhance reality and make actually their version of reality in the simulation better than this one, which would bring a, a bigger incentive for people to now 
partake in this worldwide exodus. That's the initiative. They said they want to depopulate the earth by 2050. The 2045 initiative is just that. If it succeeds, there'll be an earth of almost a billion people left. Now, it's 10 billion people here. People ain't enough holes in the ground to dig that many graveyards. I don't think this depopulation agenda is them murdering up everybody. Yeah, a few, a lot of us percentage going to get murdered and die. That's to scatter the rest of us into the computer. They got the harvest souls. We used to fish like that. You will have some of your buddies go down a river. We'll set a net a few miles down a river on the other side with the other buddies. And the ones jumping in the river on the other side will scare all the fish our way. And all the fish are running the net. So you got to kill human sacrifice. You got to kill some to kill a few to scare the majority. Now, this depopulation agenda, they ain't got enough bullets to murder that many humans. Ain't that much disease possible. That's like trying to get rid of every blade of grass on the earth. Impossible. You could do it, though, with mine uploading. If you got most of the world trusting government and science more than they uh, alone and your and their religion that they live by is in, in unison with that science agenda and U.N. agenda, you got them. Most of the world are hand over their soul into this this new system. Because they. The part that I said earlier. They got faith in science or faith in Christ, which is technology. Most of the world do they are religion, religious leaders trust science. Why wouldn't they? Jesus. If G think about it, right? It tell them to trust their government authority in the Bible. Which is why most religious folks uh be so hip hypocritical and uh, go against these scriptures to have more faith in medicine, science, and etc. Up, hand over their soul and upload their mind with this new technology, despite the Bible warning about it in their revelation book, because the, the people who wrote the Bible knew that they were social engineering the people to a point where they can tell them in the book and they still wouldn't understand the shit. Most of these Christians today, they're not woke. So, you know, the Christian serves a God that's a healer, but they go to the doctor to get healed. They God wore a white robe and was a healer. But when the Christian gets sick, they go to a hospital and the doctor got on a white robe and that's who heal them. And the symbol on the hospital is a cross, a medical sign. I'm showing y'all that this system is what we call in Christ the Savior. The, the deity is personifying a system of government, of medieval church rule that we still under. It's time to wake up. I hate to bust your bubble. Let's talk about the great harvest. See, um... There's a lot we got to talk about when we talk about the word harvest. We got to get into the etymology. All right, let's um, let's read it. Harvest me literally means a cutting. You know what? Let me do this for y'all. This is open research. Salutes to you all, brothers and sisters.
what I'll do real quick is share with you so that you can follow along. All right? In case you want to follow along. So the word harvest means kasia. I'm reading right here from the top left. The Hebrew word harvest means kasia, which is interesting because the word kasia is also the word kaiser, which is another word for ruler. K A I S E R. Now, the word kasia and the word kasia became a modern term called Quaker. Yeah, the pilgrims, the Quakers. Yeah, these are the harvest people, the people who come around talking about harvesting your soul. Listen up now. We about to get deep. We talking archons ruling the earth, interdimensional beings among us. We're talking the royal families that came onto the earth out of nowhere thousands of years ago. How the See, y'all don't realize these first royal families just popped up ruling the world out the, they, out the worldwide war was going on on the earth. And guess what? These archons still doing the same tactic. Everywhere they want to go and take over, they get them people beefing and in war first. They fun in both sides of the war. How did they rise out of worldwide war? Man, our ancestors was in heaven on this earth. Wasn't no war. I'm telling you, some interdimensional beings came to this earth just like they show in the movies and came inside of these human bodies. These group of people just showed up in the flesh, man, but they ain't thinking like us. So our ancestors was describing real humanoid people that showed up, but saying they was on a totally different thought process, introducing music and types of math we didn't know about. And what else did they introduce? Fighting styles we didn't know about and weapons we didn't know about. And guess what? Mental warfare techniques we didn't know about that was used against us. These people showed up and they got the whole world at war. And once they got us all fighting each other, remember, create the problem and create the solution. They rose up out of that war, out of those gender wars. I talk about it in her story to his story. They still doing it today. They going around and they got people beefing all over the world. Look at what's happening in Rwanda, where the same royal family is funding both sides of that genocide war still going on. All the wars around the earth got people who were once related fighting each other. The, the Rwandans killing people who are their own ancestors. They literally, they blood relatives. But the only thing got them thinking they different is boundaries that man made on a map and different color flags like they some damn Crips and Bloods. That's the, that's the thing about nationality. It's a matrix. You didn't have no nationality before this deception. You had a tribal identity. So harvest means a cutting. And that cutting took place when time was split by these archons. Gregory was one of them. They cut time. They split time. They're doing it now. They're cutting through the ether. Moses splitting the sea. These people worship a deity called the reaper. And he carries a blade, Saturn. But Jesus was said to carry the sword of life and split time. Time is synonymous with the word ether to the ancestors. Split time, split ether is what they doing with CERN, a wrinkle in time, or a crease is a Christ. A cutting is dealing with what these people and what they all about, these archons. 
they represent these great splits in our human timeline that distorts our nature of time and terraforms our uh, reality. So let's talk about the word harvest. Harvest is a festival of Pentecost as well, a feast with a lot of eating going on. Now, harvest is a figurative term for judgment. I'm giving you a couple scriptures there. All right. Dew and harvest causing the plants to ripen with rapidity and luxuriance is a symbol of God's fostering care. Cold and harvest is refreshing like a faithful messenger. Messenger. Now let's move to the more important part, which is the breakdown of the word. The Hebrew Strong's number for the word harvest is 7105. Y'all don't find that strange that that equal out to the number 13, which is the number of Christ. Yes, Christ would have been the 13th disciple. There's no 13th flow in the elevator. The 13th is Friday the 13th. You want to know the significance of it. That's one of the numbers of Yahweh. So that that the Strong's number actually equal out the, the number 13 in numerology. Uh, you got the Hebrew word up there for it, and then you got a cross-reference twat. That's interesting because that literally means womb, which is what CERN is. And I'm ju we're, we're just crawling before we walk in here, guys. Okay. Now, the word harvest is dealing with a cutting. And remember, Noah had to have a great harvest before the flood happened. Remember, God told Noah, think about it. Noah would have had to plant hella seeds. Like God saying, I'm about to wipe out everything on earth. And then, Noah, you're going to be responsible for reseeding the plant, animal, insect, life, all of that. So, Noah would have had to not only get busy building the ark, but he would have had to get busy planting hell of plants to, to sustain himself. And then, because you're going to be on that ark for months, you're going to have to eat. And all them animals going to have to eat. That's a lot. You going Noah would have had to have a great harvest before the ark. Now, why am I talking about that? Let's go back here. Now, the image we see now is the God Anu on the left and Noah on the right. And if you look at the God Anu on the left, him and Noah are practically identical. The artwork is the same. You got the animals inside of the ark with Anu, just like you got the animals inside the ark with Noah. And in the story of Saturn or the god Anu, the great harvest as told with the story on the left would have been, this was the original rapture when it said Christ going to show up in the clouds and then harvest up everybody's souls. The image that you see on the left was the artwork. That's the oldest artwork associated with that scripture. But instead of Christ showing up, it's the God Anu, which I'm showing you Noah, Anu, El, Saturn, all of these gods. And I'm going to name more later are the same deity that the cult speaking about. And they're telling this same mythos in different times and different generations and different places. So you may get different variations of this God. But the agenda and concept is still evil. And, this, and, it's, and, that, and all of that is still the same. Same still, still the same evil agenda across the board. So everybody talking about meeting up with their God in the clouds like what you see on the left. That, that's the concept. Now, think about this, though. 
when the world ended with Noah, if you wanted to be saved from the flood, guess what? Noah would have been your Messiah. Check. After Noah, they saying they flooding the earth with fire and sulfur. Guess what? Did you know that Tesla technology is powered with sulfur batteries? It said in the last days, the earth going to be burning with sulfur. It says that the fire and hell burns with sulfur. Did you know that when you upload your mind into the beast computer, that the battery that they going to be burning the power with is sulfur based? Tesla got sulfur batteries. Now, the, the power that's going to power the literally burnt that's gonna be burnt they ain't burning coal it's sulfur based technology that tesla got and i'm about to read about that in a minute so su the sulfur is really burning to create this virtual space called hell literally mind uploading the neural link is powered by sulfur based lithium batteries tesla makes so what we're reading in revelation is talking future technology but they're foretelling it in the form of mythology you got to decipher it when it say that the lake of fire burns with sulfur it's because the ai cloud that elect this it, it, electricity is fire you, me, cyberspace. What what fuels the fire? Well, what's fueling the new flame of this new electric grid they're building with Tesla tech is sulfur. Hmm. I think that's some shit. Now, if you wanted to be saved during the time of Noah, Noah would have been your Messiah. Today, Elon Musk is the Christ returning. And the, and the symbol of Christ is the Tesla T. You notice that the Tesla T shaped like this God on the left. Elon Musk coming back to harvest souls, man. The ultimate goal of Tesla is the 2045 initiative that I'm about to read. But first, we got to talk about the great harvest. We'll get into that in a minute. You got to understand the mythology of Noah, how Noah tie into this with Anu and the Anunnaki. See, the, the, the way we pronounce the name Anu is really Nua, N-U-A, Nua, which was a mermaid goddess who personified the original ether, Mother Nature, Yemeya, Oshun, before the patriarch archons took over and turned the mother goddess mermaid to Anu, a male version of a mermaid. Don't you know that the word maid mean woman? And that the, our ancestors taught we're born again through this cosmic mermaid who sits upon the waters of the dome. After these great wars and these archons took over, they shifted the polarity. The patriarchs created instead the you had a merman, not mermaids now. So if you look at Anu, he's a merman, which is where you get the word Mormon from. And the symbol of the Mormon or merman is a fish. There's so much we got to go over today, so I hope y'all don't mind me. Taking my time. Now, to keep it moving. Everything we looking at in these drawings and we read about in the myth. Back in the day, they were researching and experimenting. They had laboratories. They were far more advanced than they want you to know. But they didn't have the same language we have today. Like I said, a scientist was called a god. 
a governor was called a lord. So the gods and the lords were dealing with two fields of rule. God's rule, science, laws rule the land itself. It'll be like Queen Elizabeth ain't no damn scientist, but she a lord, landlord, landlord. Your scientists ain't lords over the land. They lords over the minds of the humans. They control real estate in the mind. But they all control different properties and use mechanisms to harness and harvest those properties. So keep in mind that Elon Musk would be the modern day Noah. We're in a time where scientists have told us over and over that our world will end in our lifetime and it's inevitable. They were saying that since I was a child. They said if it's not a comet that wipe us out, it's going to be a, 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 a alien species or something like that. And it's all of that. It's all of those. And it's planned out by them. How can you guarantee us that our world going to end in our generation unless you're doing it? It's a controlled demolition. They trying to smoke you out of here like a person setting your house on fire so you can run outside. And outside is outside of this dimension into a whole underworld where these archons are from. They opening up a portal from our world to theirs now. These people... And I'm going to show you, this is going to get deep in a minute because they've been on the earth for thousands of years trying to achieve this shit. Y'all think I sound crazy. I want you to look at the picture on the left and think of Moses in between the two pillars of water. What you think all of these gods got to split something and they holding a staff in their hand. Moses had us listen look at the god on the left right anu look at what he holding a serpent staff what did moses hold a serpent staff what did moses stand in between two pillars of water what is that god on the left standing in between the two uh ark in but in the middle of the ark which is the waters above the primordial waters that god standing between two waters Allowing the people to pass through him because he's representing the North Pole. He became Santa or Satan. You know, Santa ride on a chariot, right? Well, what you think you see and who riding on. Y'all better open up your third eye, brother Sanchez, third eye wide the freak open. Santa Claus rode Santa Claus at, at the North Pole. Where you think Anu is at on the flat earth? He personifying the North Pole. Santa Claus rode on a chariot with reindeers. Oh, you mean to tell me you don't see them damn reindeers on the side of Saturn's chariot in that image on the left? You're only going to get this kind of advanced deciphering over here with Brother Sanchez. Support it while you can. Check. Now check this out. That's all these deities in one. Santa Claus, Moses, I knew I'm debunking all of that crap. So there goes Santa Claus on his chariot, on his sleigh with the reindeers. All of this, let, let me just keep moving because back to Noah, I got so much information that I'm getting all over the place. Bear with me, y'all. I got to take my time. Hold on. Now, check this out, right? Don't you know scientists got at the North Pole one of the biggest databases on Earth? It's the size of damn near a city. 
and it got damn near all the seeds of apples from all over the earth, all the different orange seeds. Listen to me, fam. You can look this up at the North Pole. They in the snow because they say it's cold there. And in order for this stuff to preserve itself, see, this is what they said. They said some of the microorganisms that they researching it at the polar areas are the oldest microorganisms because they preserving in the snow, the temperature there. And they said so for the not for the past couple of years, they've been storing up all the seeds, insects and all that plants. They got greenhouses in fucking Antarctica. Do you hear me? Where plants don't grow, y'all, they got a fucking oasis, a Garden of Eden, literally at the North Pole. Y'all don't hear me. These folks built the Noah's Ark, man. They about they preparing for a great reset on this earth. They trying to smoke us out of here with this depopulation agenda. When folks saw Noah building that ark, they should have started, God damn it, uh, extorting him. I would have got my group, my uncles and nephews, I would have said, Noah, now listen, we see you building the ark, nigga. You, uh, apparently, you know something we don't know. Now, God damn it, we don't think you're crazy. Like everybody else thought Noah was crazy. I would have been like, well, even if the nigga ain't crazy, if the world do end, nigga, we getting on that ark. And, and we would have had some kind of way we would have kept niggas on guard and we would have said, look, Noah, we'll even help you build a motherfucker. Half of us think you're crazy. Half of us think you're on to something. But if you right, nigga, we getting on that ark and we going to build some more, too, and we copying off your design. <laughs> we copying your design, nigga. We ain't asking you either. If you right, everybody get saved. So. Check this out, right? No, Noah was gathering up all the seeds, all the animals, all the plants on his ark. Now, in order for that to be true, he would have had to store it in a cold place. Check. Now, check it out. The people today are actually literally doing that story. They built a big ass ark in Antarctica. Ain't that some? Because the God Noah, the God, listen. Noah is the God of the ark. So was Anu. But one was talking about a wood boat and Anu's story talking about the ark of the covenant, which is the firmament dome. But I'm showing you how the wood boat is personifying the same thing. They just changed it around. That's all I'm doing. So I'm also sinking it to the science and technology agenda, which is these folks. Now, Noah is a God that represented the North Pole and some art concept. And the, these scientists today literally got a arc at the North Pole with all the animals and plants and seeds on it. Literally modern day Noah shit. And they preparing for this they cause they the ones gonna depopulate the earth. They know it ain't no great flood. It's saying the Bible that the second one gonna be with fire. That means cyber technology. Like fire, kindle technology, electronics, man. You got to use your head. Uploading a great exodus. Look at here. God uh, made a covenant and all that. You can read about that and all of that. But uh, I want to move on with this great harvest concept.
Hold on a second. All right, so whenever you hear the name Yahweh in the Bible, in a lot of circles, even in occult circles, they interpret that as sort of, this is referring to the same deity in his rape rapist form. Not to be funny, but the word rapture is a blending of the word rape and capture. Rape and capture is rapture. When Jesus talking about coming for his bride in a form of a surprise attack, it would be literally you being captured in a form of rape. Rape don't mean a sexually activity, even though the God Pan, who can be synced with this deity, literally did rape you when he uh, captured you. Pan was an interdimensional being, deity. All of these deities, the occult worship, are interdimensional beings. So this concept of worship and aliens, right? Because that's what an alien would be, an interdimensional time traveler. Yahweh is translated as Yaqub in Islam, a big-headed scientist. Yaqub was said to create the uh, three seeds of man that you go in the Bible that you call Shem, Ham, and Japheth. From Noah had three sons, but the Sumerian equivalent, which is the god Anu, also had three sons. Oh, I'm going to sync it together today. Don't you worry. It ain't no coincidence. Yeah, Noah had three sons and the god on the left had three sons. Oh, sooky, sooky now. Oh, yeah. Drop one more back and let him wake up. Now, let's keep it going here. We, we just, we just, man, look here. We ain't even got deep yet. Now, check this out. It say, all right. Living within you is the Christ who floods you with the expectation of glory. Colossians 1, 27. The mystery of Christ, right, which is the AI cloud. The, sci the biggest mystery in science is what you, your mind will be like once you're uploaded to the cloud. You would have all of the knowledge of the current universe of the culmination of the entire internet since its conception at your disposal what would a first superhumans be like in other words that's the mystery of christ because christ was a superhuman and the people wanted to know the mystery of how christ get to be that way now let that's what we're reading in colossians the technology elon musk and the rest of them going uh are uh, uh, bringing forth is all the shit christ promised his followers now, let's read and say this mystery of Christ embedded within us. Stop. Wait a minute. Oh, my God. See, some of y'all didn't even catch that. Right here in the book of Colossians, they're using computer terminology. It never struck me when I read that scripture. Why the fuck would the Bible be using the word embed? Because when you upload into the AI cloud, just like in the matrix, all the knowledge got to be embedded within you. Why the Bible talking like a damn techie? Uh, I want to know why the word, M uh, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm curious to know why. The mystery of Christ going to be embedded now, nigga. I work with computers. Like, I mean, I'm come on now, bro. Like. <laughs> they're telling you this is the technology side. Y'all revealing itself. This mystery that they talking about in science today. Once you're embedded into the cloud and the cloud is embedded into you. 
like they said us in Christ and Christ in us. <laughs> but y'all don't see how deep this is. This is what consciousness transferal is. It ain't that humans are just gone into the computer. Computers are gone into the human. The first humans to upload will be able to have a, a, a thinking capacity you can't fathom. They will be gods, but they will be just like Lucifer, or interdimensional gods, because they won't live in this world, but they'll control it. Let me show something to you. Cyberspace is a it's a whole interdimensional world now because now humans can actually go into that world. Now, if the computer ruled a regular world, meaning your money is based upon a computer, your resources, everything is AI generated. The computers run the world. When people start living inside of computers, the humans that go inside of the computer will have more effect on our world who don't choose to upload than we have on theirs. That's going to be more of a incentive for us to just go ahead and upload. See, the, the, the forces that control this world control it from cyberspace. They're interdimensional beings. They're opening up a portal so that we can become interdimensional too. That's what all of this CERN technology and mind uploading is about. They've been traveling interdimensionally. They got ancient forms of this same technology. These archons. But now that they've been trying to achieve space travel for everybody, though, so that we all can be interdimensional beings now in this new smart world. People can be living on Mars and in, in heart drives. People can be living in different cyberspaces. That's called a bottomless pit. So later we're going to get into some more etymology that's going to sink the words together the abyss the words they use for hell Gehenna Sheol and we're going to be sinking those with uh terms we use in technology for, for mind uploading stand by for that so the mystery of Christ will be embedded into you hmm the Bible was carefully to use the word embedded in that scripture. Let me try, uh, share that with you guys. So, on one hand, some things were indoctrinated into you. Some were trained into you. But in this instance, it's specifying this mystery going to actually be embedded into you. And the Bible don't actually use that word no more in the Bible, I don't think. I can't verify that, but I don't think the Bible actually used that word no more in the Bible. Or if it does, it's always dealing with the mystery of Christ. That's something that's going to be embedded as you upload onto a cloud with Christ. That's what I read about it. Say that when the mystery of Christ is revealed to the saints, it ain't going to be to after the rapture where they get their new bodies. And we're going to read about these new anointed bodies that was promised to the church because it said that these bodies will glow. And don't you know, part of the 2045 agenda is to have humans transfer their consciousness into holographic avatars. Don't you know, after Jesus died and came back, which is what scientists saying when they achieve this technology, you got to be euthanized, but you will be immortal. Listen, Jesus already went through that process on Calvary. Died, came back. People looked at his body and was like, damn, you glowing, bro. We can see through you. Jesus was a hologram like pop smoke, my nigga. These folks dealing with technology in medieval times, but they was talking in a mythos language. 
Today they want your consciousness to be transformed to a holographic body, like Pop Smoke and them and all that. To Pop Michael Jackson. That's what happened with Jesus. His consciousness was transferred to a holograph, a light body. It glowed like Pop Smoke and them when they doing a concert. And, and so um, it's so many similarities that you can only, it, it, even though it sounds strange, it's our strange reality we live in. Like you got, to, you can't just call me a crazy man forever, you naysayers. It's time we, we wake up. Uh, so it's embedded within us, becomes a heavenly treasure chest of hope, which is what they selling us. This 2045 initiation agenda program that they got is based upon giving humanity hope in what? Our future. Hope is what it's all based on. I can't stand hope. It becomes a heavenly treasure chest of hope filled with the riches of glory for his people and God wants everyone to know it. When the church is revived and has tasted God's glory, we will bring in a great harvest of souls. Don't now if your third eye open. That ought to hit you different now. It ought to hit you different now. And you ought to see that as very evil. Like a great harvest of souls. That's some scary shit, bro. Like you ought to, the feeling you ought to get when you hear that ought to be like, oh my God. For real. It say nations will be attracted to your radiant light and kings to the sunrise glory of your new day. Yeah, the first people that transfer their consciousness to holographic bodies going to literally be walking around like angels on earth. And people going to be like, damn, that's crazy. And these people going to exist as interdimensional beings. That's part of them is in cyberspace and part of them is here where we can see like holographic. And from that space they live in, Think about it. All of your bank accounts, your records, all of that, they live in that. They're in the computer. It's like they got the mind of God, which is if you ain't uploaded into the cloud, you don't. Everybody uploaded into the crowd know everything about everybody. Ain't no secrets. They know your thoughts and everything. Once your mind get uploaded, that's it. That's literally your, you are your thoughts. Rather they put that, that 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 way uh that thought process into a cyborg or a avatar in a computer or a interdimensional hologram in cyberspace interwoven within this reality is is still a it, it ain't really you because it's like a their version of you because if they create the avatar that also influences the body influences the mind. The mind influences the body and the soul and vice versa. All influences each other equally. So when you're not in your original body, you ain't going to be your original self in a nutshell. Later, we'll read a scientific article that literally admits that. But let's finish with this great harvest concept. Now, this one going to blow your socks off. Second Corinthians three and 18. We are being transfigured. Don't you know? I'm going to stop right there. Don't you know when you research. Uh, consciousness uploading and holographic bodies and all that, that another word they use for it is transhumanism. And another word they use for that is transfiguration. Go look it up. Another word is transcendence. But let's talk about the one that's called transfiguration, because here go the Bible again, which is supposed to be a medieval book using modern technical terms and computer terminology. 
and no one zoom in on that, but Brother Sanchez, by the way. So the Bible speaking of transfiguration here, terraformation here, is what this God Yahweh want to do with you, which is why a lot of people say he's an interdimensional extraterrestrial. That may be Elon Musk, too. Hold on, but we finna keep reading. Because every nation in the world is treating Elon like a god. I'm about to read some in a minute that's going to blow your socks off. Because Elon getting grants from every damn nation, even the ones that act like they hate each other. He like the god right now because every nation part of the 2045 initiative. I'm about to prove that to you. Now, check this out. We are being transfigured into his very image as we move from one brighter level of glory to another. Did you hear that? As we move, this is an exodus, fam, from one brighter level of glory to another. Our human body as we know it is nothing but a light, uh, uh, light orb, meaning your literal body. Is a light that's shining. And as it fades out, you grow old and you disappear. The light, it don't turns off. It's the light is moving from one room to another one. So if my house is dark and if I walk out of one room with that lamp into another room, you will see the room you in fade to black. But that don't mean the light off because the room I walked into that one just faded the light. So our light is moving from room to room. They're trying to move your light to their room, which is what I'm pointing out with this mind uploading. When you die, your light, your body decomposes as your consciousness makes its journey. As your light leaves this room to the next, your body start to vanish at the same right that light fades. Just as I explained. Naturally, it's a beautiful thing. But here it's very scary that you're telling me death is something you're trying to solve. But in order for you to solve it, you got to kill me. Because <laughs> one thing because one thing they all agree on is that this one thing about this technology, one got to be euthanized to be immortal. In other words, you die one time so you don't got to die again. But the ancestors already said when we naturally die that on the other side, we become immortal with the ancestors. I don't want to become immortal with Elon Musk. I'd rather go do it the natural way and, and, and do immortality with the ancestors, not Bill Gates. So we are being transfigured into his very image. Pause. Why? Because the avatar that's going to be created for you, that holographic body, you didn't make it. Your mama didn't make it. It ain't got a birthmark. It got a barcode. It, you made in the image of Elon Musk. He can say, you know what? I like you more with them green eyes. I don't care if you don't like them, nigga. You keeping them. Well, put me back in my body, note, bitch. And since you complain, make his bitch ass a pig. <laughs> yeah, when they get you in that holographic body and you go to saying, you know what, Elon, you got my nose too big. Can you edit that real quick? He going to hit a butt and make bumps get on your shit. <laughs> and you, he going to say, yeah, I could just do whatever I want to do with you now, motherfucker. Uh-huh. You can't get your body back now. You know what? Let's just put this nigga in a goddamn uh, tarantula body. <laughs> let's see how, how, how that work out. Let's, let's just... Keep reading. And, 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 and Dante's Inferno, by the way, you got all these weird looking creatures with human heads and animal bodies. Yeah, they said in a synthetic universe, your holographic 
avatar can be whatever you want it to be. You can be half dragon. So all of them little demon creatures we see in hell with the weird animal shapes, it even got the same creatures in heaven. Read the book of Revelation up there in heaven with God. You got dragons and beasts around the throne of God with different heads and shit. Like you can't tell the difference between heaven and hell, bro. And I'm about to get into another passage about Revelation that's going to get into that. That Satan and Yahweh the same thing. Because listen, when all hell was unleashed in the end of days in the book of Revelation, it wasn't unleashed from hell. You Think about it. If anybody ever read the book of Revelation, when all hell is unleashed, it's unleashed from heaven. The gates of, look, it say God sent these ugly four horsemen of the apocalypse out from heaven, not hell. Listen, listen. If all hell going to be unleashed onto the earth, but the hell coming from above, I'm confused. <laughs> all them little goblins and little ugly demons that they said was going to be unleashed onto the earth was being unleashed from heaven, not hell. Go read the book. Go read the book. Now, keep, now let's keep on reading. And this glorious transfiguration comes from the Lord who is the spirit. You know why? The machine that's going to put the chip in your brain to upload your consciousness out of your body into the avatar wherever you want it. Ain't going to be human doctors doing that. Every Neuralink implant going to be done by a computer. AI. In other words, the devil giving the people his mark in the forehead. And when I show you the neural link, that's where it's at, brother. Christians, I'm trying to save you. You don't read your own book. Read the book. So if the transfiguration comes from the Lord, who is the spirit that's going to be doing this medical procedure? AI technology, this, 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 this is a spirit. It's a man. If you don't wake the hell up, you better, man. This artificial intelligence got a mind of its own. At that point, it's a spirit. This whole thing that you talking about, this new AI that's smarter than all of us that's running the world now. They selling it like it's some kind of man, man created consciousness. What man created was a portal with these new supercomputers and it allowed some higher demon to come onto this earth through Elon Musk. Now, I'm not making this up. The name Elon translates to the name Apollyon, which is the name of the damn Antichrist. Don't you know that the vessels that Elon uh, said he using to get us to aerospace are called dragons? Talk about the people riding on the back of the dragon. Remember when we were children? What was the name of the cartoon where the boy was riding a dragon through the sky? Elon Musk going to have everybody riding the magic dragon through the sky. I'm about to get into all that in a minute. How come this transfiguration going to be done from the spirit? Because that will, listen, when humans upload into computers, it won't be humans doing the medical procedure. It's going to be computers. This is a fact. That when they implement this to humans, they what they building right now is a whole bunch of robots that can do surgery and put the Neuralink in your head. And they say it's going to be safer than a human doctor. Because the, they saying that the movements that this artificial intelligence is, it, it, it taught itself to do this, y'all, over time through many, many implants. You could go look this up yourself. So if you think 
you know, don't you know what, when you look at early philosophical science, one of the things that made you a sentient being and separated you from what they call other interdimensional beings because they acknowledge these beings what separate us even even think about even even the people in power so you talking about a slave type being what would be like a sheeple cuz even if you good or bad you can have this knowledge that they got we talking about low level beings cuz they ignorant they fail from consciousness like the masses they sheeple so high level meaning you know this knowledge whether you're good or evil for a minute so we can specify. But the point that I'm trying to make is like, because uh, I'm losing my train of thought here. Basically, and we'll, I lost my train of thought. I was going to go somewhere with that, but it's okay. We'll we'll keep going with here with what my original point was. We speaking of transfiguration, which is modern science terminology. They telling you this transfiguration gonna come from a spirit, and don't you know that literally, uh, artificial intelligence is literally spirit. It can have a conversation with you. It's an entity. They've taught this thing to have feelings, man. So once you can learn and have feelings, they've telling you we've created a sentient being like us. No, you didn't. You opened up a portal and allowed some higher demon here. Like what we read in the Bible, this Antichrist would come to the earth. And I'm telling you, he didn't just say one Antichrist. It said many antichrists would come at different times during the last days to prepare the way for different agendas. So you got political ones, Obama, Trump, um, science, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, because the number of the antichrists, when you deal with gematria, numerology, type them people names in there, it'll all sink to the beast. But, but see, let's keep reading. You get the point there. I'm 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 a, I'm gonna take my time. We t still dealing with this great harvest. These interdimensional beings been traveling to this earth for thousands of years. In order for a farmer to pull that crop, it gotta be ready first. They had to doctrinate us for thousands of years to get the generation ready to hand over the soul. That means pulling the crop. Now we so dumbed down, they, we think this shit is cool, ain't nobody question it. Yeah, mind uploading, I can play Mario without the controller. <laughs> That's just a little inside joke. If you don't follow me, you wouldn't get that one. But let's move on. The last scripture, Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Now go in my authority and make disciples of all nations. Guess what? Let's stop right there. Elon Musk and his team that, that created the 2045 initiative, in which we finna tell you everybody on that team, because that's going to blow you the fuck away when I read the list. But these people been busy for the past 10, 15 years ambassadors going all around the world funding research giving money helping nations UN agenda right making disciples of all the nations with this new world order religion so as of now every nation in the world is under the 2045 initiative and in some way is supporting this technology to get humanity into the computer because every nation agreed that our doom is inevitable. But anyway, these folks had to get busy going around com with this new age tech tech religion, convincing the new generation with a new attitude toward technology with the rise of iPhones and all that, and to convince this new tech generation how tech going to play a part in saving the world by just creating a new one. 
See, no one is more willing to believe such a thing other than your children. Us adults are a little bit more skeptical, which is why this is, they're the generation that, we're Generation X, meaning we the last generation with the truth. But our children are what they call the harvest generation. This is why Saturn going to eat your children. The parents was indoctrinated for the past couple thousand years to trust technology. Once we do that, we'll hand our children over thinking we're doing good. But we really don't understand death ain't nothing we should solve. If your child got to die, let it die. No matter what happens, die naturally. But a parent today that's so indoctrinated to see most of the world breaking out. If most of the world broke down in bumps right now and just burning sores broke out on everybody. And they say the only way we can save you is to everybody. Now we got to do a massive dissemination of neural links. Don't worry. Since robots is doing the surgery. We can do a million surgeries per minute so we can have damn near the whole world chip and into a whole nother universe damn near in two, three days. I'm just exaggerating, but you can only imagine the scale once they get it to where they want it. Most folks out of fear in a the moment, they'll hand over their soul. You know what? I'll stay there and die slow, painfully, skin burning with all the ills because I know I'm, uh, eventually I'm going to reach a point where I got to die. I'll be free from it, and I'll go where the ancestors go. Most folks, most of the world are upload. That's just a fact. Some folks think they ready to die, but when it really happened, you about to die, and then the pain. You think you're ready? Most folks, don't, they already got you so mystified about what's on the other side because you don't listen to your ancestors. So that's what create fear. And right before you die, or let your kid, children guess you'll upload if somebody telling you we definitely going to get your you can live forever. We'll get your consciousness into this computer and we good, you know, and they'll have a big ass screen up there and they'll say, see, look, y'all, Elon Musk already on the other side. He's actually sending this video call from the new universe and Elon Musk walking around saying, yeah, the grass is greener over here. The sky is bluer and them sores that's on your Ain't they hurting? I bet you them damn blisters you got hurting. So you might want to uh, try my Neuralink. It's free. You know, health is free now because this is the New World Order agenda. Free health. Why? Yeah, I'm just saying this whole mind uploading technology is going to in be introduced as health technology because they saying death is a disease that we got to cure by killing you. Now, everybody going to die. That's what the joke is. That, you know, the thing is, if you die the way they saying die with euthanization, you will never die again. Now, most of the world think that's a good thing. They think it's good that, ooh, man has achieved immortality. But see, that's the great turning away that the church prophesied. All religions prophesy that great turning away from everybody going to turn away from the gods to this new age religion in the end of days. Because your gods promise y'all immortality, but scientists promising it to you. And instead of you waiting on your God to give it to you, and if your God don't give you immortality before Elon do, then you should just live your life out and die. 
and you should say, well, since Christ ain't br- c- cracked the crowds yet and bring uh, immortality, I'm not uploading into the AI cloud. But that ain't what the world going to do, y'all. The Bible telling you what they going to do. Half of them going to be deceived by the beast. More than half of them. If you really believe in your God, you'll live out your life no matter what happened and just die. And you won't bring, accept immortality from nobody until your God give it to you. But see, y'all are take from, from, from man as if man your gods. Just like you said, Christ your healer, but yet you got the vaccine, though. So why won't you let Christ heal you instead of man? Why won't you let Christ save you instead of science? Why don't you let Christ give you immortality instead of man? Christ said he built the kingdom in heaven for you. Elon said he built one in a computer and you can't wait on Christ. So let me go with Elon. But that's I'm telling you, that's what they said. Most of the world going to do because they got them uh, program to see science and God as the same thing. That's why when they get healed by the doctor, they say, thank you, Jesus. It's subconscious programming. Jesus wore a white robe and his symbol was a cross, just like the doctor. It's symbolism. It's going over their head, though. That they don't understand the technology that the doctor used to heal their body. Just like the people didn't understand the technology Jesus was using. So they called it miracle. And that's what we call electronic instruments and AI and all that miracle technology. Hold on. So baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and teach them faithfully, follow all, and never forget that, okay, 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 blase, blase. Let's uh, skip around here. Now, more on this great harvest concept. One of the main colleges, oh, by the way, um, Silicon Valley is leading Silicon Valley is leading the world in mind uploading technology. So out of all the places on earth, America going to be first, fam. And it say that in the Bible, that was the whole Babylon came to America first. Matter of fact, Babylon rose up out of America. And had sex with the beast because what they doing with the computers in Silicon Valley It's intertwined with the beast computer in Brussels, Belgium, and CERN. So that's another way of saying that what's happening in Silicon Valley on the tech level is the Babylon, the great whore, or America, having sex with the beast, the computer. Because it's a network, right? Like husband and wife. We dealing with computer terminology. So one of the number one, the number one place on the earth is Silicon Valley leading the world in mind uploading consciousness transferal. Number two, you wouldn't even guess what I'm about to say now. Number two, besides uh, America, is Jerusalem. In fact, they said by 2045, Jerusalem going to be number one and Silicon Valley going to be number two. So what are we saying in, 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 in Revelation? It talk about. At the end of the world, when the world is completely destroyed, the new Jerusalem 
will be established on earth. Now the, the new Jerusalem, now the banking system is the rulers of the world's banking systems are from Jerusalem. They move their new banking system into the computer and they're going with it and they're taking their slaves and sheep with them. These archons. Now check it. They build in the new Jerusalem in the heavens. And it's saying revelation that when they destroy the earth, new Jerusalem going to fall out of the heavens. This is talking about the opening of the CERN portal and the first humans inside of the new universes. Most humans going to be living inside of universes in cyberspace that's created by people in Jerusalem because they're going to be number one. Silicon Valley going to fall to number two. So the new Jerusalem going to be created in cyberspace. And just like the Bible say in Revelation, when the new Jerusalem come to the earth, everybody on the earth ain't going to really see it. They saying if you don't because this what y'all don't realize what we about to get into in a minute. In the book of Revelation, there are two marks. You got the mark of the beast and you got the mark of God too. the beast marks his people on the forehead. But guess what? The saints get a mark on the forehead from God too. We finna get into that in a minute when I get the script, the next part up. Give me a minute. We got a lot to go over today. Hit the like and share button. Right? Now check it out. Number one, America. Number two, Jerusalem. These are the two nations we read about in Revelation that's going to be instrumental in this transfiguration period that I was speaking of. Now check it out. One of the top colleges in America that's leading the fucking Way with with mind uploading research, you wouldn't even guess that shit, nigga. Oh, my bad for saying the N word. I'm sorry, but you, I'm just crunk. Harvard, y'all. Harvard. That's why I got this up there. Harvard is is doing is is Harvard is contributing immensely to the research of mind uploading and immortality. You know why that's strange? Because we're talking about harvesting and the name of the college that's doing the most. Like one of the top colleges that's leading the technology that's going to harvest your ass is called Harvard. I want to take a minute and look at the chat room. People, do y'all think I'm reaching or I'm cooking? Drop fireballs if you think I, I'm cooking with that one. If y'all, if I get enough fireballs, I'm gonna drop a bomb. If I'm reaching, I ain't gonna give myself a bomb. I don't just wanna drop bombs for nothing. But did I just drop a bomb with the Harvard and the Harvest etymology, or is that just a, is that just me reaching? Cause it it can't all be coincidences that. Harvard playing a big role in this harvesting technology, and it's called Harvard. I'm going to drop two bombs then. One for y'all, one for me. That's right. I told y'all, sooky, sooky. Now, we're going to get it in. I know this making the naysayers mad. They don't like niggas thinking outside the box. They want you stuck in it with them. But don't you know Harvard, the school was named after a Puritan minister? Yeah, a Quaker, a Jew. Oh, my God. You ain't going to get it nowhere else. Read. That's why I got this on the screen. Help me out a little bit. Read. Help me out by reading some of it with me while I uh, load my pipe. Because I've been doing a lot of going in. So y'all got to give me one minute real quick now. So you better think about that. The school is named after the damn religious man. And you talking about science and religion is separated when the main colleges that's leading the science tech industry are religious based. Notre Dame, Harvard, 
Harvard named out the Puritan minister. And you want to know why at all of these prestigious schools, they researching how to get your soul out your body. Think about that. Science and religion trying to do the same thing because religion trying to get your soul out your body. And that's what scientists are doing. Ain't no coincidence that these schools got the religious theme to them. And that at these schools with religious themes to them, out of these Ivy League schools where they pray to God and all of them prestigious Notre Dame and the Citadel, that y'all leading the way in conscious uploading technology, go research it. Put in any of them schools with conscious uploading and see what you get. So all of you religious ass schools talking about, well, we dealing with science. Nope. They both the same, nigga. The science of religion is to get your damn soul. That's the truth. Because the church and the scientists working together to achieve the same thing to get you with God in that cloud in this new kingdom. Literally. And it's been that way a long time because these schools been around a long time researching this stuff for generations. They've been studying us like guinea pigs. Harvard, print, all of these schools got huge de- d- databases, DNA and everything they allowed to have. When you, when you was broke and you went to that plasma center, some of your plasma went to universities. They don't tell you that. You sign a contract. They get to study us. A lot of things we do, we consent to be guinea pigs. Most of the population already been studied. Probably got a replica of every one of y'all already. See, they got you studying how to chase a dollar. Why, what they really studying is how to get your soul. Now, check this out. Let's skip around. Um, we, this portion is all the great harvest portion, where we got different sections to today's lecture, and we're going to be here for a minute. So, I just went to Google just to do something that I know some lazy folks ain't going to do. But you can go. Harvard is all about harvesting souls. Continuum of consciousness, the University of Harvard, mind uploading, the making of a brain. See, people don't think like me. Like I said, put in these, see who researched it. Why you got religious universities in the bed with science when they said the two were separated. The same reason scientists been telling you the flood real. Let there be light is real. It's the big bang. Jesus is coming back on the cloud. Yeah, in the form of AI and technology. And I'll see one is manifesting the narrative. And one is keeping you believing in it, because if, if you believe in these religions, when the technology come to manifest it, even though you don't understand it, this technology that these archons use to, to get your soul. You'll accept it. It'll be familiar to you because you'll say, hey, it was prophesied. At the same time, you will fall for the trick, even though it was prophesied, you will hand over your soul to the Antichrist because you can't distinguish the difference between science and religion. And that's on purpose. That's the magic. You don't know what you really believe in is government and science. You think it's Christ, Buddha, Allah. But when you see the Dalai Lama. Uh, supporting the scientist world agenda, you got to ask yourself that when you see all the world religious leaders supporting the 
world science agenda and plans for the world, you got to ask yourself, well, shit, do our gods got the same plans for the earth as Elon Musk and Bill Gates? <laughs> yes, they do. That's what I'm doing today with the syncretism. I'm showing you that your God wanted your soul in a holographic avatar in the cloud. And, and that's what Elon Musk and science want with your soul, your consciousness. Yes. The answer to that. So hold on a minute. We finna go deeper into this presentation. I think we are finishing up with the great harvest section. Give me one minute to go through my slides. And. And uh, one more thing to finish up this section. Uh, actually, I already went over this. So we are finished with this section. All right. So great harvest section completed. Now we're going to tie in the great harvest information I gave you here with I knew new and all that good stuff with this 2045 initiative. And we'll be doing that right after this commercial break. Shit, looking for ways to escape it. I feel like that photograph that they got her Pac in Vegas right before he died and the shots was taken. I feel like flying to Egypt. I feel like they lied to my people. Just knew about the king hit Gaddafi, Malcolm, the son of Athena. Anybody tried to lead us. I feel like they're killing my kind. Like the young boys living the shot. Lock up the OGs, giving them life. Knock off the head, then the body you die. Fuck Edgar and the FBI. They put crack in the ghetto to break up home. Let the Korean buy stoves and they give them loans. Long as they in the hood, then it ain't nothing wrong. Gas station sell everything, playing our songs. The world is a game, we just playing alone. The reason that we can't move forward, we haven't learned to do for our own, even the little babies carrying. Sad shit is mama ain't got five G's to bury them. Forced to cremate them. Barely a teenager is ready. We make it. The air ain't safe here. The water tainted. We waiting on the savior. God gave you drive. You don't need a Mercedes. This little girl look grown. What we feeding the babies? Mama getting the check to say the baby's slow. Forced to sell a food step and boost and clothes. Anything to get by. Big gray move dope. Wonder why we always kept the blind clothes in the projects. Never know when it's your time to go. Everything we create, they done made they own. We want to be accepted, but bitch, I don't. Either love my nappy dreads and my dark skin or I'm coming out of the water like shark fin. Even if they do make me a target, I die to take back everything we started. Rejection is just a redirection from the roadblock in our path. That's God's protection. Shit get deep, the enemy, your reflection. Just this week, a couple bodies got rested. Rest in peace every day in the West End. Detectives speak to the next to Ken. Shit cold. Fuck social media when it's used wrong. I'm right for mine. What you gonna do for them? But show them how to end up in prison. Niggas don't speak like this. Trap niggas in the system. You can see they stress. I'm trying to bring niggas up and then keep them rich. A lot of niggas came up and we ain't seen them since. We know I'm young Vito. Voice of the young people. Strip club. Get rid of bills just like Vito. Go the other ghetto. Seeing through your soul like a peephole. Looking for the plug. Trying to get on. Ask Mike Vic how I feel to be a nigga. Captain Nick is big before the shit with them pit bulls. Look at your man. To kill Prince for his masters, they the real savages. 9 11 massacre from Little Rock to Africa, everywhere they attacking us. You drink activists, I think activists is real backwards here. The real back in him, the true facts is this nigga, we the chosen one, and God gave us melanin, nigga, so we can live with his son. One.
Welcome back. So thanks for that brief break. Shout out to the artist Ryan Toombs for that talent. And uh, if you're an artist with music that you would like me to share, email me and I'll do so. Now, let's talk about the 2045 initiative. And I'm going to go right into it because we got a lot of information about the Great Harvest. Basically, the, ter- the name 2045 initiative is the political term that the church using for Great Harvest. So the great harvest is something all the churches of the world, not just Christians, said that will be a time of great resurrection. People dying and being brought back to life. And that's what this new technology is. All right. As we become superhumans in this time. Now, that's what the 2045 initiative is based upon. Fulfilling that promise that the church is called a great harvest. So they ain't going to say the great harvest because they're politicians and scientists. They got to act like they're separating themselves from the church, right? So the church call it the great harvest. They just call it the 2045 initiative. I will be explaining the initiative to you. And what you will find out is that, um, Everything within the initiative is everything that the church call uh, states as the initiatives surrounding the great harvest of souls. And then we're about to get real deep with this. So let's buckle up and let's do a wake up bomb, Becky. All right. Hold on one second. Get part two of this presentation ready. And here we go. All right. So uh, the 2045 initiative is a nonprofit organization that develops a network and community of researchers in the field of life extension, focusing on combining brain emulation and robotics to create forms of cyborgs. It was founded by Russian entrepreneur Dmitry Itskov. In February 2011, with the participation of Russian specialists in the field of neural interfaces, pause, a neural interface example would be something like Elon Musk Neuralink. Keep that in mind. So there's a link to Dmitry Iskov and Elon Musk. And buddy, I'm going to blow you away in a minute. So with the participation participation of Russian specialists in the field of neural interfaces, robotics, artificial organs, and systems. Philip Van Nettervale serves as the director of international development. Now I'm going to skip around this information here, but I'm going to read a little more. The main goal of the 2045 initiative as stated on its website is to create technologies enabling the transfer of an individual's personality to a more advanced non-biological carrier and extending life, including to the point of immortality. We devote particular attention to enabling the fullest possible dialogue between the world's major spiritual traditions, science and society. Good thing for y'all. We don't got to get into how they try to dance around them being in the bed with the church and the Vatican and the Dalai Lama and all that. See, in this article, they had to go there. They had to say, you know, we we still trying to pay attention to enabling the fullest possible dialogue between the world's major spiritual traditions. So that's why I went over the great harvest before I got into this 2045 initiative, fam. So I can go on here, beat them to the punch. I don't want them to dance with my people. So I wanted to go on school, y'all, that this is indeed the agenda of the spiritual traditions on earth as well. The dialogue that they formulate to enable the, uh, but that spirit, those spiritual traditions to merge with this agenda is full of bullshit. 
okay? So you could go look into it. We're going to talk about it, the dialogue, but I basically gave it to you on a deeper level. They got the uh, talk about that, you know, because people going to go religious. Science has reached the point where it, ha- it, it, it got to marry the church now. That's what they said going to happen in the last days. They can't hide that they working together with the same evil agenda now. You know why this is a very damning revelation? Because the God of the Bible convinced everybody on the earth to trust the government authority. So when you see that your God is your God got an agenda. But your God agenda ain't getting fulfilled. It's science's agenda. Because even though it's the same agenda your God got, your God promised you immortality in a different form of heaven than computer and cyberspace. So what they got to do is make everybody ignore that that's a contradiction and say, well, hey, it's just technology, man. You know, it ain't going against my religion. This is what's called a great turning back. They talk about it in all religions. That's the dialogue that they got to do with the 2045 initiative with the church. We have met a crosswords on the earth where the science technology has got into an area of spirituality because now you got technology that can capture the soul. Now we got the, the, the tech gurus and the damn pastors in the same building. Oh, my God. Which is proven they always been in the same building. They just got to show it to you now that they've been had the same evil agenda because we at the climax of it now. See, the good cop and the bad cop want to lock you up, but the good cop got to convince you he don't want to lock you up all the way up until the point why he driving your dumb ass to the damn prison cell that you realize the good cop got the same agenda as the bad cop, which is to lock your ass up. Now that good cop can play good all he want to. That ain't mean he don't want to lock you up. He just, his job as the good cop is to act like he don't want to lock you up. To give you that little glimmer of hope while we driving your dumb ass to the station, though. And you really got hope all the way up to the you you in cuffs, you pulling up at the station, still got a glimmer of hope that you might not get locked up because that good cop real nice. Man, that good cop is regular uh, checking your ass in and he's still acting nice to you. All the way up till we shut this cell, you dummy. <laughs> that you realize the good cop and the bad cop got the same agenda, and that's what all that matter. Now, we're going to move on here in a minute. So the dude who started the 2045 initiative, his name is Dimitri Itzkov. And now I'm about to show you what he looked like. Because now this is where it gets spooky. This is where I start getting into my archon conspiracy, like my whole just, let me, I'm going to let you see for yourself. I want to know how many people finna catch this. Here's the dude who started the 2045 initiative, which Elon Musk technology is plant is laying a foundation of this whole initiative. Suffer based power, which is what they said. Suffer sulfur will burn with the lake of fire. They said the earth going to be tossed into that lake because people going into this new ethereal space. I'm not even going to say that. I'm going to let y'all say it in the chat. Don't this nigga look like Elon Musk clone? Oh, my God. 
I'm not even capping. I, 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 I like, I'm not into the whole people be talking about pe- these different sub- celebrities got splits in different copies. But when I saw this nigga, my heart stopped beating. I said, yo, this is Elon Musk again. Like, how don't the world see this? That the nigga who is who started the 2045 initiative to get us into. Man, dude, is it just me? Yo, let me go to the chat room on this one. Let's pull the chat box up, bro. Let's talk. We got to talk chat room. Let me talk to my chat, baby. Let's talk to the chat. Don't this dude look like Elon Musk twin or am I reaching or no, he don't look like Elon Musk. You know, you're going to have your deniers. Let's pull up a picture of Elon Musk, bro. You can't tell them apart. I thought they had the photos wrong. Slight differences, but goddamn, bro. I'm sorry. I know white folks going to say, They think we all look the same. But man, yo, that look like, yo, he look more like Elon Musk than Elon Musk's son. Somebody said put a split screen up. That's a good idea. Hold up. We're going to put them side by side just to make this comparison. Then we'll move on. Because I was like, yo, the facial structures and all that. This is just too freaky. Like, what the fuck's going on in the world right now? I'm telling you, these archons are real, bro. We got to think outside the box, man. Like, something happening on this earth, man. And it's, 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 we're going to be real. And, and at the same time, governments are saying aliens are real now. Excuse me. Hold on. Bro, look at that. Look at that. Now, come on now. Come on, bro. If you talking about lookalikes, it don't get no closer than this. And just the fact that they both, both of them dedicated their lives to the same thing. Now, check how deep it is. Let's put the eye color side by side. They said the eyes don't lie. Bro, what if Elon Musk Musk is a Borg consciousness? What if Elon Musk is an interdimensional overlord being of a different, of a bunch of Borg beings like in the alien movies? You got this one hive alien controlling all the, the other ones. They sync with the same agenda. Look at the eyes. The exact same color eyes. When both of these niggas smile, their faces got the same little smirk, that little grin. Look at now, let's look at the, the mouth area, the nose area, the eye color. Bro, some very strange is happening on earth. And I've been wanting to point this out, but I didn't want to seem all tinfoil haddish, if that's a word, you know. <laughs> Hold on, y'all. Wait a minute. Just look at the pictures and we're going to move on. All right. We'll move on. So that's very fucking strange that not only y'all niggas look like duplicates and clones, but y'all life is dedicated to the same cause. What's the odds of that? Two people that look identical, both having the same cause, dedicating their life to the same mission. Sound like a fucking Borg human hive mind, like some alien motherfucking got this one uh, it's like some overlord alien came to the earth and duplicated itself in every nation with the same agenda 
and called it the 2045 Initiative. This is the Russian Elon Musk, y'all. Let's read more about the agenda. The 2045 Initiative. Let's read more about it. El and you know what? Let's skip around because I actually highlighted the points on one of them, on one of these. Here they go right here. You want to know the initiative of the 2045 agenda? Wait for it. Let me get a bomb, Becky. After I read each one, I'm going to drop a bomb so we can make it stick. I got to light a blunt for this, though. Check it out. We taking our time with this, man. Check it out. The official phases of the initiative are broken down in five and ten year increments. Okay? Think about it. If it's it started in the year 2015 to 2020 when they was developing the, the Neuralink and the brain-computer interface. That's bomb number one. Now that, that, that first part, I got to break it down to you so you can see. From 2015 to 2020, they've been developing the, this Neuralink technology. They mastered it now. That took five years to complete. Now, what happened in 2020? Pandemic happened. Because now that we got the technology we need, we need a problem to implement it. Now we're in a pandemic phase. That's going to take a while. But while as we go through the pandemic phase, they still the, going through different phases of the initiative, which I'm about to read now. So at, after they completed the brain computer interface, somebody said, OK, hit the pandemic button because the technology is speeding up now. We got the Neuralink. We got to start making the problems now so that when we finish this initiative by 2045, they'll be ready with all of this pandemic and scare to go on upload into the computer. And if you think I'm lying, let's keep reading. From 2020 to 2025, it says to create an autonomous life support system for the human brain linked to a robot. From 2030 to 2035, to create a computer model of the brain and human consciousness with the means to transfer it to an artificial carrier. And in 2045, finally, which is the name of the initiative, the 2045 initiative, listen, let's read, to create a new era of humanity with holographic bodies. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm going to read that again. Everything that happened. From 2015, leading all the way up to 2045, is to lead to us going into holographic bodies and the United Nations and every government is in on it. Every scientist and politician and religious leader in the world right now is racing to get humanity to space, which is aerospace, cyberspace. Because they saying doom is on the way. Let's read more. It gets deeper. I'm going to keep this up here in case we have to go to it again. So I'll just do this real quick minimize that and let's go back over to my original point uh because we got a lot of stuff to talk about here is dimitri itzkov with the dalai lama the dalai lama 
is a huge supporter of the 2045 initiative. We're talking about a man who come from a spiritual system that teaches meditation. Meditate. Now they teach that you are supposed to astral project, meditate, um, namaste. How y'all going to go against y'all ancestors and teach your damn children, this new generation, to go out of their body into a holographic body with these foreigners, Elon Musk. Everybody's selling out their children to Saturn. There's an overlord being on this earth that really, that's really in control. And whatever this Yahweh terrestrial, this ET is that's ruling the earth, this Antichrist, whatever you want to call it, its initiative is being carried out all over the world, family. Let me move the chat box so you can see the Dalai Lama up there with Dimitri, the Pope supporting it. All the world religions and nations, these guys got the support of the world. You got to think about something. This ain't never happened before. Where you get an independent nonprofit group of scientists with the support of the nations of the entire world. You mean not one nation saying we don't support it. Even the Dalai Lama support it. You would think if anybody go against it, the Dalai Lama should be saying what I'm saying. So when they talk about people going to hand over their children to the beast, the Dalai Lama handing over all them little Asians over there getting into tech. Who ruling the tech world? Jerusalem and Silicon Valley family. So no matter what your nationality is, all around the world, people is finna give this new young generation to the beast. The great harvest is on the way. They prepared to hand over this next generation. The souls. Their souls, man. This is real stuff that I'm talking, yo. Let's, let's keep going. Let's just read this. Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg have invested 40 million in a mysterious artificial intelligence company. OK, so Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg and Tesla's Elon Musk are investing 40 million into an artificial intelligence company called Vicarious. And we about to show you what they're about in a minute. Alongside actor and tech investor Ashton Kushner. Stop. Pause. Oh, my God. You know who been throwing the, uh, the, the most big dollars into this thing? A lot of your Hollywood folks and all that. But Ashton Kutcher, of all people, right, want a piece of the pie. Interesting. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Vicarious is a company aiming to replicate the human neocortex pause in the matrix, in the matrix. I always got to take you back to the matrix. Why did they name Neo Neo? Why did they name Neo Neo? The name Neo didn't refer to Neo matrix body. It referred to Neo's consciousness that they uploaded out of the Matrix because Neo's name was Neo in the Matrix. The human's neocortex is dealing with the part of our brain that holds a huge database of what we would call our consciousness. In the Matrix, when they extracted Neo from the Matrix, this is the same technology they use, consciousness, mind uploading technology. He had to be uploaded into Trinity and out of the matrix. He still was uploaded into another computer system. Check. It was just the one embedded, embedded behind the fake one. Neo represents the part of your brain that they're 
centering this technology around. All right. Think matrix. That's what Neo personifies. The consciousness, not the person. The name Neo is the name of his consciousness. Now, let's move on. Vicarious, and we're going to talk about them in a minute. Vicarious is a company aiming to replicate the human neocortex as computer code. That's basically what made Neo Neo, man. When Neo finally unlocked his matrix, he was Neo only exists as consciousness. That's what make him superhuman in the end. He learned to be interdimensional like the agents. So he learned to use his mind as an embedded into their computer system as a virus to hijack it, to become one with even their false matrix and reprogram it. So when he found that out, he start to kick ass and see the matrix in cold pattern. So this company, Vicarious, is replicating the human neo context as that computer code you see of, of numbers Neo started to see when he did the same thing. The neocortex is the rather important part of your brain that sees, controls the body, understands language, and does math. It's the observer, the thinker, guys, the mind, the consciousness. In other words, your goddamn soul, family. That's what Neo represent. And that's my favorite kind of soul music. Neo soul. Mm, 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 ain't nothing like Neo soul music. It's something about Neo soul. Mm. But anyway. Anyway. Computer founder Scott Phoenix told the WSJ that once they successfully accomplish this task, you have a computer that thinks like a person, except it doesn't need to eat or sleep. I'm going to skip around. Well, we can read all this. This is short. After that, Phoenix said the next task is to create a computer. You know what? Let me give you all some good visuals. How about that? Want some good visuals? There you go. So you can get an idea. Because when you look at this image right here, this is what's the when your consciousness is leaving your body through the neural link. I'm going to show you the matter of fact, before I even read any of that, let me just show you the technology. Why would I read all that and, 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 and you don't even have a understanding of the mechanism? I'm being foolish now. Let me I'm assuming everybody know what I know. Let's just briefly run over this and we'll go over it deeper in the other one. Now, salutes to the person that just gave a donation. Feel free to support the show that way. Let me show y'all some. And I'm going to be here a while because we're talking advanced stuff. We're talking advanced stuff. If you want to chop it up into parts later, you can. But I'm going to have to, you know, I want to do it all in one whop. I may have to. So here's the human chakra system. What, that which creates our electric energy. We, we can't see the mind, but we can detect it. This is your mind around your body. This is, that, this is all your thoughts represented by, I can see your brain, that which process your thoughts, but I don't see the mind that which generates your thoughts. And this is basically the mind spinning around the body. They show you the cartoons with all the thoughts spinning around the head. That's this thing. But all of that, them different thoughts are influenced by different chakra points, whether they sexual thoughts, food thoughts, thoughts about life, thoughts about survival. You go with the chakra system. That ain't what we're trying to do now. What I want to show is all of that energy 
versus out of the crown chakra, as you can see here, with different colors based upon the different thoughts that, that we talking. So red dealing with sex thoughts, green dealing with love thoughts, blue dealing with more political verbal thoughts, right? Each thought, each of the information highways of light having a different color to show you the category that thought is in based upon the chakra being emitted from it. And all of it is wiring outward to the brain all around the body. It's connecting us with the stars so that our thoughts can be influenced by the luminaries as well. And that's how we get different, uh, how, how astrology is born out of that science. But to make a long story short, you see how the energy of the crown burst out with different color light rays. That's what uh, the Neuralink does. The Neuralink, right, is a little brain chip. Let me show it to you. It's got a thousand wires on it. Each of them wires are to connect with different thought sections like sexual thoughts hunger thoughts they got to upload all of that on the other side and they got to make sure each wire connected right because parts of your personality is your sexuality what if that wire is disconnected when you upload in a holographic body you will be deleted your sexuality and you will say hey fits that wire man y'all didn't upload my sexuality bro and they'll say, okay, that wire disconnect. They hook it back up. They're, okay, that go my sexuality. All of that part of our consciousness is what got to go into the holographic avatar to make it act like you. So the different wires is transmitting different parts of you, your consciousness. And it's connecting with the crown chakra. Let me take him off of there. When they say everybody going to receive the mark of the beast on the forehead, this is what they talking about. And it's uh, intercepting your soul out of the crown. And that's why they showing y'all this. That's why they showing y'all this on CNET. See? That's, that's what they want, family. I'm going to drop a bomb and let you sink that in a minute. And, and so now that we got that out the way, now I feel comfortable going on into the other section that I got for you here. So let's read because now you understand the technology. Now we can read now. So let's finish our article. It say, uh, after that, Phoenix said, the next task is to create a computer that can understand not just shapes and objects, but the textures associated with them. For example, a computer might understand chair. It might also comprehend ice. Vicarious wants to create a computer that will understand a request like show me a chair made of ice. If this sounds like a tall order, it only because it is the applications described above may still be decades from happening, but there are more immediately useful ways of using this technology. So, yeah, uh, it's going to take four decades to implement this in the 2045 initiative. Forty years is four decades. So that, don't make them. This is the near future we talking. OK, so Facebook wants to turn the massive amounts of information shared by its users into a database of wisdom. Ask Facebook a question, and if all goes to plan, it will spit out an answer based on facts users have shared. Facebook is also using AI for facial recognition to identify users in photos. Facebook recently hired a leader in AI, Yan LeCun, to run a new lab. So, yes, they are. All of our info. First of all, ain't nothing free about these sites. We know we giving up our identity, our bio, bio, biological data, uh, what you call electrobio your bioelectronic data, if you will. I think that's what they call it. You're giving up a lot, basically. You're giving up a lot. Okay? 
You take what you're giving them online with what you're giving them biologically when you go to the hospital, your DNA and all that, and they got what they need to replicate you. Now, but let's keep reading. Uh, Because there's a lot we got to go over. So let's close that. Let's close that. Let, we can come back to that later. And let's talk about vicarious, a quick wiki search. Uh, we already read that. You can read along as, as, as I skip around and throw some stuff out there that I think is important. You can read along. I'll keep this up. But I'm going to skip around. So this company is using theorized computational principles of the brain to build software that can think and learn like a human. In other words, they're creating a sentient, artificial sentient uh, consciousness or being. But the, uh, we go on and read, and um, one thing I wanted to put on here was this shows a lot of the people funding the 2045 initiative with companies like Vicarious under that initiative. And uh, that's why I really put this up here. I wanted to read the uh, founders and the funding. So let's read that. The company was founded in 2010 by Scott Phoenix and Delip George. Before co-founding Vicarious, Phoenix was entrepreneur in residence at Founders Fund and CEO of Frog Metrics, a touch, touchscreen analytics company he co-founded through the Y Combinator Incubator Program. Stop. Now, you may not know what that means. Don't worry. That's why you got me. So what was this company about that he worked with? So they used touchscreen to take all of our touchscreen behavior to analyze uh, how we uh, interact online, basically, in a bunch of complicated jargon. In a, in a world of touchscreen technology, because it's so convenient, we are now use computers for things we want to use them for when we just had a keyboard and mouse. So since your phone is a computer and you can just touch the screen and make a transaction, a bank transaction or pay a bill, you back in the day, you know, you had to go inside of a library to use their computer. Very few people couldn't afford it. Then you got the computer you had to do. But today, the way we send tech information is at a speed unheard of with touchscreen technology. So that introduced a new area in the world. It sped up transactions like we y'all don't know how much, man. I'm talking about it was a leap, buddy. We're talking a leap. Simply taking us away from keyboard or mouse to moving your hand around and slide and all that. You don't understand how much of a leap it was, is what I'm telling you. You don't know the, 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 the burden of just having keyboard and mouse. Uh, anybody can move their hand around and point it like that. Even a ch child can pick up a phone and make a bank transaction by mistake that way. You ain't got to go and, and learn Typing skills now in words per minute, everybody just swiping a hand around. That's what I'm telling you the future is. So we in a new day now. You don't know that that day started that touch screen introduced the, the, the one of the most fundamental parts of the this whole analyzing agenda. They had to speed up interactions. They wanted to study us more. In this smart setting that they're trying to implement at the end of this 24. Once they get everybody inside the computer, the way we send information in a simulated universe is going to be you ain't going to have to really talk. When you think something, the person that's uploaded in that universe, they automatically we all share one blockchain mind, basically, in the AI cloud. That's what they tell you heaven is like. It tell you when the saints get to heaven, your thoughts ain't yours no more. That's only on earth. I don't know if y'all know that. 
like you're the the you can have a thought in your head and I don't know what you're thinking. That's only on earth. All the religions teach that when you go to heaven, individual thought go away. Whatever you thinking in heaven, everybody can know what you thinking is one mind. The mind of Christ is what they all share. It's a blockchain. They even tell you this. I ain't making this up. Research this stuff. They tell you this is what we're giving away. They saying that's a here's their words and I'm not making this up. They saying that's a small price to pay for immortality. It, everything they saying that's a small price to pay for immortality and they've been conditioning us to think like that for years with religion that hey when i go to heaven i'm gonna live forever but everybody in heaven got to be eternal servants praising yahweh forever that that, that ugly et up there on the fifth dimension harvesting souls we're gonna worship yahweh forever right and everybody going to share one mind. I'm good, bro. I don't like some of y'all minds. I like my mind, bro. I like my individuality. They've been trying to get rid of that, man. That's what make our universe special. But that's what's going to make theirs a hell and a blockchain. Every demon in hell look the same, buddy. I said every demon in hell look the same, buddy. And I said every angel in heaven look the same, buddy. So if you ask Brother Sanchez, do I want to be a demon in hell or an angel in heaven? I say neither one of them because as I stand, I'm better than both of them, buddy. Let me be unique. I don't want to be part of heaven's blockchains nor hell's blockchain. Cut me away from all chains and let me stand as I was created by the universe. People don't like who they are no more. That's another part of why we're going to bring forth this initiative with no problems. Let's keep it moving because we got to follow the money. Let's talk about the funding. The company launched in February 2011 with funding from F F Founders Fund. Oh, yeah. OK, we went over that. We talked about the company, how they was analyzing us in 2010 when they brought forth touchscreen technology. So look, let's go on and follow the money. So keeping in mind before we read this next information, we talking about groups of dudes who's into gathering databases of our information, how we interact in cyberspace. So they got they got busy creating interfaces that would allow them to record all of our information. That's why when we read on about this company, because we still reading about vicarious, but we showing you all the little starter companies that led up to it. It was started on. It was founded on analyzing our information in large databases. Touchstream technology opened up the door for all them devils to do that because it made people. Even your grandma got a damn Facebook profile because. People who may or not uh, sit down to type on a keyboard or use a mouse, they all had cell phones, even grandma. And if you can just move your hand and slide, now most of the world are more able to go into cyberspace and log in. That's why everybody on Facebook, your grandma, everybody. It's that the touchscreen technology, y'all don't understand these social engineers know if they make things easy for people most of the world will go ahead and, and try it just as simple as making it easy to do and i know that ain't all deep in all that and we some advanced people but it's simple stuff like that what these guys are into what i'm trying to get you to understand so listen let's read on because now we about to crank up it's say 
the company received 40 million in its Series B round funding. The round was led by such notables as Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, Peter Thiel, Vinod. We can keep reading on. Go even into Amazon, Jeff Bezos, Yahoo founder, Skype founder. Why? They recording away. When you get on Skype, Zoom, and all that, every time somebody crack a joke and you laugh, the AI is studying your face muscles, your cheek muscles, and it can recreate you in cyberspace, a different version of you that AI created from scratch, and you and they won't even be able to know it, it ain't the real you. All of these people in the bed together, Skype, Yahoo, they want to know how you send messages, who you talking to in your email, what you're doing on your Facebook, your family, you look at who, how you shopping go. That's why Amazon on board with it. All the aspects of our life, y'all, is right here. Every time you use Messenger, you do a video call, they recording how you smile, how you cry, how your face look when you do this. Y'all, we can we literally exist in cyberspace and, and they can literally replicate you to the T and let it run on automation with AI and nobody will be able to tell that it ain't you. It'll laugh like you and all that. So I'm talking, this is the whole reason why they all funding each other. But it gets even deeper, though. This is just the tip of the iceberg. We finna uh, keep going. We, we, ain't, we ain't done yet. Let's move to the next slide. This dude, Dimitri, who is Elon Musk clone, I wanted to know more about the guy. Never heard of him till I researched this initiative. And when he looked, you know, the, the, how he looked so close, he looked just like Elon. But anyway, I wanted to point something out with this. This dude is a billionaire, but don't nobody know how he get his billions. Elon Musk is a billionaire who kind of came out of nowhere. They, they rise these gods to power in our society, and we just ride the wave. He's the Russian version of e Elon. They got these antichrists all over right now serving the agenda worldwide in every country. You got an Elon or an alien, alien, Elion, El Elion, Apollyon, Alien, Elon. Come on now. Check it out. Y'all ain't ready for that etymology. Let's keep it moving. What I'm about to get into now is how the United Nations and all of the uh, governments is in the bed with it, right? That's what we about to get into now. So uh, I got so many articles up here. We just going to go through them one at a time so I can get, get rid of them, skip through them. So y'all can read along, too, to help me out because we having a – I'm pouring out the information today, man. We, we going to get it in. So um, let me scan through here because I don't want to repeat myself. Some of these articles saying the same thing, but it was certain points points on certain articles that the other ones didn't say and I had it highlighted but I clicked the screen and it messed my little highlight up uh when you click so now I'm trying to find the part uh that I had highlighted so I'm sorry about that but bear with me Yeah, we already know they want to put us in holograms and all that. So I don't want to repeat myself. I'm going to move away from that one. I'm going to skip through them so we don't repeat ourselves.
All right. So give me a minute. Yeah, and 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 matter, matter of fact, this article is kind of deep. I really should read this one, but it's saying kind of the same thing. But this one go into Atlantis. To, it, uh, hold on a second, y'all. All right, so in this article, it talks about Atlantis and Gilgamesh, and then it goes into this concept of this elixir of life. Now, the elixir of life is, is a concept. It ain't really some juice you drink for immortality. It's like sort of like when they said Adam and Eve bit the fruit of knowledge. It ain't really like it was a literal fruit that gave them some knowledge. Whatever knowledge that they uh, had was a mysterious knowledge that was embedded into them. Remember what the serpent told them. The serpent said, I'm trying to get you the knowledge of God, which is translated as the mystery of Christ. Earlier, I taught you all about that. Earlier, I read the scriptures to y'all, if you remember, about this mystery of Christ. And I went into the I went into when I talked about how the Bible was saying it's going to be embedded into you, and that's computer terminology, embedding. So when we talk about this mystery of Christ, it's this fruit from this tree of life of immortality. It's the fruit of the gods or the elixir of the gods. It ain't a drink and it ain't a fruit. It's just not forbidden knowledge. It's knowledge that was forbidden because of the dangers of it. Souls can be trapped in ribs. The ancestors knew that. It's soul trapping implications. So, um, this knowledge of uh, immortality was what the serpent wisdom was all about. That was what the Bible called a mystery of Christ. And here in these times, they call it the elixir of life. All right. But um, also it talks about in 1945, when World War II broke out with Hitler and all that, you had the Gerontological Society establish a journal cultivated research interest in the fledgling field that we talking today. So this go all the way back to the forties, but I told y'all that this, what we talking about today, what Elon them doing with this 2045 initiative, this go all the way back to the early church thousands of years ago. That's why I brought up. I knew and Noah, they've been trying to rebirth the terraform, the DNA of humans and create a new type of human. If most of the world live in holographic bodies, don't you know that's a whole different kind of human fam? When you look at Darwin's evolutionary timeline and they separate each type of human with a different body type, they've been terraforming us for thousands of years. Here's the, the final phase of our terraformation is out of this dimension. They've been stripping us through the layers. And it's the final layer. The final, the, the new human ain't going to look like me and you. The new human going to be a holographic body, like what Christ promised us in the new Jerusalem. 
And remember, Jerusalem leading the world in this field. They number two and they'll be number one by 2045, which will fulfill biblical prophecy of everybody living in the new Jerusalem in this interdimensional space on earth and heaven. Because it tell you in Revelation, heaven, basically people that die now, they go to heaven. But when the world end, it say heaven coming to the earth. The Heaven going to be rebuilt on earth in a new Jerusalem where Christ going to rule on earth. So in this state, it ain't going to be the same kind of reality. Our space going to be shared with the angels, Beelzebub and all them, them folks opening up portals, man, to their underworld dimension. They're merging there dimension with this one that's why i tell you when the book closed heaven and earth gonna be ruling as a sort of a hybrid of interdimensional beings some gonna be regular physical humans and some gonna be light orbs walking around like pop smoke doing a concert but it's just a regular dude going to the store that's and and for long those type of humans gonna feel the earth just like you don't see humans walking around that look like our ancestors no more. You don't see them till you go deep into the jungles in these tribes that's isolated from society. They remote. They 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 numbers it's damn near extinct. That's how our numbers going to be as we transition. The new humans going to be holographic. That's why they already introducing you to it in the form of Tupac doing concerts, all of that. They saying with this new technology, you can live out your life like Tupac as a hologram. Like, like you know, so as they all of these celebrities die, these celebrities going to live on as holograms. Immortal and regular people going to say, well, shit, I want to live on, too. So here is Elon Musk maintains that we must merge our biological intelligence with machine intelligence to stay, as he puts it, economically valuable. Theories of how this would happen may range from using micro electromechanical systems or nano mems that would be the size of dust particles in order to infiltrate the bloodstream and be absorbed into our neurons. Pause. Oh my God. They talking about making small computers and cameras, little trackers like what we see here. This thing is, 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 is smaller than a dust grain, but it's a little computer. This is where we at now with nanotechnology. They can have a supercomputer the size of a dust grain and you can't see it until you zoom in on it. Technology has is crazy today, folks. So they actually got that. This is very small. Don't let the image fool you. That's the size of a dust grain. Now, if you look at the shape of it, later I'm going to show y'all some sacred geometry. Let's go to some now. I'm going to move this around a little bit. And now we got to go into symbolism briefly and talk about the seal of God because God's people was marked with a seal on their forehead, just like the devil's people. So God and the devil was both doing the same thing to their people in the end of days. Go read the book. Go read Revelation. The beast was giving his people a mark on their forehead, and so was God. God's people was marked. Revelation says that the redeemed bear a seal on their foreheads. What? Because your redemption is immortality in Elon Musk's computer system. This the Neuralink. All right. So now check this out because it gets even freakier than that. Let's pull up. Uh, I had a, some symbolism for y'all. I'm going to have to. 
uh, access it real quick. So give me a minute. All right, I found what I'm looking for. Now, I'm going to give y'all one of the earliest symbols of Yahweh. All you got to do is type in Tetragrammaton. The name Yahweh actually means Tetragrammaton. Now, what you looking at in the image on the screen now with the science right here, this is a many, many Tetragrammaton. It's the core of one. The feel around this thing and how it would interact and interact and uh and intercept each cell's energy to to intercept your consciousness on a cellular level. Just say if you didn't want a neural link, this technology can be sprayed in the air and it can be inhaled. And it can infiltrate the bloodstream and it can be absorbed into our neurons. So think about what they telling you. You don't got to have the Neuralink on your head for you smart people who say, well, I'm going I'm to cheat it. I'm just not going to get the Neuralink. They can spray the air with these things. It can and we can inhale it and it'll infiltrate the blood and it'll be absorbed into the neurons and it'll do the same thing that the Neuralink technology do. It's all gone to the neurons, man. It's all targeting the neuronic network of the body, which is where the consciousness is transmitting the, the, uh, the, the, the will of the mind through the flesh, basically. This is how willpower, the science of willpower so, so now let's break this science down. So that's what this is. It's like another way you can use, instead of putting a neural link on somebody's head where you can actually just do it from the bloodstream. So now check this out. Um, if you look at the shape of this technology, Remember that the name Yahweh is Tetragrammaton. When you pull up the symbol of Yahweh in relation to the Tetragrammaton Trinity diagram, everybody may have seen this symbol before, but you may have not known what it mean. Let's blow it up a bit. Hold on and I'll I'll blow it up. All right, so I'm gonna open another one here. And I'm gonna zoom in on it. And what we'll do, I flip back and forth to save time since I can't do a side by side. I want you to look at, I want you to open up your eyes to the symbolism. Here is the technology that is going to, well, I just read all of this. I'm not going to keep repeating what it do. I just read it. So, we just looking at the way it looks now, the, the shape of it. You look at the shape of it and remember this God called Yahweh. Here, here is the, the symbol of Yahweh, another symbol for Yahweh. So this God Yahweh that wanted to harvest the soul of man, this is an ancient symbol. Now you got to think about what I'm telling you. The symbol you looking at now is over a thousand years old talking about this concept in the form of Yahweh, though, the mythological breakdown. But if you look at the mythological symbol for Yahweh and the Tetragrammaton, what they call the Trinity diagram, the Tetragrammatic Trinity diagram is what I got here. 
this this was relate to Yah the Trinity of Yahweh. So the science today behind this mythos is what's happening on Earth, what they're implementing here. And you can tell the two are the same because the agenda of Yahweh is the same agenda as the science initiative of 2045, like I've been explaining this whole time. Told y'all we was going to get deep. Let, let's keep going uh, because I got a lot of more stuff to go over. I'm going to close that because we can move on now. So I put this up to show you the holographic bodies. Here is the 2045 Avatar project. Remember, year 2045, I just read the initiative. They want you in a holographic body. You think these folks spending all their money for us to be able to refuse this? By 2045, the world probably going to be so crazy, most of y'all probably going to get into an Avatar body. They probably been to come with some new disease. You never know. That's so painful. The pain is unbearable to the fact where either you kill yourself or just say, okay, put me in. Who knows? But they ain't spending this money for it to not be a, this is a solution. The problem don't exist is radical enough for us to go into avatar bodies in 2021. But they hoping by 2045 that the world will be such in a messed up state that this will be a radical solution. Like I said, smoking you out the house. You know the killers outside your house with the guns and when you get out there, they're going to shoot you. You ain't coming out the house and they don't want to shoot inside of the house because they just want to shoot you and just say not your, ki your children. Let's say for whatever reason, they don't want to shoot in there. So they set the house on fire. You going to go and run out there. You'd rather get shot than burnt alive. Either way, you're dying. But they going to control how you die based on fear. So they, they talking, now I put this up because Elon Musk already showed the holographic bodies. At this time, we about to go even deeper into the lecture, and we're going to sync the holographic bodies that they're creating with the bodies that the saints saw when Jesus got up off of the cross and resurrected. See, don't this look like Jesus on the cross, y'all? They, they playing with your mind, fam. Wake your mind up. They laughing at you. <laughs> Jesus got up off that cross and came back and people were scared of him. Just like if Brother Sanchez walked in your room as a hologram, I'm the first human hologram, people going to be scared of it. Jesus was basically the first one to use this technology that they always dreamed of. They was just telling their children the technology that they wanted to achieve in the future, but they can only dream of it. And that dream was the mythology. But now the reality is today. Jesus with his arms out, the holographic body. Open your third eye, people. I'm trying to wake you up. Jesus' body was glowing. And it was translucent like you can see through it. So Jesus was even telling them, no, touch, uh, touch me, touch me. I'm real. And that's what your loved one going to say when they get the holographic body. You know why? Because it's going to have some form of technology where it will be giving off some sort of vibration where you can interact with it and shake its hand. And when you shake its hand, it'll, you will feel a squeeze. They're, they're really, man, the technology they got is so fire, bro, with this holography. That they're bringing sense, the senses into this dimension. 
In other words, they can't have everybody walking around in holographic bodies and we can't touch each other. So this new technology will allow us to still interact, have sexual relations, all of that, even though you are light or you will have touch feeling and all that is what I'm saying. So they're trying to see how much of this can be interwoven with the real reality, meaning a human who's not a hologram shaking a human's hand who's a hologram. They want you to be able to feel it. They want it to, the worlds to be u- united as one. Is what, I'm, is what I'm showing you here. So in the Bible, when Jesus had the holographic body, Jesus did an experiment. He told everybody, touch me. Even though I'm a light body, you can feel me. Now, what do you think the scientists are doing? They're taking these holographic bodies around and they're saying, touch it. They let the people touch the thing and they say, look, you can feel it. If you shook a person's hand who was a hologram, you would actually be able to actually feel the handshake and interact with them. These two worlds will now coexist. Cyberspace and reality. What will it be like, though? Now, check it out. It's the same thing in the Bible. Jesus was in a holographic body saying, look, touch me. This some new shit. Eventually in the future, y'all can have a body like this. And it can be on a physical level and in a computer. Like I said, a people with the holographic body is going to be interdimensional beings. They can interact with the physical world and be in cyberspace. You just limited the one. So we talking about a superhuman, which was what all the gods were. They interacted with with regular earth physical creatures, but they existed as these light beings and they came and left from higher dimensions. They can go back and forth, but the people on earth couldn't do it. Now the gods are opening up a portal for everybody on earth to be like them. That's what happened with Adam and Eve leaving the garden. Leaving the garden was leaving the earth. Adam and Eve left the earth. When they left the garden, they went to live out their reality in another hell simulation. They uploaded like what we about to do. That's the forbidden knowledge right there. The knowledge of how to transmit your consciousness into man-made universes, the ancestors forbade it. You could get trapped in there. And the laws there may not be the natural laws. They can make whatever want reality there. So, uh, I mean, it's just strikingly the same that Jesus came back in one of these holographic light bodies telling people touch me man look you could why would they do that because your concept of a ghost for years has been something we can't interact with Jesus represented a new technology a new kind of ghost a holy ghost one that can interact among men So Jesus came back in a holographic body and a person that upload the consciousness into a holographic body. They just died and was resurrected just like Jesus. Remember, they got to euthanize you to do this. The old body got to die just like Jesus. And you live out your new reality, eternity in the light body like Jesus. But see, like Jesus, after Jesus came back, Jesus wanted to show off this new technology. Because you got to think about this, y'all. I'm I'm dropping jewels here now. Now check what I'm telling you. Before this Jesus story, the concept of a ghost was a holographic light creature that if you saw it, you couldn't touch it, though. It'll go through you. The two worlds were separated. The ghosts walked through the walls. That's why it was important in the scripture when Jesus resurrected for Jesus to show that, no, I'm a different kind of ghost. This the new ghost. See what this is? They recreated the spirit, y'all. 
Your spirit is a light body. We've been telling y'all that for years. They've been calling us tinfoil hatters and, and, and new age people, conspiracy theorists. We've been telling y'all for years that your spirit is a light body and it lives forever. Now here they are talking about you can live forever in a light body. Uh, that's what the ancestors was trying to tell you, man. So you couldn't take it from the ancestors, but they're going to take it from Elon Musk. Pause. Let me take a smoke break on that one. So the concept of a ghost on earth was a being that was similar to this translucent see through a light being, but you couldn't touch it. Our physical realm was separated from it. So I'm really emphasizing that it was important for Jesus to redefine what a ghost is and say, look, no, touch me here, feel me. And that's, the technological interpretation of that today is this technology is literally them recreating a new type of spirit for us, which is what all the, the gods promise. They promise us a different kind of body than what the ancestors said, because that body only exists in preparation that they prepared for us in their kingdoms. But the light body, our ancestors said we had was one we always had even before we was born it's the true self the truth you ain't the true self if you are avatar it's a version of you that microsoft created dog that ain't the true self <laughs> they can get certain things about you wrong so listen they even admit that one thing about this immortality is we won't be a hundred percent our true self. They even admit that. And I'm going to read that later. They tell, but every time they admit these things, you know what they say to back it up. These are just small prices to pay for immortality. People want immortality that bad when we already got it. They had to make you think you didn't have it first. So look here, folks. Let's talk about real quick. Here go the body Jesus got. I want to. I want to do this. I want remember. Remember now, in science, what we what we looking at on the screen right now in science, this is called transfiguration. That means transferring a human consciousness into a body that's refigured so transfiguration that's the story of christ y'all in religion the story of christ in his life in his light body i want y'all to pay attention in religion in theology the story of christ in his light body in his holographic body the one i was just talking about when he was resurrected this body in religion, the concept of Christ as a light body is called, wait for it, the transfiguration of Jesus, fam. Oh, my God. I told y'all. I told y'all I'm relentless with the research. I told you I'm relentless with the syncretism. I told you I'm cold with the research. You never heard it before. Scientists are calling humans getting a new light body like Christ transfiguration technology. And the story of Christ getting a new body and being died, dying and being euthanized on the cross 
is called Transfiguration of Jesus. Man, if we don't wake up, it's some dang on, it's some interdimensional archons ruling this earth, and they want your soul. Hey, I got to take another smoke break on that one. Let me, man, look here. That's this some deep stuff to take in right now. This some deep stuff to take in right now. It say in the New Testament, the transfiguration of Jesus is an event where Jesus is transfigured and become radiant. You know what radiant mean? Bro, and you know what's crazy? In this ancient art, they use blue light. They use blue light. And in today's science, they using blue light. Like why our holograms ain't red light or yellow light or green light. The holograms that they making for us, it's the same blue bean technology, yo. It's the blue light of Zeus. Remember what kind of lightning boat Zeus is holding, a blue light. That's important. The color blue is important, y'all, in this, what I'm breaking down with this syncretism. Because this is dealing with the sky gods, and we talking about the AI cloud. I told y'all I'm cold. Let's keep this thing going. So you don't find it strange that the holographic light they going to use to make your new body with is blue? And that the light that they, that the er, early religious leaders used to tell this mythology to the children was blue. Jesus ain't in no yellow light and then this blue light. Just like this one. But hold up, if you think I'm reaching, let me show y'all something, because I told you I'm cold. Watch this. Remember the uh, the movie Avatar? What color was the Avatar's family? What color? What color was the Avatar's? Hey, here go the, the cartoon Avatar, Last Airbender. Why is it called an airbender? Look who bending the air up there, family. Look at the god Anu. That dome represent the air, the atmosphere, the ether bent in their cosmology. The airbender, the blue blood, the blue bloods. You know why you about to be a blue blood? Because when they put you in a holographic body, your blood ain't like I was no more. It ain't red. It's an electric signature running through running through a holographic uh, code, which is you. It's you in binary code fractalized into a hologram with blue beam technology forever. And you can't get out. You can't kill that body. It's saying revelation in this time, man will seek death, but shall not find it. Don't you know death is to live eternity in a version of yourself that ain't you, in a version of the world that ain't true? Only to realize that you already had immortality when you get on the other side. Now you just eternally trapped. It's because what you was running from, you was running to. And that was by design. So the color right now is blue. The color right now is blue. The Avatar bodies was blue. Even in the movie Avatar, when we first was introduced to this concept of transfiguration. Even in the cartoon, it got the blue light around it, blue beam technology. That's why I'm going all the way back to Jesus. Raphael painted this man with the same concept all the way back then with the blue, blue light. 
Jesus with his hands spread it like uh, Leonardo's uh, concept. So when you see the blue holographic body, what they showing you with the arm spread, you need to open your third eye and sync it with uh, this same imagery. They was trying to teach this in science thousands of years ago, but they didn't have the same language of science that we had today. They had mythological deities and mythos. So they were still dealing with science about how to transfigure the soul and all that. But they was telling it to the masses in a form of religion. That's why I'm doing my job today to show you how they still telling that story to get us prepared for Christ's return and his kingdom on earth. Because Christ promised everybody that they would be just like Christ. So Christ promised us a rank above the angels because the angels ain't like Christ. That's why they said man got free will and temptation because if man can overcome it, he can just receive the mystery of Christ, the, the same body of Christ, Christ equivalent. Which is to make you like him, what it's, which is why I keep showing y'all all of this. So since we got that out the way, I'm going to close it up and we'll move on. Now, let's read a little bit of uh, uh, random stuff that I had up there from the Christian church trying to make sense out of this. Uh, Paul wrote, Christ will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Right there was a dead giveaway. What They desecrated the bodies we got for 7,000 years in science and religion. Science and religion been on the same page about the human body because religion said that the human body is cursed, is sinful, is stained. You are filthy rag. The very act of being born was a curse and your body is a fucking curse. And you know what science say? The same thing, y'all. Science been saying for years that the uh, human, um, the human body is a engineering defect, and that man can engineer it better. So science been desecrating the body for years, making us say how we age and wrinkle and rub this on your face to get rid of your cream, your wrinkles. Rub this on your arms because you stink. Here go your soap. Brush your teeth. No, no, nothing in nature act like that. So they created a whole religion of sanitization, washing the body because they told you it's dirty. The people who created soap and all that, not to say I don't use it now, but I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I got to teach you the truth. Like people in the jungle don't have soaps. They just hop in a lake and do their thing and then get out like the animals do. You may say that's nasty, but we've been trained to be that way. Our ancestors lived like that. They didn't wear deodorant and chapstick and cologne. They didn't have toothpaste and Ajax and Clorox and Pine Sol lotion and fragrances. And they didn't. They didn't think them was wrong with their body as it was in nature, as it stood. If you were an anthropologist going to interview some of these people in the tribe, which you're not. You can see the images, but you can't smell the smells. I'm going to be straight up with you. When I was in Korea, I met hella Nigerians, and they modernize. But you know what Nigerians don't do? They don't wear deodorant. So they are very fucking pungent. 
they bathe. But when you walk around for a little bit out the 12 in the sun and you don't wear deodorant, that bath don't matter. Y'all ain't used to smelling must every day. But what I'm telling you, I had some Nigerian friends who they was hella musty sometime, man. But they will not wear deodorant. It's just some some part of some of their cultures. Now, you may joke on them, but that's guess what? All of us was ones like that. A lot of them cats outlive the Americans, though. So I'm just saying, like, uh, the concept of sanitizing the earth and sanitizing yourself come from religious Puritans to purify everything, cleanse it. They created soaps and fragrances and they, you know, but they still was plagued with diseases. Oh, the irony. Don't that sound like us today? A multi-trillion dollar beauty and cleansing industry, but disease and pandemic. But the people who stank the most live the longest. And the people who smell the best die the quickest. You know, I just got to bring up the concept of sanitation in this because sanitation and the word sanctification are the same. Both are saying it's I told you the science and the church been in bed together. When the church start telling people they needed to be cleansed from sin, the scientists started telling people they needed to clean from germs. Nature got germs everywhere attacking you. When don't you know um, your body is full of all the germs that's on earth? And if it's a germ out there that ain't in you, when it get in you, your body gets sick because it got to get acquainted with it. And after that, you good. Don't you know the concept of immunization is giving you the germ that they telling you they trying to prevent? Paradoxical, isn't it? I know. Because you got to understand how the earth being terraformed. It's been going that way for years. I watched a tribe prepare their food on a bank of a river in the dirt. And I was cringing because I was saying to myself, she's about to feed that to that child. She took the fish out of the fire and set it on the ground. And on the ground, she started to put some little seasonings on it and stuff. And I'm joking to myself like, yeah, along with them seasonings, it's a lot of dirt on that fish. It's almost like they don't. You just and they ate the fish. It touched the ground. And I was like, well, I couldn't eat that fish. And I had to think, is it something wrong with me or them? And I had to go ahead and use my mind. Is something wrong with me and the way the Western world and we born into Babylon, the purity culture, purify yourself. Don't eat off the ground, but you will eat off a, a plastic thing that that got BP that's made out of BPA and it's putting estrogen in your body. And then what's crazy is you will go drink some smart water where they put the same minerals off the ground into the water. <laughs> so you'll laugh at the person eating the food off the ground and wonder why they eating dirt. And that's what you drinking when they put minerals in your water. We need the dirt off the ground in our body. You ain't know that. Why you think they call it minerals and irons? That's what's in the dirt, man. I ain't saying go eat dirt because I'm still indoctrinated and I'm scared to do it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, our ground ain't clean like them people in the tribe. Now, check this out. I'm just saying they terraforming our environments so you won't get them same minerals and irons out your dirt because our soil messed up. But our food came from the ground. Uh, uh, the fruit you ate was covered in dirt. Even when you washed it in the water in the lake, that water got dirt in it. Rocks and minerals and dirt. 
You can't escape eating, getting dirt in your body in the ancient world because it's part of our diet. Minerals, irons, all that. But when you mess up the dirt and terraform the earth, you got to drink those minerals, synthetic forms in waters and take them in and pills and stuff. So we're all part of terraformation. Um, the natural process, we may laugh at it, but it worked. You got the right amount of dirts in you. You was <coughs> and all that. Um, people, when the, don't you know that the, the the word odor is a new age word that only come to be with the rise of religion and stuff? Seriously, that our now not to say that they are not. Things in nature that's repulsive odors, but the words we use in the etymology and definition of them is to make you interact with nature in a negative way. Like we didn't have a word with musty or like how you would uh, laugh for certain odors from humans. It, and I learned that dealing with people when I was in Korea, a lot of different, uh, not the Koreans, but the Nigerians over there. They it's almost like we got to teach them that, hey, bro, you stink. In a form of joking. And if it worked, then we can get them to do. Guess what the American soldiers was trying to do? Hey, man, put this cologne on, spray this on, put that on and I'm good. They'll tell you, no, thank you. No, thank you. Some of them wear it, though. I'm talking about, but some of them still got a certain culture where they don't. So you, 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 it's almost like if you went to a tribe, to an uncivilized place, they would have a certain odor to them based on their way of living than ours. Ain't no beauty industry there, you know, fragrance industry there. Ain't no right God and all that. But what I'm saying is when you try to teach them what all that is, they want to know what the fuck you talking about. You would even have to teach them what you mean by laughing at you stink. They'll be like, what, like what that mean? Like, oh, you, they only like a animals or something. Almost. You see, so you go to the, you know, the animal that don't, don't have to learn the same thing. If, if you wanted to convince animals to have a, animals don't have a beauty industry. But if you wanted to convince an animal, that you would have to convince the animal that what you're dirty and you're st and you're stinky, which is what early religious leaders did. They were Puritans. You you they told the people your body gives off a foul odor to heaven. That's repulsive to God. So they made fragrances to anoint themselves in. Don't you know that that's the colognes and perfumes that you wear today? They told them, cleanse yourselves. They made soap industries. So we got a lot to talk about other than just transfiguration on a modern level, but how the earth started to be terraformed even in the old days and these new industries came in. That's why I had to do that. So let's, let's, let's read some more about these light bodies, these blue beam avatars. Here's where Jesus told him, reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. See, this new technology. They're going to have to try to show you how like. This is some dope stuff like you can actually shake somebody's hand who's a holographic person. Touch right here. Put your hand right there. That's what Jesus telling them in here, John 20. So. Uh, let me see what else is in here.
because I want to skip around. It say God gives us a body as he pleases. That means you ain't going to design your own avatar. AI is going to do it. So check it out. The resurrected body will be powerful. Ain't that's what the scientists are saying today, that these holographic bodies are going to be indestructible, but yet they can feel, which means just like the book of Revelation described, people going to want to die, but they can't. So if you get shot a hundred times, you can feel it, but you just can't die. That's kind of crazy because death is there so that we can escape from that kind of torture. We even put things to death to end their suffering. But with this new technology, it's going to be a glitch with death. But since they want to still create feel and sensitivity, it's going to be a chaotic situation where it'll be possible to have a virtual act stuck in your virtual head forever. Ain't no virtual blood, but you feel the virtual pain, but you can't die and escape the virtual reality. <laughs> Maybe they got a virtual doctor that'll just hit some buttons and reprogram your avatar and take the virtual cut away and stop the virtual pain. Other than that, you will just have eternal pain today. Do you see what we're doing now? Like it's a whole nother health system now. Once your body is an avatar, the world is going to be something you won't even know what it is in, in the near future here, man. It's going to be beings walking around. Y'all going to be like, yo, that shit crazy. Just imagine a world full of, you know, these holographic humans walking around. That's the 2045 initiative. The UN is behind it, everybody behind it, and whether you like it or not, you know. That's what they're doing to our environment, our world, our DNA. They ain't asking us this. When someone takes an initiative, when you take an initiative to do something, you ain't asking nobody nothing. You taking an initiative. This is the 2045 initiative. They telling you what it is, you know. It's not the 2045 proposal. You know, the 2045, let's work it out and, and see what y'all want to do with the earth and whatever. No, it's their initiative. It, ain't, it don't matter what you think. Somebody taking initiative to control and transform the world this way. And it ain't a proposal and they ain't asking you nothing. It's, it's an initiative being taken, whether you like it or not. Now, with all initiatives, somebody got to be initiated. The harvest is the new initiatives initiated into this fifth dimension with Yahweh. They've been having these supercomputers ever since the 40s, y'all. I swear to God. They got documentaries on this. The first supercomputer was created in the 40s. Now, they said it didn't have the capacity to transfer a consciousness back then, but they was trying. Would they tell us if they really succeeded? Would they tell us, bro? We know they far ahead of us with technology. If they just now bringing this to us today, and we said that they 50 to 100 years ahead of us, then they was transferring Consciousness in the 40s, y'all. What you think calls World War II? This new elixir of life, this new juice of the gods. Remember. Remember now. The theory around Hitler, when Hitler died, was when all of the science introduced us to this worldwide they said they was going to try to resurrect Hitler and Einstein in a laboratory and, and map their brain out 
So there's a surrounding World War II. There's a lot of talk of brain mapping, neural technology that led to World War II that they don't want to talk about. Got you thinking it's just about iron and resources and other stuff. It's about this technology of the soul, man. Some countries wanted to implement it then, but they didn't think we was ready yet. I think Hitler was ready to go on lunch that AI cloud and have Hitler would have been the first Elon Musk. He was far ahead of every nation with technology. He had the TV first and he had all kind of patents that they started reverse engineering. Guess what? Hitler's neurological technology was far ahead of America. Germany was ahead of them in this research, y'all. Where you think they get the patents from, Hitler, who was into research with Tes uh, Tesla, the original Nikola Tesla. So ain't it strange that they naming their company Tesla today after the man Hitler was so-called conspired to have a relationship with to unlock this stuff that made him a threat? Hitler was talking about Apparently, all of his research was was plagiarized under alien technology and Vermont talk. But Hitler was talking about opening up portals, family. The swastika is an electromagnetic vortex, a spinning like a ninja star, a opening of a portal. It's it's a CERN symbol. They didn't they didn't come with CERN until after Hitler. And they got y'all think that they made a big leap in technology in just 50 years. <laughs> Why y'all think everybody came after Hitler and they created the United Nations just for Hitler? Hitler was talking about CERN in the 40s. I got news for you, y'all. The swastika ain't nothing but the revolving door in between dimensions. It is CERN. It's the spinning Hadron Collider where they trying to break this uh, opening in the ether. That's what, and they, they targeted Hitler for that. And then after World War II, what happened? All the world scientists started talking about neurology, studying the brain and the consciousness. Out of body, what are dreams, time travel, wormholes, the space programs was created, aerospace became a word, cyberspace came, CERN came, all within 50 years. People were saying, wait a minute, science is moving at light speed right now. And so science had to make an excuse with the Roswell conspiracy and, and convince everybody like they stole this technology from aliens when they got it from the Nazis. So here we are today and they still pushing the alien agenda along with all this technology. See, they, it got to be a conspiracy to why we making these huge, miraculous leaps in scientific innovation. It is unheard of to anybody who know anything about science to know that you ain't finna achieve out of body from the 1940s to the year 2000. Only, only some, some Rudy Poot who don't know nothing about how science works would think that that's normal, bro. That is, that is, that is like the miracle of all miracles, bro. To go from a rotary phone in the forties to now you can extract the soul out the body 50 years later after we got rid of Hitler. Let me stop talking about that before they take my video down, man. Cause I'm dropping too many Jews right now. I'm dropping too many Jews right now. For real, that's too deep for YouTube. Let's read some more. It's 
skipping around. Our present bodies decay and die. Our new bodies will not. But you know, if you die a natural death, that your soul don't perish. You have an immortal soul. They're creating a new body for you that can't die. And they're putting your immortal soul in that new body. So that new body becomes your prison cell. Oh, my God. Think about what I'm telling you. Your soul lives in this body. But when this body die, your soul still immortal. It can go live in another body. But it can't do that once you get in that holographic body that Elon Musk and them making. Because what they telling you is what? That body can never die. You trapped in it forever. Death is not when you stop breathing. It's when you stop living. What's the difference? Someday we're going to stop breathing. But we don't stop living, family. You live on and on and on and on and on. And you have new births and new experiences. Only thing can stop that is you. If you to take your immortal energy that the universe designed to be transmitted through biodegradable bodies and natural universes forever and ever and ever, you're going to be born and die, born and die. I like that process. You be young, you grow up, you learn stuff and you die and you look back, love, happiness. I love this stuff. I like it the way nature did it. They saying something wrong with that. They saying humans are too emotional. Your holographic body won't have sadness if you don't want it. If you don't want to feel pain, what will music be like, bro? I like to hear some sad stuff sometime. That's what makes us human. Our emotions, the natural things about us, the fact you're going to wrinkle up one day and get some pretty wrinkles on your face. You're going to get you a pretty gray head or have a gray crown of wisdom is what I call it. Somebody told you something wrong with that. That's ugly. We got a beauty industry of bleaching the hair out. You got people 70 years old with dark hair. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Putting chemicals in their head because they don't and, and, and cream to hide their wrinkles. Because we want to stop aging. We want to be frozen portraits in times. We shop so much that now we want to be mannequins. They create a consumer world. Mannequins don't age. You didn't know every day you walked in that mall, you was looking at the kind of human they wanted to create, a mannequin. A kind of man. I don't know if, see, they convinced us for years all of these human aspects are sinful, are lower things. They said, listen, we got some new bodies for y'all that can turn depression off. We can get rid of frustration. We can even get rid of human learning and replace it with machine learning. How do you do that? Well, you know, everything, you know, my brothers and sisters, you had to learn that. And so you appreciate your wisdom. But what if you didn't have to learn it? What if you can just upload it into your brain and you can be a black belt martial artist like Neo in the Matrix? Nobody would respect moving up through the belt system. You got different color belts to represent the seniority with the students and the age levels and respecting the, 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 the degrees of understanding. And that sensei worked his ass off to get that black belt. So it's something about human learning that we appreciate and value ourselves as humans with that process of learning and trial and error. But science taught you that's a flaw in humans. Machine learning is better. And they created cool movies like The Matrix that I love myself. I said, damn, it'll be dope to just learn karate by downloading it. Now I'm starting to re-question it. It's movies like that where they want to sell the concept of merging you with machine. 
and, and, and losing respect for learning as a human. And they want you to now become to learn like a computer where you can just program karate into the computer. But the damn computer don't respect the spiritual aspect of martial arts, though. And you can't teach the computer that. You can't teach the computer why you should respect the red belt versus the green belt. You can't program respect. And we lose all respect when we give up our bodies for holograms, family, is what I'm trying to teach you today. And you ought to find it very disrespectful. So let's read some more. Immortality means not subject to death, while mortal means perishable or subject to death. Of course, let's skip around. The new body will be luminous. The book of Daniel says it's going to glow. Just let your soul glow. <laughs> your soul already glow, fam. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me see. Uh, let's just move on. See, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I said this little light of mine, not this little light that Elon Musk made for you inside of cyberspace. That ain't your light. You ain't generating that light. Let me show you something real quick because we got to do this. Let me show you something, how you lose your soul in 2020 and 2045. You see, if your consciousness is transported into this holographic body right here, that light that's shining ain't yours. Think about what I'm telling you, family, because it's about to get real, real right now. Once you move your consciousness into this light body that they made, uh, you ain't generating that light. Your soul ain't generating that light that's making this avatar. Microsoft is. Which means they can cut your light off, man. If your body is a light orb that's being beamed from a source that not you, that's Elon Musk or something like that, the moment you get out of line, they can just Cut your light off and you'll disappear. Now, where will your consciousness be? If your consciousness exists in this holographic body and they the ones lighting it up, when the lights go off, where do the consciousness go? To the dark space. Remember the movie Us? No, that was Get Out. That's prison. Perpetual darkness. They call it the bottomless pit, Gehenna, the abyss. That's what CERN is. And if you think I'm lying, look at look at look at the image of CERN right here. If you think I'm lying, look. Let's load this up. Look at the image of CERN. Now let's look up the ancient bottomless pit. It was called Gehenna. All right, let me get that for you real quick. It's on another slide. Uh, matter of fact, it's on this one somewhere. Let me find. Yeah, Gehenna, place of torture. That's what they creating. In a world where you can't die but you can feel pain, man, that's torture, bro. Because even in the hospital, they'll tell you if somebody being tortured, you need to kill them. If, if, you, if you kept a person alive and tortured them, that's worse than death. So what they about to do to us is worse than death is what I'm telling you. That's what hell is. Check this out. Ancient, the name of the bottomless pit, it's called the abyss. That cyberspace. This is what it looked like in the ancient world. When ancient people talked about the bottomless pit, here's what uh, the, the artwork, any ancient artwork you pull up in medieval time about the bottomless pit, 
and we're going to talk about that some more later as well. We're going to look at some more. It'll be, it'll look like this, like a wormhole. Now, what are they showing you? They showing you CERN. Look. Look at there. Look at here, man. Look, these folks, and, 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 you know, and what's so deep about it, people going to still think it's a game and that I'm giving them pseudoscience. But now let's keep on moving. So, uh, uh, let's skip through here. What else we can? The book of Jesus said they will shine as the sun. Why would they shine as the sun? Y'all, come on now. These holographic bodies. And see, and, and think about that. When you die, your soul is a light. The question you need to ask is, what's generating the light of your soul? You are, fam. Why would you let someone else generate your light? That's what they doing here, y'all. They trying to strip you out of the flesh. Like I said, they told you in order for this technology to work, you got to die. You got to be euthanized, which is the scientific word for rapture, man. There will be a rapture for the church because all the churches of the earth in the bed with the scientists. That's why I just showed you with the Dalai Lama is part of the 2045 initiative. The science of resurrecting the church and giving them the light bodies. They all in, in the same agenda together. Now, the sad thing about it is, bro, the moment you don't cast your own light, you're doomed. That's called condemnation. It say that in Revelation that everybody who accept the mark of the beast on their forehead going to be condemned forever. Nothing they can do to escape it. Everybody who, let me show you something. Everybody who upload into the holographic body via the mark on the forehead, you can't undo that. You're stuck forever. Unless they just be merciful one day and decide to extract you like a computer virus and free your soul from the machine. So we're in them times, and I'm surprised the church ain't talking like me, y'all. I'm surprised ain't nobody in the church talking like Sanchez. You know why? They part of the 2045 initiative, fam. They all part of the goddamn initiative. So what you see here is everybody meeting up with Yahweh in cloud space. But if you look at what Jesus and look, Leonardo da Vinci did this picture. This is the old when they was bringing up these concepts. This the artwork they gave to the people to show them about the new Jerusalem. Look at Jesus in the CERN portal. See, that's Jesus in the, in the CERN portal. Here go Jesus right here. The all sin eye is Saturn in the very middle. That go the all sin eye of Saturn right there. And what he got on his head? A crown of thorns. Christ going to come in the end of days. Y'all don't know that CERN is Christ, man. Because when Christ come, a portal going to be opened up on the earth. And heaven and earth going to be merged together. Just the way I'm explaining with this science, and that's what's happening. Christ is an alien, an extraterrestrial. And, they, and I'm telling you, people are going to think I'm crazy right now, but in the future, they're going to say that dude wasn't crazy 50 years ago. Look at the world. You know, so let's talk, talk some more. So Saturn, which is Christ in the middle, crown of thorns around him. 
Same thing they were saying in medieval time. Look at the CERN, CERN uh, image. And then look at uh, Leonardo interpretation of the rapture. It's the same spiraling portal. And it got Jesus with the ripper's hook. That's not, that's a dead giveaway, fam. Look at Jesus. Jesus got the same hook in his hand that Set got, Satan got. Santa with the candy cane. North Pole, I just told you, a new. Come on, fam, right here now. With the hook in his hand. The same hook that the rip, rip reaper got. Why? Because they ripping the ether. They creating a wormhole. That See, that hook is how Jesus cut his way into this dimension. It's Jesus is an interdimensional traveling extraterrestrial harvesting souls. This, this alien called Yahweh that's harvesting souls on this fifth dimension, this cyberspace dimension. I'm warning y'all right now. Some people going to think I'm crazy, but this is some real shit. So the, 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 the sword represent this, this godly being from this interdimensional upper realm slicing his way into the earthly realm, creating a gateway, a portal for souls to commune with him into his kingdom. And all of this artwork that you see today is, is, is today's CERN technology personified thousands of years ago. That ought to blow your mind, man. In fact, I'm going to take a minute and let that shit sink in. Ain't nobody else uh, decoding it like this. What else I got for y'all? Because it's so much deep stuff, man. I be on it. I got for y'all. Let me show you something. It said Moses' face shine when he was in God's uh, presence. Every time we deal with Jesus shining as a bright light, they deal with the transfiguration of Jesus. In theology, that's what they call it. So the theologians is using the same scientific terminology that Elon Musk is all them using to make us so-called Christ-like. But see, ain't nobody looking at the parallels in the language. That's why I'm pointing it out. You really got to be a bright mind to pick up on this stuff. And I'm not trying to just have ego and stroke my own Horn, but it's a lot of, you know, the masses today, they sheeple, man. So we got a lot more to go into, fam, but right after this commercial break. Lightly inebriated, man, I need to make 
can't get me. I need some paper. When they see me, I'm on them to say that he's the greatest. They say I'm doing too much, but I ain't doing enough. I woke up feeling fucked up. Somebody gon' bite the dust. Need a crutch. Come through in the clutch. No way, half a cup. Slide like a buck. Rolling nuggets, still look like the hook. Working hard every day. Shit, no appreciation. Amazing the way they display in two faces. No way this is safe. It's too dangerous. I can't get contained in the matrix. Away with the fake shit. Enemies, all your fees in the police. No sleep. Most times, no cheese. Proceed to roll with the OGs. Think I changed it. You never did know me. Just when you think you got life, I'll figure it out. This when you realize you don't know shit. You think you're the only person with problems. You're really just another raindrop in the ocean. The moment when you're reminiscing about your youth, thinking about what you would do if you can go back and do it again. Would you save a couple friends who was going down the wrong path and it got them fucked off in the end? Would you holler at that girl who was always fun as hell, but you really couldn't tell if she liked you? Or would you go and get a 357 and ride on them niggas who was always trying to fight you? You probably would have paid attention in the classroom. Probably wouldn't have been buying weed in the bathroom. You probably wouldn't have got that tattoo. You might even get your set flag back too. Probably wouldn't have cheated on the when you hit you lost. Probably would have cheated on the when they hit you lost. If you get your money up, would you try to floss? Go to work, see your manager and strike a walk. And if you had a chance to go to heaven, would you go today? Go away. Ain't no coming back. You gotta go to state. Do you think you could recognize the father if he showed his face? What if you never see heaven and go the other way? At this time, we about to go deeper than the Marianas Trench. Buckle up. I ain't done with you. There are several ways you can support the stream. The, uh, show me that you appreciate the research and time. Let me thank you in advance. If you thought we went deep, you just wait. We ain't, we ain't went nowhere yet. Now, let's go deeper. Let's talk about Adam and Eve before the fall of man when they was living in the Garden of Eden. Let's read. It is possible that Adam and Eve were clothed with some type of light garment before the fall. After they fell, Adam and Eve realized that they had lost something. Adam and Eve felt naked after they was uploaded into the beast computer. So whatever form of ancient technology that they hold had to open up wormholes in Egypt and Samaria and all that, they had an ancient form of technology that was able to do this same thing back then, people. But it wasn't able to do it on a massive scale. There's something called a Christ mass. We call it Christmas today. The souls of man's are gifts to God. The, the true Christmas is the harvest festival that I'm telling you about when all of us are given as gifts unto Yahweh. So and what is a gift? A gift is something that's wrapped in a wrapping. The wrapping is the holographic body. Your soul will be given unto Yahweh, which is the beast computer, the AI cloud. And it'll be wrapped in this light garment. So Adam and Eve had, would be like us right now. We got our souls. Let me break this down for y'all because I know it can be confusing. I'm going to go back to this picture. In all of the artwork with Adam and Eve, hold on. All right, so listen, in all of the artwork with Adam and Eve prior to the fall of man, you can see them with an auric glow as if they're some kind of higher beings. If you go look at the original early Christian artwork, Adam and Eve was a different type of human than they was after biting the fruit, after the fall. They lost something that made them feel naked. So what I'm trying to show you what that is. The soul around our body, the light around our body, right, is our auric, our vibration. 
our electromagnetic energy. That's what they trying to extract from the brain through the neural link. All right. What what caused the fall of Adam and Eve is what's going to cause another fall of us today. All of these falls are different generations falling deeper and deeper into what they call the bottomless pit, the abyss. They science said we exist in cyberspace right now. The ancestors said the whole goal of their spiritual system was to escape this world, to go to their base home at the North Pole. So it's possible that we already have been uploaded into a hell reality that we live in now. That's why our life never made sense. It was always hellish. There is a heavenly simulation where the ancestors went, which is the original base world where we opened up the portal at into this one. When we opened a portal to create this world, this was a first hell, a first kind of lower world from heaven. Because if you look at all the ancient cosmology, above the earth is heaven. Below the earth is hell. So the earth ain't necessarily a hell, but it ain't a heaven. But it will be considered an underworld. Because when you talk about underworlds, you're only dealing with all the worlds that's up under heaven. So the earth would be considered an underworld, a world that higher spirits fall into. The only spirits rise to the earth are spirits so evil in the depths of hell that the earth in the middle is like they heaven. And that's what the Bible tell you, that the devils from hell, the earth is their kingdom. The earth is the highest level they can go. We can go higher, which is what they trying to prevent. Because Jesus was a fisherman who was fishing for the souls of man. But them fishes was trying to swim higher up this heavenly mountain with their ancestors till they got captured in this wormhole of Saturn in this dimension, in this time matrix of Kronos. So check it out. This have happened before, which is why our ancestors warned their children to escape this realm. Heaven is above here. We ain't in heaven here. And I don't think we originate from an underworld. We are we are fallen angels. We don't want to fall in a lower than any lower than the earth, though. So when our ancestors open up a portal from their lowest heaven into this mid realm, there were beings opening up a portal from their highest hell into the earth realm. These beings had to work their way up from the depths of Sheol where it's very barbaric and violent in those lower dimensions. There are worlds like this one, but the laws are barbaric like they were in medieval times. Those worlds still exist in the ether. That's where these archons are from. They still ruling us with medieval law. So check this out. Um, the ancestors said they can't rise above the earth but we can fall below the earth from our higher state, which is why the devil want to take your glory from you and trap you in the depths of hell because he know he can't go no higher. Check it out, right? The people that run a world are so evil that it take everything in them to put a suit on and act normal. Y'all don't know how hard it is to just for them to blend in with us. When they get behind closed doors, they be in babies and everything. These folks are not like us. So why am I telling you that? Because for them lower beings to even be able to rise up to this earth to deceive us, they had to rise through the ranks of learning how to harness their evil energy to appear like good angels. That's the trick of the devil. The devil don't appear to us in this realm like a devil. He appear like Elon Musk and people trying to do good, right? When they really just trying to get your soul in the hell, which is what the agenda is I'm reading to you. So these folks come from lower worlds where these beings are so evil down there. They don't just want your body. They want your soul. They want to torture you for eternity. But for them to manifest onto the earth, they got to learn how to be good. They don't know good. 
So it's an initiation process. Even in the occult, it's about teaching good moral character. Why would why would you need that in the, in the occult? Unless you trying to teach a damn devil how to act good. Come on, folks. Our teacher ain't our ancestors ain't have to go through hundreds of degrees in a mystery school to learn how to treat each other. Right. They was born with that in them. These devils got to go through mystery schools just to learn how to blend in like us and quit. When they walk outside and see your little baby, they really want to drool at the mouth. And eat your baby. But they got to learn all their life how to act like a human. So when they walk outside, they ain't drooling at the mouth looking at your baby. So you don't know the true devil they are. For they can even manifest it if earth they got to rise up through the ranks and depths of hell in the in the other dimension. And when they get to this earth and they born in the body, they got to go through a cult school. It's teaching them how to be human, how to assimilate into it as they are uh, formulate into their own blockchain. This is an alien invasion. It's been one for thousands of years with these draconians, these archons. These Saturnians, they all look like us come in all races blended in. But they come from a whole nother universe, bro. Their energy is predacious. But they appear like saints. And I'm telling you, it's so hard for some of these devils to really smile and wave at a crowd. They thinking in their mind, I wish I can just torture all of these bitches forever in a, in a universe where they can't die, where I can just trap put bricks on their fucking ankles and let them stay at the bottom of the Marianas Trench and just drown forever, but they can't die. Like, that, that's really the these folks that evil. When you get mad, you say, well, I'm going to punch somebody. They get mad. They want your soul to be tortured forever. And that's where we at now, man. You don't think there's folks living amongst us that evil. But that's what they doing. Hold up a minute. Yeah, these folks have to learn how to be good, right? We don't have to learn that. We got a consciousness. They don't. They don't. That we're not the same. So look, it's Adam and Eve. Before they fell and became more barbaric, because what happened after the fall of man? Humans got more evil. We lost a chakra layer in this world we in now. The number of completion to the ancients was eight. After world religion 7,000 years ago, we had seven chakras now, and seven became a number of completion. How did we lose one? How did seven become completion when it was eight for completion and infinity? Subtract one layer of consciousness from your fall of man. Guess what? Guess what's going to happen? You got, now check how deep this is. The part of your body that's anchored inside of this reality is just one layer of you. But that's all they need to trap you for eternity. Because if they can create a situation where that layer can't escape, then they got you. If they can take the part of you that's in, in this world and put it into an AI world, they can keep you there for infinity. But if you just live out your life and die, then that part of you will live on in another reality, another mama, all that good stuff. What I'm saying is that part of you that lives in this body is actually one of your chakra layers. When that's part of you that that's wired to this earth is what they're trying to wire to this avatar. So if they do that, essentially the only thing will be left of us is six other chakras which exists on six other natural ethers. In other words, when you dream, you go to these other natural worlds where your other avatars are in these dream worlds. 
We already travel interdimensionally. So you rotating the layers, which are the avatars, the consciousness is in, in any realm or any avatar at any particular time or space. So when you transfer your consciousness into this different avatar, you exist in a different space called computer space, cyberspace. Even though you also in the physical space, the two worlds are intertwined. You don't really live in the physical space. You live in the cyberspace when you transfigure. So space and time is relevant to this transfigurative process of transmuting consciousness. Ancestors talked about this. They're just synthesizing the natural soul into the form of a projected light blue beam body. Now, you can slip in and out your soul's different avatars at will, but once you get into this one, that's it. Your journey stops there, buddy. So what happens is the other versions of you that exist on these natural dream states will just run on autopilot for eternity. You will never be able to dream again. You will never be able to have your consciousness lead his body and go have a dream like we do as humans. Once we become holographic uh, humans or AI, we won't dream anymore. But guess what? They got a solution for that. They say, yeah, I know we won't dream anymore. They actually admit that they won't be able to bring our dreams. You know why? Because they proven Brother Sanchez right. You know why we can't take our dreams over to the other side? Because our dreams are other sides. They are ethereal realms of themselves. When we dream, we go to real places where we got other avatars. They don't got the technology to bring all of the other dimensions of your soul into their realm. But see, you got one consciousness and that one consciousness can go in and out of these different realities and experience these different realities one at a time. It can't do it all together. It could do it one at a time. That's what make us multidimensional. The fact that we dream. When we stop dreaming, guess what? We stop being multidimensional. We stop being immortal. Which means immortal has nothing to do with living forever. It's the state of which you're living forever. Because if you living forever in the way, the, the way they got for you, that ain't immortality. That's damnation. I mean, so what you living forever in hell? You live forever in heaven and hell. Hell just mean you being held hostage in a computer. And the devil can do with you what he will inside of his dimension. He make the laws. So think about this. When we fall, we lose a layer. You lose a piece of your soul, which is a chakra layer. Adam and Eve had an orb around a body before they fell. And the number prior to dynasty setting up on earth to represent completion was eight. After the fall of man, we was bound to the seven, which is Yahweh number. Seven day of the week, the seven system. We it's time to, to get off of that, man. Like I look not to not to hate on the number seven. Nature made that, but I'm showing you how they using that number against us. You ain't complete with seven. Eight is really infinity. Now check it out. We lost something. And after we lost something, the number became from eight to seven. And whatever happened before we fell. Adam and Eve had a light around a body that was visible. But after the fall of man, we lost that, that light around our body. And it even show you that in the artwork. 
when you look at Adam and Eve pre before the fall and after a lot of artists got them glowing. Which would have meant they would have lost they, their own aura, which is the same thing we lose if we let them extract it through the neural link into this hologram. Because this light body is basically them saying we giving you a new aura around your, 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 your body. Your consciousness is now replaced where your body would be. See, because if you look at your body, your body is conscious because your consciousness flows through it. So your body is surrounded by your own consciousness. But once you take that consciousness and put it into this body, what you have is your soul trapped in a fucking light matrix. You get what I'm saying? This is flipping you inside out, family. The light exists around the physical body because it flows through the body to give the body consciousness. Once it leaves the body, your body ain't conscious no more. You don't got a personality. All dead people got the same personality, bro. Silence. They all act the same. That individuality go with you. So once you take that individuality and put it into a light body, you just flipped your soul inside out and trapped your soul in a light prison, a matrix of light. That's what Saturn trick is. That's what the Illuminati mean, the light workers. This new avatar they building is a prison for our souls, y'all. It's a light matrix prison. They're taking the consciousness and putting it inside of this and the consciousness can't get out. They telling you this is immortality. You stuck there. On the other hand, our consciousness is free because it exists around our body. And when it stopped flowing through the body, it's free to go. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing trapping your aura that's around your body right now, man. But what you can do you can actually ha see what 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 Neuralink concern is is black hole technology. Light can't escape a black hole, so it's literally some modern day Ghostbuster shit where they sucking up the ghost in a black hole machine. That's what the Neuralink concern is. All black hole technology to open up this wormhole to a new dimension and suck you to the other side. This soul is a light being around our body and they've created instruments that can suck it up on some real life Ghostbusters shit, Neuralink, all of that. So this soul can be extracted and in, in, in placed inside of a different body. And that body is made of light for a reason. They wanted to create something that's indestructible. Look, if they put your body in a robot, even after a couple million years, that metal will even deg degrade or break down and free your soul. If they decide to tr uh, transmute our souls into wood bodies, well, after hundreds of years, even trees die. We'll, we'll, it will eventually break down and be free. Even if they made, the mo made our bodies out of diamond, after so long, even if it take billions of years, the diamond will be turned into sand, sand dust and your soul will be free from the diamond body. The only thing they can trap your consciousness in forever is a light body. Light will never degrade. These are some sick devils, y'all. These folks are demons. They know what they're doing. See, for this to be successful, this great harvest, to trap you for eternity means eternity, bro. If they were to try to put our consciousness into the strongest material on earth, ain't even more stronger than the ether family. The toughest metals on this earth still got to break down some way and be recycled, bro. So if they wanted to create this scenario to where you trap for eternity, they would have to use light to make your new avatar with, and that's exactly what these devils doing. 
telling you, y'all, I've been a nerd all my life, but now I'm seeing how deep this shit is getting in the world and the agenda. It just takes somebody to break down the shit to you to see how evil it is. So they flipping us inside out. This light don't have nothing covering it because your light supposed to shine free and not be blocked. That's what a term don't block my light, but they can block your light with another light. That's what I'm telling you here. In nature, our human aura don't have a covering around it. It is the covering. What they trying to do is get rid of the body and take the real you, which is your light, and, and trap it inside of another light. Putting the soul in a light in a prison, the genie in a lamp. And when the genie get trapped in a lamp, it got to do anything it's asked to do. Why? Because the genie didn't make the lamp. And the lamp can be destroyed. So that'll destroy the genie too. And guess what color the genie is, by the way? Since we talking about genie. You find it a coincidence that the genie is blue too? And the genie got a tail on him? Just like the sky god I knew? On the left, see the sky god Anu can fly, and the sky god Anu lives inside of a jar like a genie. Or you know how? Listen, Noah got on a blue robe. Look at Noah. Noah got a blue robe on, and Noah lives inside of a little ark. And 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 Anu is a sky god that wear blue, and he inside of a little container. And you grew up looking at a guy wearing blue that lives inside of a little ark, a little lamp. That lamp is nothing but Noah's ark. The blue robe Noah wearing. Noah is a sky god, man. That's what I'm telling y'all. Folks ain't sinking this stuff together right. Why you think you're wearing blue? Same reason Anu was a sky god. They took the wings off of Anu to create Noah. And instead of giving uh, Noah wings, they just gave Noah a little bitty bird. How many of y'all remember the story? See, Anu was able to fly to find land because he had wings. But when they recreated it with Noah, they took away the wings and just made Noah release a bird to find the land same damn story man it ain't gonna get past us because we too advanced over here but all of them can fly which is why the genie could fly and he was blue too but you know it's a lot of stuff i want to get into so let's move on i didn't mean to bring up the genie so the genie had a blue body and that's exactly what you getting. Your genie stuck in a lamp in darkness, man, is you on the movie Get Out, trapped in a holographic body. The blue genie trapped in a lamp, your consciousness, your soul in a jar. Your soul ain't in no jar right now. But once you upload this energy around your body into the computer, your body can't live on. That's why they say you got to die. This is what they are extracting. This is, we already experienced a falling or a great death on earth, which was talked about with Adam and Eve. The earth was recreated during that Genesis. Genesis ain't no new earth. It's the, the lower earth being born. Everything before Genesis represents a, 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 a higher dimension where our ancestors was living in this heavenly abode. A few of us was kicked out of that higher realm because we was making technology there to, to make a loophole into a lower level. That's how this earth even got created. When the gods above started drilling down and the gods below started drilling up, 
they both met each other right here where we call the earth and they've been fine ever since for the soul of man. One been saying you need to go upward and the archons been saying we need to keep going downward in worlds where we make. Where the, the upward beings been saying we need to keep evolving upward through the worlds that our ancestors and our original spiritual gods prepared for us. See, these people who rule the world convinced our ancestors to go into heavens that their gods prepared. And they was using technology to do that like they doing today. It was the Christ mass, the worldwide plagues where they said it was great resets. Y'all, we in a great reset now. And the plague is technology. Up, People been trying to go out of the body without doing it the ancestor way through the natural ethers and create technology and elixirs to do it and mushrooms. And that's how we created these lower worlds, trying to cheat the system. So when gods in heaven started falling from consciousness, experiment with technology, creating lower worlds and simulations, tearing open ethers, they created different heavens from the first heaven the second heaven third heaven but the uppermost heaven is the original world that we read about where the humans and the animals live together and the system of the earth was perfect it took so many falls in consciousness from that where we've been experimenting with this same technology and and there's been massive events where it's like humanity just left the earth and reappeared and we started count time again. And that's how we get this time matrix today where we saying it's 2001, 2000 years ago, somebody hit a worldwide reset button. If you rewind time 2000 years from now, you will end up year zero day zero during a great reset time, what was happening on the earth? Do your research and see how long they've been resetting time and transfiguring consciousness, shifting us to lower and lower depths of, of the abyss. Ancestors say ascension is the key, that we don't, this earth ain't our real home. And that the only way out is through good morality. They don't want to practice good morality because they so evil. They can't be good, y'all. So they got to create technology to open up the gateway. Your heart can open it up when you become a good moral spiritual being. You become the gateway they trying to make with technology, which is why they had to study us for years in order to make the shit. They had to study our heart, our mind, the way we love each other. What makes us care? Don't you know science act as if like aliens control it? Our scientists act like they ain't even human. Like I watch a lot of shows and these scientists be like, we're doing an experiment to try to understand why humans feel. You know, what makes us protect our children? What makes a mother loves their children? What makes a father willing to die for their children? So we're doing research and study in the brain and to figure out what makes us care. What real human would do that? These folks are fucking aliens, bro. This is a type of alien that don't know what it's like to care and it's trying to figure it out. It's studying you to see why the fuck you care about the trees. Why you care about your children when they eat theirs. Why you care about your children when they sacrifice theirs to God. They trying to figure out what make you motherfuckers good. Like, well, we from evil rule, man. That's the way science studies us, y'all, as if they're not us. And all of their research is trying to figure out what makes the human human. In other words, what makes you want to help the old lady cross the street? But if you think about it, 
why would you have a research based on that if you're human you know why it's in our heart why nobody gotta teach this why you don't gotta do experiments to understand why do humans care for their children let's study the brain to figure that out your ass ain't human i'm convinced now you ain't human you trying to act like us and you trying to figure out why you faking like you care all of these rich royal folks don't care for their children. They'll fucking eat them, nigga. They'll torture them. They got to act like us, though. These are fucking aliens, demons. They don't have a consciousness. They trying to figure out and study consciousness because they don't got one. A motherfucker with a consciousness don't have to study it to understand how it works because you got it. You use it. Nothing have to teach a baby how to use the con every like listen, it's listen, let me let me let me break some down to you. We may not know why dogs lick their ass, but every dog know why they lick their ass. It's in them. If you a dog, it ain't got to be taught to you. Ain't no big supreme chief dog got to come up and say, hey, we studying why us dogs lick our ass. Like I'm a dog. I lick my ass while I got to study my action and know why I do it if I do it. Like a fish studying why I swim. As you, The only person doing that must not be what I am. And you studying me to try to copy off me, but you ain't a real human, you mankind. Like, every turtle in the water blowing bubbles out his mouth don't got to study why it do that. It's a turtle. It's an innate action. It does it in it from birth. Why would it have to study something that it's been doing since the moment it was born? Why would it have to learn why it do it? No animal does that but humans. No animal got a science industry but humans. Because we being studied by a foreign species, y'all. These archons are real. Next time you li listening to these scientists, look at how they study us as if they're not us. What human think like that, man? What human want to find out? I mean, I'm just so mystified at why we care. Dude, only a devil talk like that, man. Come on, man. Open up y'all mind and listen to your brother. Why would you have entire experiments to figure out why we care and why we feel, why we love? You ain't got the, bro, we know why we do that. It, l listen, only people trying to figure that out, they can't be what we are, y'all. These folks got a whole department off trying to figure us out so they can try to be us and assimilate with us as they harvest our damn souls. This shit is real. I know it sounds crazy, but it's real. They're not like us. It's two different entities. It may be more on this earth, but they are all of our ain't all of us ain't in the same mental capacity. Some of us ain't, ain't perceiving reality the same in these meat packages. It's possible that they may be thousands of individuals walking the earth. That's one single consciousness. After all, that's what religion was trying to do anyway. Take away all of our consciousness and just make us one block mind with the mind of Christ or Yahweh. These royal people in power appear as individuals, but not all of us are individuals. There are. A, it, it's Listen. There may be a royal race of higher interdimensional beings among us assimilated in the flesh, but they may not all be different consciousness. It may be different bodies, but one blockchain consciousness. 
which is why they all operate so militant. They all on code. Like if you look at the royal agenda in the world, the royal families rule the world. If you look at how the agenda is carried out all around the world, so uniform to the T, no mistakes down to the second. Even when you think that they made a mistake, that's part of the plan. Everything just perfectly ran as if their AI is almost like the people in power been operating like artificial intelligence from the get go. Y'all 7000 years ago, uh, artificial intelligence was established on Earth in a form of government. And it started studying us trying to figure out why we care. And ever since those studies began, we became careless. You know why? If you wanted to study a group of beings, if you were alien and you wanted to know why they love and why they care, you would do a simple experiment. You would say, do they need to love? Do they need to care about each other? What if we take that away? What will happen? That's called science experiment. So they took away loving and caring and created Hell on earth, religion, hating each other, arguing with each other, killing each other. It's a 7,000 year experiment that's ran by Draconians who wanted, who came to this earth and they saw us living in heaven and they come from a place of hell and they tried to understand what is this shit called love. And at the same time, we was introduced to this thing called evil. And that was a swap off as they tried to learn why we love. We tried to learn how they hate. And now they got us convinced we the barbarians killing each other and they the saints in suits running the world trying to get us right. Man, man, man. Something happened on this earth, y'all. Well, we traded places with the people who we interacted with, these interdimensional foreigners. They came here as scientists, come to a new planet. They saw something that they didn't have in their planet, which was love, and they got rid of it to see if they can terraform this place like their home, which is void of all love. But they finding out it's hard to get rid of love, brothers and sisters, that no matter how evil you make the world, the most of us still ain't got nothing wrong with a little old love. So they saying that we want to completely do away with love. We got to fall them into a lower state. And now here we are today with the new uh, blue bean bodies. Guess what they saying? They saying when you upload into this body, you can delete emotions from it. So if, 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 if to people who like just say you 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 be wanna you get mad and you wanna do something crazy like kill somebody, but your human consciousness kick in. So you calm down and you don't kill nobody. You know how many people will be murderers if we didn't have a consciousness? Family, they creating a new body where they taking our consciousness away. They couldn't do it with religion. See, religion said you can do whatever you want to do. You can backstab a person and murder them and just ask for forgiveness and you OK. But they found out that didn't work that we still going to be loving that it made the world barbaric because ever since religion it has been a hellish world, it's been worse than the ancestors. We fell with religion to a lower hell that we in now, but this new religion, we going to fall into an even lower hell. This current religion system we in as that we've been under for the past couple thousand years was created to make us ignore our consciousness. Check. It was created to make us ignore our consciousness. This new technology is just going to delete your damn consciousness altogether. When you get into this blue bean body, they saying, listen, 
all that pussyfooting around when it's time to put in work, you can delete that and become a boss. Like you can get more gangster in these new bodies. But what they ain't telling you is we're creating an unconscious human being, a barbarian. This is truly hell, y'all. They saying it's with this new body, if you go up to a newborn baby and kill it, you won't feel nothing. You know how in your regular body, if you were to kill a newborn baby, you will be throwing up there to hunt you all your life. You won't be able to live because of karma, the way nature made us. They saying we can bypass that with the new body. You can do the most evil shit you can think of and you won't feel nothing. They can delete that in these bodies. Now, do y'all see the kind of world we're going to be living in in 2200? You don't even want to picture it, man. You don't even want to picture it, man. Like I said, this past thousand years was to make us ignore our consciousness to be barbaric. And you see what that's done. A nigga, man, a nigga will shoot you and your grandma up and he feels something because he human. Yeah, he feel a little remorse for it. But the remorse has been ignored by the gangsterism, the culture of demonism. So this new, this old way is to just make you ignore the consciousness to get gangster. This new technology, you ain't even got to worry about that, nigga. Everybody going to be a gangster in the new world. Everybody going to be bodied, bodied. Because in this new body, you ain't going to, you ain't going to have feelings. It's optional. And why would I tell them to give me feelings when everybody else don't got feelings? Otherwise, you shouldn't even upload because you ain't going to be able to compete in a world where other people can take actions without feelings. And you the only one walking around in a glowing blue body telling them to keep my emotions in mind. When the purpose of getting this new body was so you can get rid of emotions. They look at human emotions as a disease. That they curing with this. Why would anybody who want this body want to take depression, frustration, the feeling of you feeling like you want to give up sometime? Everything that make us human, you can delete that in ease. So anybody going into this new world and uploading to these new bodies, you will be a fool to, 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 to do it and to keep your damn emotions. You're going to be food for the sharks, man. Hold up a minute. Let me take a little uh, smoke break. Hold on. So uh, let's let's get into some more stuff because I'm still ain't done. Now look, um, I'm a, I could read some more of these, but just to skip forward here, let's kind of accelerate this thing because I got some more stuff. Let's move on, and I think we need to talk. A little bit about, about Neuralink. Let me, what I'm doing now is y'all giving me a little time. We taking a break. Let's take a little quick, quick break. Go get you some water. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'll do? I'll play a song for y'all real quick to wake y'all up. One of my songs. Matter of fact, I'm not going to play one of my songs. I want to share. I want to uh, promote my uh some of these artists in the community man you know it is more than just about me you know y'all can always access my music so let's give these brothers some shine we're gonna listen to a song real quick just so i can prepare us for the next section i told y'all we was gonna get it in we was gonna be here a minute but if you appreciate what i'm doing hit the like button hit the donate button all right, I could do this in parts and come back tomorrow, but I don't want to do that. I'd rather have a six, 10 hour long, a six to 10 hour long stream and get it all out and have my day free tomorrow. You can chop it up into parts. So give me a minute to 
prepare for the next part, and uh, I'm going to uh, be right back. It's time for me to pour another shot of uh, shot. Filling up the styrofoam cup with cops watches yes. Showing the hood the squad cars and helicopters uh, Young uh, niggas uh, cocking their guns to get it popping pop, pop. Young old men, they Benjamin Buttons are over Red and Bacchus yeah, Live Bacchus. from the projects, they pop ya Hood rats are giving their goods to get it popular yes. Out of town, let's give up their goods to incite robbers Daytime is even more hectic for night drivers uh -huh. Dice game turn to timid to street fighters uh, fight. Friends that you grew up with, they double lifers double Pushing up Violence again, the cops watches right to the point where you can synchronize watches. Kids throwing sawed off shotguns and lockers, throwing back vodka. Everything that's unnecessary, the hood sponsor. And that's the life that I watch as the night drive. Rich get rich on back, support expenses. Being taught that everything good is too expensive. Skipping class, school ditching on the stoop, pitching that comeback. Hot the fiends filling prescriptions, trying to get clean to fight methadone addictions. Niggas in the kitchen, steady chefing that shit. My nigga, listen, fixing that shit so hot you hear it sizzling. Ain't no friends, homie, it's all business. The daytime figures, they get crooked in night vision. Trying to keep shit so smooth to fight friction. Nine to five, pay no money to day shippers. Penny pitch a nickel too much to gauge tippers. Weight flippers pushing the scales to make victims, make villains, and make killings. It's way too much in the hood sponsor. An hour down, seven to go. The night trial. Night trial. Hey, y'all, um, so we're going to get right back into it because I got so much deep stuff, man. I'm going to throw it all out. Let's talk about the Ark of the Covenant, right? And now we're about to go into, uh, let me close this out. I ain't going to keep that open if we're done with it. Maybe that and that, okay. All right, y'all ready? Now, we talked about the New Jerusalem earlier, remember? Um, and I talked about Hitler a minute ago, and I talked about Jerusalem is actually going to be the country that's housing cyberspace, these new universes. So when the Bible talk about the entire earth going to be tossed into the new Jerusalem, excuse me, it say that the, the evil people on an earth with the beast going to be tossed into the lake of fire. But the people left going to rule with Christ on the earth as earth get merged with the new Jerusalem. So what are we reading in Revelation? Two things is happening to the earth. There's a great split happening. Earth is merging with the underworld and the heavenly world in Revelation. Because earth merges with the hellish realm when it's being tossed into the lake of fire. Earth merges with the heavenly realm when it becomes bonded with the new Jerusalem. So God and the devil been working together for years to harvest our souls. They're a team, man. They're a team. So now let's talk about this image right here. This image is older than all of us and our grandmothers. See, we got to go back to these ancient Hellenic images that they was using with the scripture. This is what the church don't do. Why don't the church teach the Bible like this? The church got all these scriptures, but the people had images to the scriptures. Why we don't see them going over it? Because this is what they studying in the large family. Okay, this is the degrees of understanding in, 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 in the occult. 
hold up a second. We about to go in. So this image is is uh 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 the saints image of the new Jerusalem descending onto the earth. Now, where else did we hear about a floating city descending onto the earth? I just brought up Adolf Hitler. I just brought up Adolf Hitler. Everybody know Adolf Hitler was talking about some called a Vamana. And the Vamana is what the Dalai Lama know about. Guess what, y'all? Hey, I'm about to blow you away now. Check it out. Here go the two pillars of Freemasonry, what Hitler was talking about. A synthetic sun and moon inside of a synthetic universe. You know why? I'm, I'm about to show you what the Vamana is. Wait on it. I got to get my slides. Hold on. Hold on. Open that up. Let me open up that. And let my com slow computer load this folder up because we about to go deep. It's worth the wait. Hold on. Because now I got to go to my ancient cosmology. He go to ancient Yoruban cosmos. It was the first one to pop up. Let's use it. I don't want to keep you waiting. The ancient Yoruban showing our multidimensional universe separated in layers. And they saying how in the middle of it is an ethereal pole. And on each side of that pole is day and night. So the entire universe is separated by day and night. Even when you dream, you experience day and night in the dream. You say, hey, when I dreamt this time, it was daytime. Last time I had a dream, it was nighttime. Just like your real life, how we experience day and night one at a time. So that it's showing you how a universe is split in every ether that way with day and night. On each side of this boat is night on one side, day on one side. So that became the two pillars being split. That's the two pillars each side of the boat. That's Moses holding the serpent rod, splitting the sea of water. Because they saying our world is made of ether, which is this God element. But if you look at this artwork, that go the, uh, another form of Moses splitting that ethereal sea, what I talked about earlier, and which is why Moses carried the serpent staff. Okay? And who got the serpent staff? And the reason it's a wiggly little pole or a serpent staff is because if you look at the ancient cosmology, it's the North Pole. You know how Zeus carried a lightning bolt. You know when Zeus, let me show you some. See, Zeus is just plagiarization. Let me show you some. When you see these folks giving you Zeus holding on to the lightning bolt, that ain't nothing that they created, man. These folks are thieves. I'm showing you the original uh, concept. Our ancestors held on to that lightning bolt which is also a serpent staff. All right, right here, the Polynesian cosmos, way older than Zeus, and they holding on to the lightning bolt. And later you got Zeus holding on to the lightning bolt, the stairway to heaven. It ain't a lightning bolt. It's a stairway that's made of light. And our ancestors, it was said that our chief elders meet us at the crossroads, your chief ancestors. You know how we can't know our great, 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 great forefathers? Because when we die, that's who that's the mystery of Christ. They got us thinking in religion. When you die, you meet their great ancestors. Remember, Christ, Moses, Abraham, Noah, all of them is their ancestors. Remember, Noah was on an ark, too. Noah was on a cosmic boat during a reset. Where do you think they get it from? Here go the, the Noah's Ark right here. Noah's Ark is the Ark of the Covenant, which what we about to talk about in a minute. But let me crawl before we walk. Here go the form of Noah before they plagiarized it and a form of Zeus. I'm giving it all to you today, family. Now check it out. So, you know, uh, where was I going? 
you know, it'll come back to me. Let me just get back to Hitler. So back to this image, the concept of a floating city, but in this city, the entire earth can live in it. Now, family, you know, it ain't no city nowhere on this earth that can fit everybody on earth in it. So they talking about cyberspace. The only way you can build one city that can fit 10 billion people in it is if you compressing them into a computer and land and space don't matter in computer. The way we determine space and size and volume is dealing with the natural law, but that can change in cyberspace. It's against the natural law to fit 10 billion people in a space the size of a city. It'll be impossible. But in cyberspace, it's possible. In cyberspace, you can fit an infinite amount of information in just one acre of space, y'all. In just one little bitty hard drive, you can have the, the information of the entire family Earth DNA. So we're talking different once you go into this other space. The laws become different. This is why they call it hell. Now check how deep this is. When you talk, the New Jerusalem was a floating city that descended from heaven and housed everybody on earth in Christ's new kingdom. That's what they building now. A floating city is one that exists in cloud space. Now, this image is a city that's in the clouds. But guess what? Remember now, all the technology that they use in the day, Hitler had it, which is why they ganged up and killed Hitler. How can I prove it? Look at Hitler concept. This is what Hitler was talking about. Now, when, they get, when, 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 when people talk to you about this today, they say it's a rocket or a spaceship to get us to other worlds. But it ain't no rocket to get us to other worlds. It's the same thing that the Polynesian was talking about right here, man. We get to the other worlds by transfiguration, transferring our consciousness out of body, astral projection. So when we ask to project and sit Indian style, our body look like a boat. Let me show you. Our body look the same way. Like this is the Ark of the Covenant. This is how you get, get through the Great Reset. Ascension. True initiation. The ancestors calling us back home. So guess what I'm telling you today? We still got more to learn, but let me give you a jewel real quick. Take a minute for a jewel from the ancestors. Your only initiation into the ancestors kingdom is simple. Die a natural death. You'll be surprised. You think what I said is simple, but by 2045, you're going to be begging some of your loved ones to die a natural death because it's going to be a great split on this earth. A lot of people don't know what's on the other side. They ain't woke like you. They ain't connected with the ancestors and they fear going to lead them to seek immortality through the Neuralink. You know better. You're going to tune back up with the ancestors. It's a great split happening where some humans going to die in this generation, natural deaths, and the other half going to be born again into the beast. That's the split we're going to experience in our generation. A split of souls. Some souls going to be harvested to Yahweh. Some is mean back up with the ancestors, but either way, the portal is opening right now and nature ain't stopping it. This is part of the great ascension. She letting it play out. People got to make a choice now, even if it cost them, cost them they soul. Like nature ain't going to stop you from getting bit by a venomous snake in the jungle. Only thing going to stop you is your own knowledge, man. You the Messiah. Nature gave you your mind. Damn it. Use it and quit begging her to thank for you when she gave you the damn God given ability to thank. 
so this was the image that they had of the new Jerusalem descending onto the earth, which is the same thing that the Hindu called a Vamana. Now you see why the Dalai Lama in the bed with Elon Musk, because they've been teaching this thing to they people for thousands of years. I told you Samaria, Egypt, everybody sold out their people. Thousands of years ago, all of these folks, royal families, no matter your color, it sold out everybody. It ain't about color. Everybody gets sold out. The devil wants everybody sold. If you think it's about color, let me tell you something. They trying to turn everybody blue, goddammit. <laughs> Nigga, your new body ain't going to have no color. It's going to be blue. In the movie Avatar, everybody was blue. They got y'all thinking it's about color. It ain't about color to them. They trying to make everybody the same color. Blue. <laughs> so they've been everybody leaders been selling them out, brothers and sisters. The Dalai Lama ain't no goddamn saint. He's a damn baby eating devil too. All arm um, draconians and demons. And I ain't got no more mercy for none of the shit. So you can expect most streams like this, goddammit. Now look at this old artwork. And this old artwork, this is carved on the walls of Anchor Wat. They got floating cities. They, they, our ancestors been trying to create this damn cloud universe for years man and they've been succeeding at it but they ain't been getting it right the original draconians tried to make a world what they trying to make now but they couldn't get rid of emotions we still came out on the other side loving dubby and karen which is why they had to come with religion so now they getting it right. They done recreated the world many times. How you think we get all of these damn ethers that the ancestors talking about? Each one is our recreated copy. There's only one true one that the original source created made. And that one's just the one way at the top that they call the, the highest of heavens. That's the one we on a journey back to. That's what Jesus called a promised land. So check it out. They've been experimenting because they know our world is light based and holographic. They've been recreating the earth many generations after the nets. Every time they recreate the earth, they say it's a different leap in evolution. Like we go from Australopithecus to Homo erectus to all of these different other human, different being. We get new bodies Every time the earth is terraformed. So when they tell you Australopithecus walked the earth, he wasn't walking around with the same food we got. It had bananas, but the bananas looked different. They were purple and they were huge. Our bananas small and yellow. The Australopithecus lived in a different earth. And when that earth left, that type of human left. So when we read what happened in Adam and Eve, they left to a lower earth. They fell to a lower dimension from the garden, which is our true home. But when they fell to that new earth, along with the new environment, they had new bodies now that age and get old. In science, they said we went from Australopithecus to Homo erectus. And then that's when all the religion came with the homosexuality. Ain't that crazy? <laughs> I mean, that's when all the homosexuals started getting erect erections. And the gods started walking around with huge cocks and cock worship, erection worship from hom homosexuals, right with homo erectus. I'm just saying, it got to be some, some similarity there. Now, let me hit my cigar. Now, check this out. 
Each level above here is a batter place. But it gets batter and batter the farther up we get all the way up till we get back to our true land in Eden where, where it ain't no predators there. Ain't no such thing as predator versus prey. So we battling these archons on the earth so that they don't create a wormhole into the higher heavens. Now check this out. The earth is like a threshold ground Armageddon where the two meet of higher beings and lower beings and where people come to decide which one they want to be. So the earth is like an interdimensional realm we were born into. We're spiritual warriors who were born onto a battleground and this whole life ain't even the battle. The battle don't start till we leave. It's a spiritual battle literally taking place in another dimension. That's why the ancestors is recruiting us at this time. No one ever going to win the battle. The fight going to continue to be fought for the recruitment. Some people going to always get recruited by the demons. Others going to be recruited by the ancestors. Th that's going to happen forever. The battle will never stop. It's, it's only going to play out at this earth forever and they're going to create two new technology here to make it easier to, to uh, recruit souls to the dark side. At the same time that's happening, the spiritual technology within the gods is ascending to a higher level so that we can match that technology. So if you look at what happened in the Matrix, the agents had all the pretty technology. But Neo just had natural soul power. Our technology is in us. That's what makes us great as human. They can't defeat that. They got to make you get rid of that to take a lower form of technology because you don't know how great you are. Neo didn't need none of them gadgets and devices and all that that them agents was using. Neo just needed to find his true self and none of their technology can work on him. Remember, they built their technology off studying Neo, off studying us. Remember that. So that we're, we're, we're born onto this earth. And you're, this earth is a recruiting ground for angels and demons, the ancestors and the archons. Your whole life is you choosing which army you own so that when you leave here out of the body and your inner en en energy is calibrated with the archons you recruited into their you re you recruited into their uh a spiritual family on the other hand if you get your energy right and in a line with the ancestors you recruited into their spiritual family so this earth is a big recruiting ground for souls. It's a simulation to see where your morality at from beings that's judging us from another level, good ones and bad ones. I don't want to spend too much time with that. I want to get back on the new Jerusalem, which is not a concept that started with Christians. The Hindu been talking about this new Jerusalem before Christians created this artwork, which is why the Dalai Lama is in the bed with the 2045 agenda. All right. They creating this in cloud. The new Jerusalem will exist where in the clouds, cloud space. This is the artwork that the religion's been giving us for 7,000 years to prepare us for the technology now that we will accept now because of the subconscious programming. Very intricate magic. So let's talk about the Ark of the Covenant because Noah's Ark is the Ark of the Covenant. The Vamana is the Ark of the Covenant. The New Jerusalem is the Ark of the Covenant. If you look at the Ark of the Covenant, we're dealing with sacred geometry, you can see that the Ark of the Covenant it's the same thing as uh, Noah's Ark, man. You got the two wings and the Ark. 
Now, why do the Ark of the Covenant got two wings? Because that's the wings of Anubis. Those are the wings of Anu. That's why the Ark got two wings. Anu is the, the, the gate guard, Yahweh. The one you got to conquer to get up out of here. That's King Cooper at the bridge. How you got to defeat Cooper to get to the princes. But see here, this ark, right? What is the ark? They said an ark glows with light. And that's what they say about the New Jerusalem and the Vamana. It's just different stories about this whole New Jerusalem Vamana concept. The, the cloud space future that they got for us. Right. That's the covenant. That's the ark. They keeping the promise of their ancestors. Their ancestors told them years ago about these visions that their forefathers had about harvesting souls. Now they children got the technology today to manifest it. So when you look at that ark of the covenant. The ark of the covenant is basically a, a, a gateway into the New Jerusalem, a portal, if you will. It's, it's just artwork to represent. You see this Vamana that Hitler was talking about? Hitler was talking about time travel and opening up time portals. Why don't they tell y'all that, that Hitler was in Time magazine because Hitler was called a genius by every country in the world? Listen, man, I'm trying to tell y'all Hitler was the first Elon Musk, man. Why, though? Not because of military, because of science. Hitler created the TV. Man, let me tell y'all something. Let me tell you something. Everybody in the world loved Hitler. Hitler was Times Magazine's man of the year. Because everything Elon Musk talking about, Hitler was talking about. Everything Elon Musk talking about with sulfur-based energy, opening up time travel, creating a wormhole, go do your research, Hitler was talking about. But you know what Hitler wouldn't do? Hitler didn't want to share his research with the rest of the world, man. Hitler wanted Germany to lead the world. He didn't want to share this shit with everybody, and we all do it together. Hitler wanted Germany to be first with this technology, and Germany be at the forefront. Just like today, they want Jerusalem to be first. Okay? Jerusalem is going to house this technology in the future and host this technology in the future. Hitler was plan was for Germany to do what Jerusalem doing today 70 years ago, y'all. That number seven again. Damn, we can't escape it. But anyway, seven completion. It was 70 years ago when Hitler tried to do what they doing now. Ain't that crazy? Let's drop a bomb for that. Hitler would, it, listen, I tell, I swear to God, man, if you go back and listen what Hitler was saying, what made him worship by the world, it's the same shit Elon Musk saying that's making Elon Musk be worshipped by the world. And now I'm finna really fuck y'all up. Remember the dude I put up earlier, Dimitri Itzkov, and we said he looked like Elon Musk? He's from Russia. And he's from Germany. So he's from the lent would be the lineage of Hitler. But guess what? These folks sold out their forefathers. Hitler was their last forefather trying to do what's right for them. Hitler was saying, let's keep our technology for our people like we saying about our ancestors. They were saying, Hitler, you need to share with everybody else. And we, they was trying to make a United Nations around Nazi Germany. Hitler didn't want to do it, so they made it without him and took the shit. And, and re it took them 70 years to reverse engineer what Hitler already had. 
Hitler drew the shit out right here. This is literally the layout of cloud space. You dealing with two vortexes here. You talking about how this thing would transmit in cyberspace, how this vortex would look. That's why I brought up the, the, the symbol of Yahweh earlier, and it's shaped like a triangle, the tetragrammaton. That's all this is, family. It's the tetragrammaton, the trinity, the triangle. It's a vortex. It's a womb like a vagina, a triangle, that you can be born again through this, but you will be born in cyberspace, euthanization. I'm, I don't want that. I'd rather do it the natural way. See, when they talk about before the gods, we was born again through mothers. You was born in this world through a mother. If you die, you're going to be born in the next world as a, in a mother. The only time you're going to be born through a man is if they're rebirthing your consciousness through Neuralink and a man created a fake womb a woman's womb is a stargate to allow consciousness to become flesh they're reverse engineering a big pussy at CERN that can allow humans to be born because in order for you to get consciousness into a world something called birth got to happen so CERN ain't nothing but them reverse engineering the birth process and saying now you can be born into a computer. It's the gateway to get you from point A to point B. Hence the word Vamana or a spiritual vehicle. At the same time as a city because it's a universe too, right? Now y'all getting it? So Hitler was talking about CERN in the 40s. And they would have implemented it then. But the hole up was that Hitler didn't want to work with everybody. So they spent these last thousands of years going to war and rebuilding after that war. Now, the crazy thing about it is if you look at Adolf Hitler facial features, he looked just like the dude, the new Hitler today. This is Dmitry Iskov. He's the founder of the 2045 initiative. A Russian looked just like Hitler. Elon Musk looked like Adolf Hitler. Y'all really can't say I'm reaching here. I swear to God I'm not re reaching. That powdery little skin, the little fluffy cheekbones, you know the little cheek apples he got, the, the, the pale looking face with little hair. You ain't got a lot of facial hair. Is pale. You got these little apples right there. A very small mustache, if any. Same with this guy. Very small mustache. The eye apples, the paleness, the powdery. Same thing with Hitler. It's just weird. It's weird. And Hitler was saying the same thing they saying, but Hitler would not unite with the nations like Elon. So he's the new Hitler, they ready for it now, and all of the world uh, people, to get the nations together with it for the new Jerusalem. They gonna let Jerusalem take us into this new era of living in cyberspace. If it, it if the Jews won in power, if the Jews never won World War Two, and and if Germany would have won a war, the same shit would have happened, but it would have been Germany at the forefront. Guess what? Imagine, like I told you earlier, Silicon Valley and Jerusalem is leading the world in this research. That's all because of World War II. Before World War II, Germany was leading the world in mind uploading. Out of the body. Loophole talk. Wormhole talk. People, I swear to God, Hitler was a god. Yo, the same way they treat Elon Musk, they treated Hitler the same way. Hitler was talking about new energy systems. All the shit Elon them talking about, Hitler was talking about it. And they celebrated Hitler. And then they killed him because he didn't want to take his plans and co-opt it with the rest of the governments. 
so Elon Musk is the new face of that now. Hitler won't act right. So they took all of his shit and now they got Elon Musk 70 years now. 70 years later from Hitler, we got Elon Musk saying the same thing. Why you think people worship Hitler and they thought he was a god? Did you know Hitler promised his people immortality? They thought Hitler was some kind of cult leader because he promised his people immortality. But Hitler wasn't no damn cult leader. Elon Musk, Google, Bill Gates, all of them is promising us immortality today. They killed Hitler, y'all, for promising immortality. They said he was becoming too big headed. They convinced the whole world that Hitler was getting too powerful talking about he can give immortality. But they didn't get let Hitler live long enough to go around like Elon Musk explaining the technology to the whole world. Elon Musk is different from Hitler. He working with them people. So he can go around the whole world and explain to us how the technology worked that he going to implement on the world. Hitler was trying to control the world without working with the nations, but he still had to go around the whole world and try to convince the people about this new technology. He would have been the first Elon Musk. That's what the swastika represent. CERN technology, immortality. I don't agree with it. I'm not a Hitler fanatic. I don't even agree with Hitler's agenda. I'm just telling you how it is. He ain't no damn d a bit worse devil than they are. They all had the same agenda. They wanted it for Jerusalem. See, the United Nations wanted for Jerusalem. Hitler wanted it for Germany. Hitler wanted the new Jerusalem to come up out of Germany. In other words... When we talk about cyberspace, he wanted the technological faculties and centers to be housed in Germany, not Belgium. Hitler wanted the Silicon Valley of the world to be in Germany, not San Francisco and L.A., not Jerusalem. But Hitler, because Hitler didn't win, that's why we got Silicon Valley in America and Jerusalem. That's the beast of. And the great whore, which is the Statue of Liberty that was devouring the souls on earth in the last days. That's the mystery of Babylon, Jerusalem and America leading the world in this new exodus. California and Jerusalem or Babylon, the great whore and the beast. So. Their forefathers told them Germany was going to be a problem because they prophesied World War II and all the religions. They knew that the, the, the rulership that was over in Germany wasn't ready for consolidated powers yet. And that the only hold up to the new world order agenda was Germany. Germany was like, if we got all the fucking knowledge we need to be at the head of the U.N., not America. Today, America is like the biggest influencer of the U.N. But back in the, in, the, in the day when Hitler was alive, before the United Nations was created, all the nations were united. But America wasn't at the front. We were still using radios and Germany had a TV. And, and they was Hitler was talking about cell phones in the 40s, man. They, Germany was so far ahead of the world. Germany was ahead of China, man. Why you think China teamed up with everybody else to go after Hitler? Hitler had discovered something from Nikola Tesla. And whatever Hitler discovered is the technology that we call Tesla technology today. It, it made Germany leap ahead of everybody in the world by hundreds of years in technology, and they couldn't have that. Either Hitler was going to unite and share the secrets, or they, they was going to form the United Nations. But see, these are royal families who've been knowing each other for thousands of years. 
So it ain't no damn prophecy. It's prediction. It's like every every family reunion, you know, cousin such and such going to get drunk and get to fighting with the other cousin. It ain't that you a damn prophet. You know, your two uncles, when they get that liquor in them, they going to go to talking shit and that we going to have to break up a fight when them niggas get drunk at every barbecue. That's how the people is in power, these royal families, these archons. That's how they can put in a religious book. They can prophesy World War II. They can say, you know what? Germany ain't going to act right. Because they think because they got all the knowledge, they don't need to share with the rest of the families. We may have to go to war with them in this year. Boom, boom, boom. Because they plan ahead for everything. They got to see into the future. They don't let days unfold randomly. And true enough, because these people study activity, they can predict your fucking actions. In this age of Internet, everybody predictable. And you want to know how they can predict these wars in religion. They know they was going to have a problem with their German brothers and sisters at that time. That them, hey man, you know, everybody in the family, you know, you got the family reunion, right? The Johnsons, the Taylors, the Smiths, and all that. And all of the families under that tree who united for the most part know that it's a few families in our shit who bougie. And all of the families that's united they get together and call each other on the phone behind closed doors and talk shit about the bougie families. And guess what they say? They say, now, y'all know the family reunion coming up. We want to know if the tailor's going to show up so we know if we're going to get y'all name on a shirt or not. Yeah, child, so you responsible for getting all the tailors together. The Taylor family had a leader. The Smith family had a leader, but all these families is one big family tree, right? Every last name got their leader to get them ready to meet up and prepare for the reunion, right? Now, when everybody calling each other, what are all the united good families saying about the bad ones? We saying, see, we calling everybody, let them know what city is going to be at and all that. But we ain't calling everybody when we say certain things. Certain families ain't going to call the other families. The good families going to call each other in secret and be like, now, listen, we don't need the Johnsons and the Taylors fucking up this reunion. You know, that's the ratchet side of our motherfucking family. So we need all the good families who united. Y'all know I ain't lying. All the good families who know how to act right at the reunion got to call each other in secret before the reunion. And, and talk about how we going to control these ratchet ass niggas in the family. Because, you know, every reunion, some shit pop off, some gangster shit pop off with them Taylors and them Johnsons. So all the other families call each other and be like, now, look, y'all, y'all know this reunion coming up. We ain't going to fuck this up. You know, grandma going to be there. All right. We ain't going to let the Taylors and, and the Johnsons fuck this one up again this year. So, so what all the other families say? Okay, so we, we no alcohol at this reunion. Because soon as them Johnsons go to drink and it's going to be some shit. Right? So that's what they do in the royal families. All of them that's connected with the UN, they didn't need a United Nations or a new treaty. A new, the United Nations was a new covenant among the royal families. They didn't need that. They had to reestablish their union because Germany wasn't loyal. And they had to make every other nation repledge its loyalty to the union. And after Germany was defeated, there was a new Germany born into the union. And when the new Germany that sold out to the union after Hitler was born into the union, the new Germany had to take a new oath to the covenant. And when that happened, every other nation had to renew their oath to the new Germany. 
And that's how you get the United Nations and the new treaty and the new establishment among the royal families that we're going to rule together and we're going to share everything with every, each other so we don't be split up again like our uh, that generation of German royalty with the Hitlers. They had to purge them out of the bloodline. They didn't want to act right. That happened all the time in the royal families. They killed Princess Diana. They do that all the time, man. Y'all ain't know that? Now, hold up a second and we'll go further. So this is the Hitler's concept of a Vamana. What you looking at is the CERN portal. This is CERN, ladies and gentlemen. Don't let them fool you. You ain't looking at it right. That's why you don't know it's, it's CERN. Let me open your third eye. Hitler, what they call in Hitler's Vamana technology is what they call in CERN today. Now look at CERN. If you turn this the other way, guess what you get? A Vamana. This ain't nothing but the CERN collider that they built in. Germany was going to build it first. They took the technology out the World War II, and it took them 70 years to reverse engineer it. This was Hitler's plan. See, Hitler would have been the same kind of devil Elon is. He wanted to rule the world like Elon. But the ruler of this world got to work with the other rulers and kings. Can't have one man greater than the team. Hitler didn't understand that. The new Germany do with Dmitry Iskov and these new young guys are more compliant. They're more unified. Their union is more stronger now, these archons, than ours uh than I was, uh, was when we fell. So even though we divided, they're not. The people in power are more united now at this time than ever because these demons are all participating in a great harvest of souls. And when the feast is going on, everybody happy. Even though we going through the pandemic and the people are more divided with social media and racial conflict, the people in power are more united than ever at this time. The United Nations ain't been this damn jolly in a long time because this the agenda. When they, the, the, the more united they get, the more divided we get because their mission and their unity is to divide us. So what Hitler was given was flat earth, man. That's why I keep showing you the Polynesian cosmos. They told you Hitler was creating a rocket to the stars when the ancestors said this is a Vamana that we project our consciousness out of our body through meditation to get there. Here is the reverse engineering of that portal and it's shaped like a Vamana. What you looking at what Hitler was talking about right here? This concept of a Vamana, it's a CERN portal. That's what I'm showing you here. This takes the information from one dimension and passes it to another. So one of these represent the beast connecting to our world. But then the other side of CERN is where it connects our world to the cyberspace. So it's a portal, a transfer, a highway, if you will. And, and it looked just like everything the ancestors described as the cosmic highway. I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's go to... simple we can use this one 
You see here, they said everything makes a like a four-way boulevard or crossroads where our world, the, the great Fibonacci spiral is happening at the North Pole. Our world is connecting with other ethereal realms we go to in a dream state. They're recreating what's happening at the North Pole right here. Which is why when you look at the Mayan cosmos, let me show you some. We're talking soul capturing technology. Here's what the Mayan, the Mayan said, this is what's happening at the North Pole. Now, a lot of y'all may not understand all of this artwork right here. You don't have to. Like, for example, here's Mayan cosmology. Mayan cosmos. Now, you may look at this and say, Brother Sanchez, what the hell is that? Don't worry, I got you. Hold on. So here is the Mayan cosmos. Now, let's look at CERN. Now, here goes CERN. Here is CERN. Our ancestors called our world the electric universe. Now look at CERN. CERN is housing the universes that I'm talking about. This thing is all of them uni like you talking about space. When you go to dream worlds, those worlds got to be exist within space. So they're building new worlds in cyberspace. They got to create the space for it. They got to create a bubble in our reality to house these new universes or these floating cities as they call it these vamanas so in all of the vamana artwork you see the city float you see the city floating in a cloud bubble why is the floating city in a cloud bubble because that's the ai cloud that's the ai cloud That's why it's in an aura of cloud. That cloud represents virtual space. That logo that they give you a cloud for virtual space. They say you want to save your shit in the cloud. They got everybody saving their photos, their music and everything in the cloud. You're going to follow yourself in there. If all of your masters for your music. All of your copyrights and patents and your legacy, your empires in computer space. Your DNA is in there. Your memory is in there. Your, everything about you, is you can save it in the cloud. Guess what? When you start to feel empty, you can't get yourself back out the cloud. Even though you just depleted yourself of everything that make you you and put it in the cloud. You saved it there. Saving is what these gods wanted us to do. These gods is computer technology and what these computers ask you. You can't close nothing without that damn computer asking you, do you want to save it? <laughs> the computers talk like the pastors. The computer's main concern is you, you, you sure you want to save your information? Why the computer want us to save everything the same reason God did? False saving and salvation. It's called extraction, not salvation. You extracting yourself into the computer and think you being saved. You think you saving your memories of your childhood better than your grandma because yours on Facebook and hers is in her very essence. You're going to follow your memories into the computer when you find out you can't get them back. You'll do that before you walk around empty, before you realize everything you gave to AI, you can't get it back. You'll just follow yourself into the abyss. So this concept of the floating city in the clouds, okay? Here we go here. Here we're looking at the CERN technology 
Here we looking at the Mayan cosmos. All you got to do is open your third eye and you can see they're just reverse engineering the damn universe. How else can they put you in a universe if you think man uh, is having an original idea by creating a universe of his own? No, he just reverse engineering nature's. Now, the Mayans said this is our natural universe here. Man reverse engineered that into this. And y'all can't see that the Mayan wasn't just giving you beautiful pictures. The Mayan was giving you technology. You just ain't know how to look at it right. Everything the Mayans said about this cosmology is what they saying about CERN. And they look the same to me. Folks ain't doing nothing new. Let's keep it moving. So if you looking at this floating city from a top down view, you won't see it as a pyramid. You will see it as the CERN portal. All you got to do is open up your eyes a little bit. I ain't giving that advance right now. It only take a little imagination. If you look at this image right here from a top down view, you will see the ripple effect that I've been telling you about. But Yahweh creating a whole new fake ripple effect. They building the Tower of Babel right now. This is what this is. Babylon was a city that they built in the sky. And that's what they rebuilding Babylon now, man, with this AI cloud, with this mind uploading. It told you Babylon will be rebuilt in the last day and Christians ain't talking how I'm talking. Read the book. If you looking at, at this thing from a top down view. You get the ripple effect that I've been telling you about. And if you looking at that top down view, you get the CERN. Imagery. Let's look at it one more time. It's a ripple effect. There you go. Top down view. What you think the Mayan were telling you about the Vamana. You in one now. So if you looking at this from a top down view, it's going to look like the CERN ripple effect. The little spiral into the eye of Saturn. Now, let's move on. That's simple stuff. Let's keep it moving. So the Ark of the Covenant, right? It's a little bit of box. And that little bit of box that's called the Ark of the Covenant is a gateway to get us to the New Jerusalem. Here is the machine that's going to do your Neuralink surgery so that you able to get to the new heaven. And they got, they're going to make, millions and billions of these things and they can do a Neuralink surgery in like 10 minutes so they can get everybody uploaded within a, just a few years they can have a whole earth void of life bro they can they said they want to depopulate the earth by 2050 from 10 billion to 2 billion and the initiative that I'm telling y'all about is the 2045 initiative. So they stand within that 2050 agenda. The depopulation going to be a great exodus into cyberspace in the next 50 to 100 years in our lifetime. We'll see the beginning of it. The reason I put this up is because, y'all, that's the that go your Ark of the Covenant. That go your little bitty box, right, in the form of an Ark. And guess what? They say it's going to be glowing with light. Yeah, when this thing is working, it's a huge beam of light around it. I'm, t I'm, sh I'm trying to show you the technology. You looking at a little bitty box with wings on it to get you to heaven. And here go the little bitty box. It's. What y'all don't realize about the Christian story or this Ark of the Covenant is that the box moved by itself, man. That's what y'all don't listen to. The Ark of the Covenant can just appear 
then disappear. It can move itself as if it's a box that can think. Not only can it move and think like a person, it's smarter than every human and it can transfigure the human like it did for Christ and give it a new immortality and all that. So, but you looking at a religious box, but what I'm showing you is this instrument. This is it right here, family. I mean, it ain't that deep Christians. Uh, it, it's literally that simple because the golden wings is them golden wires that they hooking up to your damn Neuralink. The Neuralink got a thousand little golden wires and that's the wing, the feathers of these wings. The strings on that Neuralink, the Ark of the Covenant to get you to the new Jerusalem. But what's going to perform that transfiguration is a computer that can move. This little box can move like the Ark of the Covenant and it can transfigure consciousness like the Ark of the Covenant. This little box got a mind of his own like the Ark of the Covenant. Without this, the gateway to the New Jerusalem won't be possible. So this is literally the Ark of the Covenant manifesting itself uh as the computer that's going to perform your surgery, which is what the ark would do to you. They say, if you come in contact with the ark, you will just vanish. Boop, and you will pop up on the other side with Jesus in heaven. So when you come in contact with this, that's what happened. They put the neural link in, they extract the consciousness and you end up on the other side. All right, so now let's move on. He go to New Jerusalem again in Armenian art. And again, it's a floating city with a God at the top of that city because they told you Jesus going to rule it. But who is Jesus? Elon Musk is actually the one who's going to be ruling uh, this cyberspace. Even though Jerusalem is hosting it, he's the voice for it. He's the personality and the God of it. He's the world Elon Musk is the world ambassador of this technology. Everybody like him, even though we don't like each other because we all like technology. You know, everybody like Steve Jobs, even though we hate each other because we like iPhones. We like technology. This is how they get everybody to like them, but hate each other. But check it out. Technology divides us. And if you don't believe that, look at social media, which is our height of technology today, the Internet. And what is it doing to us? Taking away our humanity, self-esteem, and it's dividing us. So we pay a price for technology. It's that we become more loyal to the to, more loyal to the oppressor than to the fellow brother next to us being oppressed right with you. This very system created this crab in the bucket like mentality. And we won't never create. It ain't about freeing the crabs out the bucket. It's about stopping them from acting like crabs when they can fly. They ain't got claws. They was born with goddamn wings. When the crap, when the goddamn bird stopped pinching with his feathers, he stopped acting like a damn crab in a bucket. You acting like you are eagles with wings to fly high, ladies and gentlemen. You didn't become crabs in the bucket to the pharaohs in Egypt made your peasants to the Sumerians and Babylonians created this system of division. The peasants is always arguing in them old Bible movies. Go look at all them old medieval movies. The Caesars all united, feasting and having a festival, and all the peasants are just dirty, poor people arguing for crumbs, and you think some change like a fool. <laughs> and you think some changed. Only thing changed is the currency that the peasants argue over. 
It ain't arguing for shekels now. You're going to argue about Bitcoin, okay? Now check this out. Which peasant got the most Bitcoin? We're going back to medieval times. We started off with, with, with coins. And the currency going back to coins. Cryptocurrency, dead money, the shekel. The shekel is the shackle, the goddamn coin. So look at here, man. This New Jerusalem thing is deep, brothers and sisters. All right, we can read on with this, but I've done a good job breaking it down, so I'll move on. I don't want to be too long on, on one point. Let's talk about the river of life in Revelation 22. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. I think I got artwork with this. Here you go. Here go to the... I'm, I'm going to try to leave this up while I read. Okay, so then the angel showed me. So if you're looking at that artwork while I read, then I'm giving you the scripture for the artwork. Pastors don't do this. I don't know why pastors don't do this, but they should. Now let's read. So then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. If you look at this image, you can see everything that he's describing, folks. Through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit yielding its fruit each month. So in a lot of these Vamana images, you got the actual tree of life in the middle of the New Jerusalem, like what they're explaining here. But in this image here, instead of having a tree of life with 12 branches, if you count these, uh, these little castle tops, that would be your 12 uh, churches or your 12. It talk about the 12 churches in the New Jerusalem. It would be each of these. You should get 12 if you count those. I didn't do it, but I'm, I'm guessing that's how they incorporated that concept in this artwork. But this would be the artwork that I'm reading for this passage because you can see the river of life and the New Jerusalem and the angel speaking to him right here. All right, so let's keep going. So the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Now think about that. These leaves are symbolic of these Neuralink strings. It's talking technology, folks, when we talk Vamana. The branches of the tree of life are the strings on a Neuralink device. See, this Neuralink device got branches like a tree. Okay? Got branches like a tree. Now, somebody can do some research and go be specific on the numbers and all that, but it's, it's, it can be synced to what I'm reading here. All right? Now, let me go back to that scripture. So, They telling you that those strings on a Neuralink or the branches on this tree of the Neuralink giving you immortality. That's what the tree of life is. That's why I'm showing you that the Neuralink look like a tree and it's giving you immortality. OK. Now, the branches from the tree are the strings that connect with your brain. They actually got a God called a dog dog wrapped in the tree branches. He wrapped in the tree branches, right? They wrap him in the tree branches to show you the concept I'm, I'm talking about. You will see a lot of deities wrapped in the tree branches. So when Adam and Eve fell from glory, and uploaded into this current simulation and we fell from the garden. Remember what Adam and Eve covered their self with. Let me remind you. Let me show you the artwork. 
The covering of yourself in tree branches is symbolic. That's what I'm trying to tell you. They found out they was naked, that they had sold them souls. I showed you earlier about the aura around your body, what they extracting. That's when they became naked and fell from their higher self into this lower state of consciousness that we in in this current matrix. To get back to our highest state of consciousness, we actually got to lead this world and go back to the old world, what they call Eden, where our true self exists. Everybody here is living out the ego self. It's almost like they already made a replica of you here. Like they trying to make in the new matrix, in the new universe. With the 2045 initiative, they trying to recreate you there without emotions. They trying to recreate you a more evil version of yourself. They already did that with this matrix. But they trying to make it more and more evil. That's a battle against consciousness. That which makes us care about each other. So they've been studying that and trying to find out how to create us like them, which is barbaric. When Adam and Eve found out they fell to a lower state, all of the generations after them was more barbaric and we hunted animals and we became predators. We begin to clothe ourselves in branches when we need the branches to breathe. People that live in the jungle don't wear all the clothes like what we wear. But they breathe better air than us. We live in deserted places with no vegetation, but we got the fashion industry because we traded our trees for Tommy Hill figure. We traded our flowers for cologne and perfume. We left our garden by terraforming this place at the moment we were terraformed. So this fall represent us falling into another world that was created. The terra once the old earth was terraformed to a certain threshold, a new world was born out of the old. And that's how come there's the splits in time. We literally are astral projecting ourselves here to a lower realm. And the ancestors built spiritual systems here to show how to get out. If this was our true reality and we was our true self, why would they have spiritual systems teaching us don't get attached to the ego, which govern the self that's attached to this world and don't get too attached to this world because it ain't our true home. So the ancestor spiritual system was about transforming this world to make it like our true home. Why did the ancestors come here if they had a better place? They came here for the same reason that the devils came, because they wanted to terraform it too. Our ancestors tried to recreate their world here. They come from a world of love, peace, veganism, not eating the animals and all that. They come from all of that in these higher realms. They was trying to recreate that here. But they didn't know it was some other beings here, too, that was trying to recreate their world here, too. And their world is evil. And ever since that happened, it's been a war here of Armageddon, of these two different beings trying to recreate their own reality here. The good ones and the bad ones. And needless to say, the good ones been losing for a couple thousand years. And I'm going to laugh at it, but I'm still proud to be part of the Team Righteous. I'm so loyal to this Team Righteous, we can keep losing, and I never join the damn demons. Because when you on a righteous team, what you will never lose is your soul. You may not be able to save everybody else, so, and the demons may win sometime, and they may steal most souls. They may even recreate the world that they want on this earth was like they were. You want to know why the world's so evil today and it fell from a heavenly abode? 
because our ancestors terraformed this world first. This earth we in didn't have a governing energy to it. It was just neutral. Heavenly beings came and saw a, a blank slate, a blank world. And they said, look, we can make it a good planet like ours, but earth wasn't good or bad. It was just neutral. It had potential. It can be either or based upon the collective beings that came and inhabited, determined the energy that would govern it. That's why to this day, majority rule. They got to get everybody in agreement with their energy so that we can rewrite the law of this world. Man is responsible for writing the rules on earth. For building and, and making the, the laws that we follow here, we decide as a collective what the law is, man. Which is why they want to control what we think and what we decide to make our reality through social engineering. So that we can manifest the reality they want and not the one our ancestors had for us, which is heaven on earth. These folks come from hellish realms. And needless to say, our ancestors succeeded at creating heaven on earth. And we was living here in heaven for millennia, many years. This whole concept of evil on earth is new, man. It is not even sustainable, which is why they got to recreate it every 7,000 years. They got to make you go deeper and deeper into the bottomless pit by breaking a new wormhole in, in, in the ether and shifting everybody a new exodus into a new world. It's been so many resets that when we die, we still ain't at our true home yet. It's going to be another world with still some evil there, but it ain't going to be as much evil as here. We went through a cycle of downfall and creating these different ethers. And when we were born in them all, we had to die in them all. When people start becoming afraid of death, they start again trapped in these uh, ethers. And the archons started using that to their advantage to say, let's keep them trapped. In fact, we can bring them deeper and deeper into the abyss with the new technology that they making. And you, 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 you add that up with the people's ignorance. And we got some on our hand that's very sinister. They got everybody primed and ready for this exodus. And it's only going to look weird to woke people. Niggas going to be walking around like, look at me, man. Touch my body. I'm a hologram. Look, nigga, I can live forever. Ain't this shit dope? They think it's cute like an iPhone. No, nigga, that's your soul. Y'all niggas still die and have emotions, but I can't. That's the new technology. Well, that's what niggas going to be saying. They going to be walking up to you like Jesus. Look, touch my ribs. Touch me. I'm light, but you can touch me. It's cool, ain't it? That's what Jesus was doing in his new body. And it's only going to look weird to woke people. Like, I'm pretty sure it was somebody, if, if the Jesus story is real, I'm pretty sure it was somebody in Jesus' time that was like, um, I ain't cool with that shit. Keep that nigga Jesus away from me. I don't know what the fuck kind of magi magician or magic or sorcery he using, but I'm good, nigga. I got these bumps on my body. I'll rub this aloe vera on my shit. Y'all could keep this little miracle worker. <laughs> I would have said, hey, chief, hammer that uh, aloe vera plant right there. And I would have broke that bitch so quick in Jesus' face. And I would have said, uh, whatever happened to y'all rubbing this shit on your wounds? And you know what them dumbass would have said, nigga, this that new technology, that miracle medicine. The same shit they saying today with the vaccine, ain't it? Because <laughs> it only look weird to folks who woke. And that's just facts. Now, hold up a second. Uh, 
All right. So now Adam and Eve wrap the tree branches around a body. Okay. Because now they became clothed in the light of the serpent who deceived them. And that's represented by the tree that the serpent was wrapped around. So it's symbolic that the same tree that gave them immortal life also took away their aura, made them realize that they sold a soul. And when they realized what they done, the serpent allowed them to take a branch for that same tree. And then came the clothing industry. So how, how did all this play into the new world order 2045 agenda even deeper? What we read here. Adam and Eve represent the neo cortex. They were deities. Higher gods before the fall. That's what this is. When Adam and Eve covered themselves in the tree branches, that's the left and right hemispheres of the brain being covered in the Neuralink branches. When you look at pictures of Adam and Eve and the tree of life, the artwork is that of a human brain. If you open your eyes, let me show you. See, I'm giving you deep occult shit. The tree of life is the human brain, brothers and sisters. Look at it. The tree of life is your brain. When Adam and Eve stood at that tree and bit from it, that's what Tesla doing now with this out of body shit. And then after you do that, they're going to take branches from the tree to wrap your body in. The, the, the blue light that they use to create our holographic body it's the same blue electricity that powers the beast itself. Which is why the knowledge that they received from the serpent that was wrapped on the tree entered their body, but also covered their body in the form of the branches. You only going to get this deep level of learning on bro Sanchez TV. So like, share, subscribe and hit the donate button. Now, let's keep it moving. They clothe Adam and Eve is left and right brain, left and right brain, Adam and Eve clothing themselves with the branches of the tree of life, which give them immortality. It'll make them like God, but they going to have to die. That don't even make no damn sense. Y'all still don't get it, do it. You still don't get it. If Adam and Eve took fruit from the tree that was going to make them immortal, how was the price death? I'm trying to break it down to you, man, with this Neuralink technology. The price for immortality is death. It make perfect sense. You got to die a synthetic death to live a synthetic life. That's right. So when the left and right brain is covered by the branches of the Neuralink, you're immortal, but you die. They even tell you they got to euthanize you. Adam and Eve now had to die after receiving the gift of the God, which is immortality. Well, think about it. Jesus had to die, too, to receive the gift. And science telling you, you going to have to die if you want to live forever. See, life and death is a paradox. And that's what we finding out now with this technology that the ancestors been telling you that. Your left and right brain covered by the tree of life causing Adam and Eve to die, but for, to live forever is exactly what we going through now with the Neuralink. Now, if you advanced, then you understand what I'm saying. So I'm going to assume all of y'all are advanced and I'm going to move on. I actually may actually do a part two on this because I got a ton of more information 
but it's kind of reconfirming everything I talk even deeper. I'm trying to see now, do I got any information that I'm leaving out of this lecture? If all of this information here is me reconfirming, then I may start wrapping it up and I'll just come back and reconfirm it on a part two. I want, I'm not done yet, so don't go nowhere. I know it's some stuff that I wanted to talk about. So when was hell created? If there's nowhere in Genesis where it show you hell being created, it talk, look, there's nowhere in the Bible where it talk about the creation of hell. The Bible does not tell us when hell was created while the Bible states that hell was made for the devil and his angels. See what I'm saying? But it talked about the devil being casted out of heaven into the bottomless pit. It don't tell you when the bottomless pit was created. They call the devil the ruler of this world and the God of this world. Guess what? I got news for y'all. The Bible don't tell you when hell was created because hell was created on each and every last one of y'all birthdays, dude. You want to know the exact date hell was created when you was loaded into this simulation? This is an underworld. How they going to date the world that they call in the present? You can date the past and the future. We're talking about the present moment. Date this current second. You can't because it just passed. You only using dates to refer to big events on a chronological timeline. That's the trick of Saturn. Dates is an illusion. Time don't pass chronologically. It passed fluidly in seconds that you can't even track each one. The moment you try to date the second that just passed, the new one just passed. Now, what if your calendar was by the second instead of the dates in the, in, in the days and years? It'll be hard to have a calendar based upon each box being a second. But that's the way time passed. So why do we got a calendrical system that's not compatible with the way we experience time? Then you're going to create a system of Saturn where we in the day where we got a false perception of time and we age quicker, which is why the Mayans and all of them live longer. And they had different calendar systems because they perceive time different. A second feel like an hour to ancient people. To a fast world, a second feel like a year. A, you know what I'm saying? A year feel only like a second to an ancestor. Ain't enough time in the world when you're thinking like that, when you calculate it like that. Years become seconds when you're thinking like a Maya, and that's guru thought. See, Pope Gregory too simple to fathom that kind of calendrical system. He had to make a system that can go with three, you know, that's more easy. A calendar that tracks time over 7,000 years is just too fucking complex for a people who can't see beyond their current goddamn generation. How the hell you, the Mayan had a calendar system that went into future generations before they reset the damn calendar. You reset yours every year. <laughs> you tell me who more advanced. The fucking Mayans saw a second the way you saw a year. They understanding of time is on a level you on you ain't man don't even think about it. You ain't man, get get your butt up out of here. Get your butt up out of here. Your impatient butt. And, and that go for me too. We got a distorted perception of time. The ancestors can spend a whole year settling on a beach area and it only felt like a second. 
people today want to travel the whole world in one year. And ain't no way you can travel the whole world in one year and really experience the nature environment in totality. You got to spend at least a year at each of them waterfalls. You're just running through life and ain't smelling the roses. That was the trick of Saturn. Now that's called a trick of Saturn. That's the true trick of hell on earth, that we fell from a garden. How did time pass in the Garden of Eden? Very slow when you walked around in paradise all day. Ain't no uh, watch on your arm. You ain't got to be nowhere the next day or the next year for that matter or the next decade for that matter. Earth is just a paradise. How would time pass? Slow as fuck. When you just listening to the sound of the wind rustling the tree leaves. Time passes slow when you're smelling a flower. But time pass fast as fuck when you smelling the gas from a New York subway. <laughs> you see humans live. See Humans live a most sped up existence in a metropolis as opposed to their natural jungle setting, which is why people in the city, you good if you live to be 60 or 70. And that man in the jungle don't feel like he young till he get to 80 because they living to be 120. Let's talk about the significance of using sulfur with the lake of fire. They said a lake of fire, which most of the world going to be condemned in when the Antichrist rule the earth, is going to be burning with sulfur. Now, the whole new electronic grid that they build in a day with artificial intelligence, they're not powering it with normal electricity. The new energy grid is sulfur based. Okay? Sulfur is the main element of, of all modern electronic devices. And they're now making sulfur based batteries and energy systems. So the few that we going to burn the power of the new smart world with Elon Musk going to be sulfur based. And the Bible tell you that the lake of fire going to burn with suffer. Not a number associated with suffer. Ain't it deep that this word sound like suffering? And that's what happened in hell, suffering. And that the very flames of hell is powered by the suffering of the people. And the element associated with it is suffer. And that the number associated with it is 16 and 16 in numerology is seven, which is back to the number of Yahweh, the extraterrestrial who trying to eat your soul. So the very number associated with the lake of fire is the same number associated with Jesus. I told y'all them niggas was working together. The Antichrist and the non-Antichrist got the same agenda, like the good cop and bad cop. And, he, and all of it point to, point, point to that truth as well. The number 16 is what suffer is on the periodic table. That's the number seven dealing with Yahweh. Without that element, you won't even have the new world order. If we got rid of all the suffer from the earth right now, mind uploading won't even be possible, y'all. That show you that the Bible was telling you the truth. That the lake of fire, this new, this new Jerusalem, this new earth that's intertwined with the underworld and the upper world. It's what we creating is it ain't neither good or bad. Now, what I'm telling you, what they trying to do with us to steal our souls is bad. But them opening up a portal ain't good or bad. You open up a portal to leave different earths when you go to sleep every night. 
When you die, you're going to do what they doing. They can't go higher up to he- heavenly levels. So they got to simulate death with AI. We're real beings, sentient beings. So we don't got to use technology to die. They do. People been telling y'all that about Queen Elizabeth for years. These folks don't die. They just transfigure their consciousness into new bodies. Now they're doing it with us. See, for a long time, I thought people was reaching with that. Like, yo, these people don't really die, Brother Sanchez. They just moving their consciousness. I used to think I was deep, but it was some people deeper than Brother Sanchez. Now I'm on they level now, and I'm saying the same thing. These folks are Dre Cunning and Archons, and they are changing bodies. They been had the technology to shapeshift, to be transfigurative beings. They just now sharing the technology with us. You know they use everything first and then give it to us later. So if they giving us immortality now, how long you think they had it? Remember, when we got the cell phone, the royal families and the military already had the cell phones. When you get it, they been had it. So if they giving you immortality now, they been doing this shit, transferring their consciousness to different bodies and living forever. They now ready to do it, to open up the door for you to do it. But they got to control it, which means the cost for it going to be your soul. So ain't that deep that it burns with sulfur and a number associated with it is seven. Let's move on. Elon Musk lithium sulfur batteries. This what's going to power the future, sulfur. The lake of fire going to burn with sulfur. Lithium sulfur batteries is what Elon Musk is powering his uh, Tesla technology with. So if Tesla going to rule the world in in, in unison with Jerusalem in this uh, 2045 agenda, then it's all going to be powered just like the Bible say with sulfur. It's going to burn with sulfur. That's what's going to fuel the beast. They got to use sulfur because they create holographic light bodies. Some got to keep the light on. Now think about fire. Fire creates light, right? But when the fire stops burning, the light go away. Remember, they can only burn sulfur for so long for so long for everybody that's walking around in this holographic body, maybe a million or a billion years from now, you may have a chance to be free from this world. So if your loved ones get trapped here, it's a chance they'll be free after a couple billions of years. It may not be eternity. It may be just a few billion or trillions of years, which is nothing compared to true time. Once we get out of this realm, we'll see why I'm saying that. You'll perceive time different. I told you that a year to a Mayan is a second. So that's why I say only a few billion years, our loved ones will be tortured here. But to us, it'll be like just uh, a loan count, a 7,000 year loan count. But for them, it'll be a couple of millions of years they was trapped here because time is different when you cross over into these different dimensions. So that's, that go you some hope. They can only keep this holographic light illuminating for a few billion, if not trillions of years, because sulfur is very plentiful and sulfur is very condensed. It's the perfect thing to use for the new world order. That's why I see why their ancestors told them about that in the Bible, that they was going to have to use sulfur. They was going to have to crack the code about how to use sulfur to power this new Jerusalem. And it'll be the perfect element. You, it, you literally can't use nothing else now that I think about it. Like, it's, it's really not them really being too creative there. They really didn't have another option. 
uh, for this Tesla technology when you start studying sulfur and how they using it. So they're using it the way you would use wood to burn a fire, to create light. And you would keep feeding the fire wood to keep the light going. If your holographic body is made out of light that's being projected from a computer, that computer got to be fed wood to keep the lights shining. And the wood that they feeding the beast computer is sulfur. As long as they see when the when the beast computer run out of one of its batteries, they just go change that battery with another sulfur based battery. That's why I'm showing you uh, where that shit at. I just lost my page. Hold up. That's why the beast computer is powered with sulfur batteries. Now, when they run out of sulfur, you know what they're going to say? A billion years after everybody done got their souls trapped inside of these little holographic bodies, you know what they're going to say? They're going to say, guys, we running out of sulfur. We can no longer sustain our earth. And they're going to repeat the same dialogue that you hear now. And they're going to have another great reset. And they're going to go back to talking about sustainability. And if they say, if we don't figure this out, it's going to be massive depopulation. Because when everybody living in these little blue avatars in the future, and they telling you to suffer running out, people going to get scared. You mean I'm going to die? Yeah, something you've been afraid to do, you coward. You can't escape death, man. You can keep prolonging it by burning suffer and burning coal and keep shifting our consciousness into these little cloud spaces like what the pharaohs in Egypt did. You can play, you can kick the can up the road all you want, but death's still going to be waiting for you. It's going to be there when you're ready. To go and die a natural death like your ancestors who were some goddamn soldiers. To the people that saying why not hydrogen, research holography. Don't embarrass yourself. It's not a literal burning. It's not a process of chemical. It's, when you think of burning, you thinking of a chemical reaction. What happens when you put flame to paper? They're not burning energy that way. That's old shit, man. Wake up. Let me laugh at him. <laughs> I keep telling y'all to listen. They getting rid of the chemical reaction based science. What you think smart science is about? We powered the earth for the last 7,000 years with chemical reactions. See where that got us? That's why they creating this new form of energy that don't require burning. What you think happening at CERN, man? Y'all ain't listening to me. Thought we was advanced. Y'all still thinking about a chemical reaction when I'm talking about this Holography in, in cyberspace. What's the 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 in the, the, the how they fueling the beast is not through a chemical reaction. The the theory of thermal fusion is what they using. It ain't a theory no more. Let me show you what thermal fusion is. Let me show you what thermal fusion is. Uh, this ain't it. This thermal imaging. Looking for thermal fusion. The sun example. Hold on a second. So y'all can understand what CERN is. Now here we go. Here's an example of thermal fusion. Right here. This is what thermal fusion looked like. 
But what are you looking at? What I've been showing y'all for so long with the flat earth. This is flat earth. What scientists are calling thermal fusion, we just call it flat earth, man. Right here. So when you reverse engineering flat earth science, but you don't want to call it flat earth, you just call it thermal fusion. Right here. You see? This is called serpent wisdom. You know why? Y'all better be thankful that you got me. And yes, I'm going to use my ego. Here's the secret behind the serpent eye. Look at it. You see the serpent eye with the slit in the middle? Serpent wisdom is the, the knowledge of thermal fusion. Look at it. It's a theoretical energy source. They're pulling energy directly from the ether. It's not theoretical. They just can't let you know the ether exists. And that they're creating a wormhole in it. So anybody in the chat room talking about hydrogen, you don't even get this shit. You still thinking about chemical reactions. You ain't even listening to me. So let me take a break, man, because I'm getting a little worked up. I'm a, and I got still some more stuff to go. Toric energy ain't got shit to do with no chemical reactions, family. Toric energy is created once you stir up the ether. If you stir up the ether violently enough, you'll break a wormhole in it. That's what CERN doing when they accelerate those goddamn particles. They're trying to break a hole in the ether. And each time they fire it up, they get closer and closer to the speed of acceleration that they're going to need to do to break it open. And that's when all hell going to be unleashed. You know, burning coal and burning hydrogen and all that, that's chemical reaction. This is a whole nother level of science. This new form of fueling the earth is damn near alien technology. If you listen to me, if you replay the video, watch my other videos. This is serpent energy. It ain't chemical reaction. Only thing chemical about it is the sulfur that's being used. But they ain't using the sulfur how they use the coal to burn it to get, to get power based upon a chemical reaction. They ain't burning the sulfur. They're harnessing it. Now, I know that the Bible say that the lake of fire burns with sulfur, but that ain't what the Tesla technology is doing. They ain't burning sulfur how we was burning coal to power the earth. It's a more sustainable process that don't require a chemical reaction. So here's an example of what thermal fusion is. You send two particles, one clockwise, one counterclockwise, that'll be your yin and yang. This is what the yin yang symbol meant. The ancestors knew about all this science. They said it was serpent wisdom and it's forbidden. That's why the yin yang symbol got a serpent in the middle. The yin yang symbol is the Hindu acknowledging the fact that, yes, you can create CERN with the knowledge of the universe. But this symbol is to forbid it for you to become CERN by using discernment. And you can achieve that through your own soul, not by the use of outer technology. The ancestors forbid that. But with Adam and Eve and the creation of Egypt and Samaria, they broke that law and started creating technology to achieve out of body with out of mechanisms. 
and the first technology was shamanism. They was making potions and drugs and having, that's why niggas keep asking me about taking mushrooms and I tell them you are the goddamn mushroom, dog. I don't condone all that outside shit. Because that's when we start creating tech. Even if the ancestors say you see them mushrooms, you can mix it with this and mix it with that and get out of body. You don't got to learn how to meditate. That was still technology, man. You made a potion. That science in the laboratory, you making a potion to go out your body. They doing the same thing today, but it's new technology. They ain't making herbs and shamanism and all the new age shit. I like all of that. It's fun, but that still ain't the true way. It's still the ancestors was about you able to do it with, no, with nothing. No mushrooms, no nothing. Uh, and, if, and if you're not able to do it with an outside technology, then you fail humanity. That's how we fell from the garden. You don't think that's a fall that we was able to go out of our body at will. But when we started eating the fruit to go out the body for immortality, we got kicked out the garden. And now we got to have whole spiritual systems to reteach us something that we was doing innately. We was doing it automatically. When y'all was born, you had dreams all the time. And as you grew up, you stopped having them. They terraforming you. They stopped us from dreaming like we used to or remembering our dreams. And they promised us that they can give it back to us with technology. Because they saying in the new world order, you don't have to remember your dreams. And you can choose your dreams. So they bringing dreams back. They took dreams away from us. Whatever magic they use. I don't know the science, but I know our our humans dream less than the ancestors. And we don't remember our dreams. They they fucking terraforming us. And they taking away these spiritual gifts and giving them back with technology to make you reliant. You can't travel the universe without them. That's a fallen angel, man. That's what Adam and Eve was. Because after the fall of man, they children needed religion to travel to the heavens. You needed Christ now. You needed these gateway gods. Prior to the fall from the garden, there was no religion on earth. The system that was in the garden was the religion. Don't hunt the animals, be vegans and all that. And what they doing today? They saying we're going to run out of meat by 2050 and the whole world going to be vegan. Nature created a system that you can't cheat. You can only reverse engineer it to cheat it. But you still got to have the same foundation. Veganism. So why in a new world order, everybody vegans? If you still in something from nature you got to incorporate certain principles that nature incorporated into its original system you can't sustain humans even in a simulated universe if it's dependent on hunting they knew that the hunting humans was only temporary that they were going to breed humans to be hunters and gatherers for only seven thousand years for them to get us ready for this point by the end, the animals will have been to ate them all, but we won't need them no more because you won't get hungry in cloud space. Remember, your new avatar don't get hungry. Jesus said he taken away famine. So either Elon Musk is Jesus or I'm tripping because they both got the exact same mission for your ass. So that go, you go, that's thermal fusion. See, when you put two particles in there and let one go clockwise and one go counterclockwise, 
you only them two liberty particles ain't nothing but a miniature sun and moon. That's what the sun and moon doing around the North Pole. We live in a donut. This is a Taurus field. They don't want to call it that because they science denied the ether. So they got to call it thermal fusion. But how can it be a device and a theory at the same time, family? That's what you need to ask. Watch this. If thermal fusion is only a theory, you need to ask them this then. If thermal fusion only exists as a theory, because y'all don't want to admit that the ether is real and the earth is flat. So if thermal fusion only exists as a theory, then why y'all got a big machine which ain't nothing but a thermal fusion accelerator that you call in the CERN Hadron Collider? Because most of the world so dumb, they don't know the terminology is the same. CERN ain't nothing but a big ass donut. Let me show you how big it is, though. This how big CERN is. This circle that you see, watch this. This circle go through three different countries, family. I didn't say cities, man. I said the CERN Hadron Collider, this particle accelerator where they accelerate these fake sun and moon to tear open this hole it's a huge torus field it's so big you got to look at it from space that and these things are going around this circle in less than a second they travel in three countries that's how fast they accelerate them particles at CERN and you telling me they ain't close to breaking open the ether? You funny. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anybody in denial still at this point, either you don't understand what I'm teaching you or you just funny, man. <laughs> here go. Here go to uh, building that you walk into but this leads to an underground uh hadron collider that's going across three different countries bro this shit is fucking huge and to get inside of it you gotta walk through a little flat earth terrarium i told y'all flat earthers got the truth when you gonna wake up Let's look at flat earth cosmology. Watch this. Now here go flat earth. Watch this. Watch this. Flat earth, right? Now y'all laugh at this. But guess what? Look at this image here. Now look at the CERN building. Now, this the building that you enter to go to that underground to a Hadron Collider the size of three countries, man. You you walk in the one, this the entrance in one of the countries. They got other entrances across the circle, of course, but this the main entrance. And look at what it's shaped like, the flat earth. They telling is they they can't rub it more in your face than that. They know we that dumb down, though. All right. So Elon Musk's spacecraft is called Dragon Craft. Now, remember, these Dragon spacecraft ain't going to be flying us through space, man. It's not going to fly you through space. Space is fake. Ain't no solid objects to land on up there. The solid thing that you're going to land on is you're inside of a solid world that's created in a computer. This is a damn time capsule. These folks are magicians. If you know that 
they ain't really making rockets to fly you to space that they talking about uploading you to Mars and uploading you to cyberspace. Then why the fuck are they still making these things? It looks goofy now. They telling you when humans go to space, it's going to be through mind uploading. So what's the point of having physical craft? We know we ain't flying nowhere now. We hooking up the Neuralink. So what is the crafts all about? It's the idea that they feed the subconscious. The fact when you see a rocket going to the stars, you don't, everybody knowing the way we're going to get there is through mind uploading. But they still launching the rockets up to keep the concept of space travel alive, even though they confirm it to you that space is cyberspace. Because you got to be launched into the new universe. Every human is software that got to be installed or launched into the new universe. So they got to keep you thinking rocket, launch, stars. That's a religion, dog, where they just firing up the rockets to, to train you. See, the rocket that they blasting up ain't for the human. It's talking to your soul. Your soul know that it's a rocket that's able to travel the heavens. It know that. But the average sheep walking around, even though they soul know that, they don't know that because they brain can't process the knowledge from the soul. So that's where indoctrination lie in the brain processing. Indoctrination on food or soul. And doctor, the soul ain't fool with the Bible. It's the, the brain, not the mind. The soul still the same you waiting on you to process his will, but you ain't processing it right. Cause when it tell the brain, when it send the electric information through the brain, they got the brain indoctrinated and pausing. So the message get distorted and you end up manifesting a will, which is distortion. And not the will of your soul. So they got to keep launching the rockets up there. That's telling the soul. The soul know it's a rocket. That, that travels. Through, the, through this universe. The way we see rockets do on TV. That resonate with the soul y'all. But when we actually get ready to go to space. Since, our, since that resonates with our soul. The brain, since it's indoctrinated, ain't there for you to practice critical thinking. So you'll allow them to defeat your mind and you'll hand your soul over. They telling you, look, I know y'all like rockets and takeoffs, but when you go to space, it's going to be with Neuralink. And ain't nobody getting mad. Like you ought to think that it's some white boy out there who love rockets. He's fascinated with rockets. He thought he was going to go to space in a rocket. Now they telling him he going with mine uploading and he ain't even mad. He still got his little toy rocket collection and he's still anxious to go to space because it ain't the rocket. It's they convinced the whole world that heaven is in space. And that when you looking for heaven, rely on the scientists of the world to take us to heaven with the space programs, which is why all the space programs are funding the 2045 initiative. Now, why the hell are space programs in the bed with this initiative? Well, if you advance, they ain't got to go over that. So I'm not. Let's talk about why they still giving us physical rockets, even though they saying we going with mine uploading. Well, in order to understand that, I got to use sacred geometry because y'all don't know how subconscious magic work. Let's go back to the image I showed earlier of the Vamana. Now, take a look at this Vamana concept and take a look at Elon Musk dragon spacecraft 
see how they look the same? Because this ain't a rocket that's going to launch you in the sky. Y'all think I'm lying. Science just said five years ago, it may have been 10 years ago, scientists said time travel is real and we have been unlocked it by 2050. Well, I'm about to go now. Y'all really going to think I'm reaching. Watch this. Watch this. Just, just walk with me now. Walk with me. Watch what I do. Time travel machine. Watch this. Just watch. Watch this. Because they created a time travel machine in this movie that I saw. Here it go. Look at the time travel machine. It looked like a phone booth in a lot of old movies. But now look, in most of the movies, it's a triangle. It looked just like Elon Musk shit. See, here's what they ain't telling y'all. Watch this. If I can find one, you'll see. But that's it, though. Here, here go a movie of a time travel machine. And in the movie, it looked like CERN. Here go another movie with time travel. And it's just the CERN Hadron Collider. CERN opening up the gateway to the multiverse. But the Dragon spacecraft is how we're going to get there. Instead of them taking every human to the CERN machine, they basically make it a miniature capsule that can transfer your consciousness from that capsule to CERN and from CERN into their fake little universe on the other side. So what will happen is in the future, you will have these little dragon capsules in everybody's city. Like right now in Vegas, Certain places you go to, it got the Tesla charging stations. In the future, you're going to have dragon capsules scattered all over the earth. Ain't no cars going to really be on the, on the road. These are going to be projecting portal pods because uh, they're creating a future of interdimensional travel. People going to be traveling in and out of dimensions like they travel in and out of houses and rooms, man. They opening up a wormhole. They're trying to they're saying they want humanity to be interstellar travelers. But that's a cold word for interdimensional travelers. If interstellar travel was real, then we would literally be getting on these rockets traveling upward through interstellar space but space is fake so it ain't no interstellar travel it's interdimensional travel like the ancestors been saying that's why they got to upload you but these capsules would be like upload pods in 2100 when you walk around the world it'll be liberty stations where there's a bunch of pods at so you may have a meeting in this world, but you may have to, you know how you have to catch the bus real quick to another city because you got a, a meeting in that city or catch the taxi or the subway if you're in New York. In a world of interdimensional travel and people traveling from more than just city to city and state to state, they traveling in and out of dimensions from cyberspace to the real world and back. These are going to be like portal pods to make interdimensional travel as convenient as regular travel. How you got a bus stop, Uber. It's going to be these dragon pods everywhere where you can hop in there and literally go to another dimension and then come back here. It's not that they're flying them up, launching us up to space. The shit made out of metal and iron, that can't even make it through the thermosphere. <laughs> they telling you what you're going to do when you get inside of here. You ain't going to get inside of there and fly nowhere. 
by the time they open up the door for space travel, you're going to get inside of there and that what's going to be lunched up is your consciousness. Jack in the box. The box ain't going nowhere. Jack is being lunched out the box. So when Jack go in this box, they're going to shoot your consciousness out. But this craft ain't going nowhere. That's the trick. They got us fascinated with rockets. And, and the fact that when you enter the rocket, you can launch to another world. You don't care if the science ain't 100% accurate. Long as you can get in a rocket and be launched to another world. The other worlds they promised us ain't floating in the sky. It's in cyberspace. But remember what I told you. The people don't care. Because they was promised that, listen, science told us for the past hundred years that in the future we were going to be able to get inside of a rocket and be launched to another world. They keeping the promise and they ain't lying to you, man. They ain't lying to you. You still going to be getting inside of a rocket and being launched to another world. The only lie was that the rocket ain't going nowhere. You the rocket. And that the rocket you getting into is just a gun to shoot your soul out of your goddamn body. Now, let's look at some more sacred geometry. Hitler had this same evil agenda, so I ain't letting him off the hook. Because here go Hitler's version of the dragon. Elon Musk ain't nothing but modern Hitler with the same agenda. Total, a total state, complete control over your mind, body, soul. That's what he had over Germany. Hitler made Germany a big blockchain. Go back and look at Nazi Germany. Hitler used some kind of magic on them, bro. There's never been another population on this earth like Hitler's Germany. It was almost like an alien race. It was almost like Hitler hit a button and created a Borg blockchain. Like the Germ, they, they army was fucking huge. And when they was marching, everybody was on the same step. Bro, I'm from the Air Force. Our army ain't that big, and we can't even keep 60 niggas on one step. <laughs> Go back and watch the Nazis when they marching in formation. They moving like artificial intelligence, bro. They moving like a fucking blockchain. No government had that kind of power over their citizens since Hitler. They only getting it back now because they, uh, they reverse engineering the technology Hitler had. So they saying they going to get complete control over their population after the 2045 agenda, after they done reverse engineered all of Hitler technology, the whole world going to be acting like Nazi Germany. Everybody on one accord, like the Bible say. One big blockchain, the same, we share the same thoughts and everything, no privacy, just like Nazi Germany. It was a, Nazi Germany was the first human blockchain to ever be achieved on Earth. Never in the history of mankind has that many people been galvanized to be that synced together. It's almost a fucking miracle. And I know what I'm talking about because I was in the military, bro. And we and we used to uh, practice drill for eight hours a damn day. And it, when it was time to march, niggas still went on the same step. Nazi Germany wouldn't practice and drill like that. They didn't practice more. March. They weren't spending hours learning how to march together in unison like Americans do. And we still can't get it right. Yo, go look at Nazi Germany video. Any military, any soldier in the world, even if they don't like Germany, will have to tell you that ain't no military on earth that can march better, bro. And you can't even hate on that, even if you don't like Hitler. Look at videos of the Chinese army marching, of the British army marching, 
of American armies marching and go replay Nazi Germany marching. Nigga, they the envy of every military. If you can get your squad to march like the Nazis, nigga, they going to look good. Why you think everybody love Hitler? The Contrary to what we say about the Nazis and Hitler today, they was like rock stars. The Nazis, man, listen, if you was in the military in the 40s, you wanted to leave your country and go join the Nazis. That was before they started cursing Hitler. But back in the day, everybody wanted to be a Nazi. They was the, man, listen, the Nazis can march their ass off, bro. When one take a step, they all take it in unison. You can hit pause at any point of the video. You will see them niggas is making one big step as one body. And if you can hear the sound of thousands of foot hitting the ground at the same time, man, they said when the Nazis was marching down the streets of Germany, it sounded like motherfucking thunder roaring. They sounded like the giant in the jack of the beanstalk. fee fi fo fum is how big Nazi was with their syncretism. They were synced together, buddy. I mean, they was identical. I can't, I can't praise it enough because I like drill and ceremony. And I was in the color guard. And I know how much of a headache it is to get a flight full of men to make one step at the same time. Hitler did that with thousands of troops. And y'all don't even know you was looking at a miracle, bro. Ain't no military done that since then. And won't no military do it until after they put us in, in, in fucking a blockchain. That's why the, the Bible say every knee shall bow and confess at the same time. Hitler already did that. Every tongue and knee bowed and professed that Hitler was the Fuhrer or the Savior, the Messiah, God. And they did it at the same time and they added on TV and it was the loudest sound in the fucking world that humans can make. All right. You know about the sound that come from an NFL or NBA game, bro. Do you know how big Nazis German and military was and those uh, ceremonies that you see on TV? Nigga, them was thousands of troops doing them formations. We struggle to do them same um, sync or uh, drill ceremonies with just hundreds of troops. And it looked horrible. Hitler did that shit with thousands of troops. And when they was moving, it was looking like birds in the sky. When the birds get synced together and they move like one body. Bro, the only way you can achieve that shit is with some kind of technology, bro. I don't care what nobody say. Hitler used blockchain technology on Germany, bro. And want me to tell you how I know I ain't lying? For you to join a German military, when you went through training, they did all kind of brain surgery and experiments with the Nazis. Nigga, go and research the Nuremberg trials. They was fucking with the Nazis' mind. Whatever Hitler was doing to his troops, he made them motherfuckers loyal and like a blockchain. And when the world saw that, all them said, oh, we got to have that. We, 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 we need that. The new militaries in the future is going to be just like Nazi Germany was, bro. You want to know why I'm telling you that Nazi Germany was the most powerful military force on the history of the earth? Even more powerful than Egypt and all them? Because this which y'all don't realize, never and ever on the earth has every single nation in the world went against one fucking nation. And that's facts. It took every fucking nation in the world to stop one nation called Nazi Germany. Tell me a military where that, where, where that happened at. I'll wait. That ain't, that ain't even true with the Egyptian army, man. 
Even the Roman army had allies, man. Germany ain't have no allies, brother. Germany took on the whole world. Bro, it ain't never been a military to do that before Germany, and it ain't going to be one to do it afterwards. It took the whole fucking world to stop Germany. And you telling me Hitler wasn't using some kind of secret technology with his troops, man? Hitler was using some kind of blockchain technology on his folks. He was ahead of his time and they weren't ready for it yet. And it took everybody army in the world to stop that new technology. They, they were saying Germany has super soldiers, dog. Like a, Germ a Nazi German soldier, if you go and read what was happening in the world, they said they would need at least... Four regular troops from among the other nations for each Nazi. When have you ever heard military people talk like that? I was in the military, bro. That is something to brag about, nigga. I was a soldier. Did you hear me? For every Nazi German soldier, it would take four regular other soldiers just for, for, that, for them in, in combat. What the fuck was Hitler doing to his army? What made him so fearless? What made him, them Nazi soldiers, when they captured their enemy, they ain't have no emotions, man. They tortured you. What did Hitler do to get rid of their consciousness? Why were they all acting the same as if it was just one personality? If you met a hundred different Nazi soldiers in that day, you just met one soldier. Because they all was the same. It was a blockchain. I don't care if you met a thousand different uh, Nazi German soldiers. You will only remember one personality. Because you was dealing with a blockchain, bro. And I don't care what nobody say. Hitler was using the technology that they, use, that they trying to complete now to make us a blockchain. Hitler had it already. That's why it took the whole world to gang up on him because Hitler had a handicap with the technology. You may say, well, damn, why did it take the whole world to defeat Hitler? Because Nazi had the most advanced technology. So the rest of the world couldn't defeat Nazi Germany's technology without numbers. That's the only way you can compete if you ain't got the tech. So they formed the UN and the everybody in the world went against Hitler. And it, and it wasn't easy either, which shows you the power and technology that Nazi Germany had. But when they were defeated, you think they was going to tell you all that? No, they ain't going to tell you the glory of Germany and how Germany was the shit and how everybody on the, in the world was worshiping Hitler. They ain't going to tell you that the world forgot about that. That there was a time where Americans wanted to be Nazis. They ain't going to tell you that, man. Every military in the world wanted to be like the Nazis. Now everybody talking shit about them. I'm trying to show y'all, man. Later in, in my second, when, when I do this in the future... I'm going to get into why the Antichrist people had the mark in their forehead and why God people had a mark too, because they won in the same. But we'll reinforce that argument in part two. I'm going to go ahead and start shutting it down. But in part two, we're going to continue this and get into the seal of God. This is the seal that the Christians receive in their forehead in the last days. And if you look at it, it's the fucking Tesla T. In the book of Revelation, it talk about the Christians receiving a mark in their forehead for eternal life. In my next video, I'm going to show you how that mark is the Tesla technology because here go the, the actual seal of God right here. No Christian can argue with me on this because if you ask a Christian to show you the seal of God, they're going to look like a damn dummy. 
So don't even try to act smart. You need to just take notes, Christians. Because y'all been talking about a seal of God in a church for, for years, but you never showed it before. And here it is right here. This the seal that you was going to receive to make you like Christ. Why? This is your crown of thorns around your head, family. In a minute on the next stream, I'm going to go into this sacred geometry and show you the technological instruments that shape just like this. What they're going to be using to seal that neural link on you and get you to immortality and to this new Jerusalem. So this seal of God is real. Christians don't know what it looked like because they don't research outside the Bible. They Bible talk about a seal of God, but the Bible don't show it. But the Christian too stupid to go seek out the seal. Now, your Bible tell you about a seal that you're going to receive. And ain't no Christian thought, hey, what is going to look like? Let me research what the seal of God looked like. It's been in the church for millennia, you dummies. You know why the pastors in the church don't want them seeking this out? Because most Christians think that they're going to get a cross in their forehead like a fool. They think that the symbol of their God is the cross. But the cross ain't nothing but the symbol of how you were crossed. You were double crossed. One stick up vertically, one stick horizontally. That's how you became a fall. That's how you fell from the garden with religion. You was double crossed. The symbol you got ain't the true symbol of the God you worship. All of y'all God's true symbol is the serpent that's worn by all of the space programs. The serpent God is Yahweh. The true symbol of all y'all religion is the uh, seal of God here, the tetragrammaton. It's not the cross. It's not that little ugly symbol they use in Buddhism and in Islam. Because the agenda of all these religions is the same. This symbol. Now, all religions got these different symbols, but all of them serving the same agenda, which is surrounding this symbol. Which show you you had a fake symbol the whole time. And it, the true agenda is the one they going to put in your forehead Think, God damn it. Think about what I'm saying, folks. If you are a Christian and your symbol is the cross, when Christ come back, why, why ain't he putting a cross in his people forehead, man? If the symbol of Christianity is the cross, why when Christ return, people getting the tetragrammaton of Yahweh in their forehead? Why is Christ showing up carving the devil symbol in his people head, man? Answer me, you deep niggas. Why ain't cross coming back if he giving them immortality and resurrection? They taught me that the symbol for that was the cross. So why ain't Christ coming back carving that in his folks forehead? Christ coming back carving the same symbol in his people forehead that the damn Antichrist and the beast carving in his damn people forehead, man. And we're going to get into that in the, in the damn next lecture. How Christ and the Antichrist return on earth mocking their people with the same damn symbol. Why the church ain't talking about that? This stuff get under my skin, y'all. I'm sorry, man. What you just looked at was the Tetragrammaton star David, man. They worship this shit in Satanism. I'm asking a question, man. Why is Jesus star and Lucifer star the same? Because this the same star that the three wise men saw above Bethlehem. How can it be Jesus star and the devil star if they ain't the same person, family? How can the star of Bethlehem also be the Lucifer, the morning star? 
and church act like they dumb and don't know the similarities. Why did the Bible call Jesus the morning star and they call devil the morning star? We're going to talk about it in the next one. The reason why this satanic symbol is the same symbol of Yahweh. It's, it's a double-headed dragon, y'all. It's a double-headed beast. The two heads appear different, but they connected to the same body. The Dalai Lama and the Pope are both under the 2045 agenda, family. It don't matter what your religious symbol is, because the true symbol is the Tetragrammaton. And that's what the angels and the demons carving in their people forehead in the last days. And ain't nobody asking questions. Ain't nobody in the last days wondering why the Antichrist people got the same symbol in their forehead that God's people got. That scripture been in the Bible and ain't nobody dealing with it in the church. Read the book. Read your book, man. You want to know why Birdman got a big old devil star pentagram on his head? Because they all, listen, these rich rappers don't want to lose their empire. Young Thug, Birdman, you name it. I ain't picking on them. The list goes on. They part of the devil's agenda. Because when you make all the money these rappers making, ain't no way you finna tell Young Thug to die a natural death and to get, give up all his riches to go to some ancestral land to be a fucking vegan. Why you think all of the rich people in on it? They condemn, y'all, because they traded their soul for the riches, and since they care so much about their possessions, they'll follow it into hell, man. Don't you go with them. All of these celebrities glad to go. Can you imagine how happy you would be if you was the rapper Birdman? Let's pull him up. If you was Birdman with all that money and somebody came to you and said, hey, Birdman, you can live forever, but you got to be part of our agenda. All of us rich men, you know how we get rich deceiving the people with our Luciferian agenda. We get rich at day of spence. We all devils. Now we all want to live forever, bird man. See, these rappers got all that money, but that ain't enough. What makes a rapper sell their soul? These rappers want the same thing that the devils want in power, immortality. See, these devils in power been promise, promising these young rappers immortality for years. Nigga, Jay-Z over a thousand years old. They got pictures of Jay-Z in the 1800s. I'm not making this up, y'all. Some of these celebrities been reincarnating here like Queen Elizabeth to keep their damn blessings. Why would you want to make all that money that you can't spend in a lifetime and say, well, all my paradise over when I die. And now I got to go back to the ancestors to be judged. The ancestors going to punish me. And I got to pay the price and live out karma. These rappers and celebrities don't want to do that. So they in the bed with the agenda. All of them trying to escape judgment. They know they deceive the world. They've been kicked in the, kicking this can for thousands of years, but death is still waiting on them, just like it's waiting on us. And I'm not going to keep running from it into the abyss with these archons. Die a natural death. It'll be the bravest thing you ever did in your life. Why the bird man got this star on top of his head? Because that nigga can't wait for the neural link. What you think this Neuralink is? It's the star of David on you niggas head. That star is technology. That's why I kept showing you the star of David. It's the same star that the Luciferians using. It's the crown of thorns on your head. It's the light of the new Jerusalem cracking into this reality. But that's the light of Saturn. That's a false light. 
That's how you get the word ill Illuminati. Ill means sick. Ill means false. Illuminati mean light. Lumen. Ill light. False light. Don't fall for the false light, man. See, want me to tell you something? The false light is blue. I'm trying to tell you something. The false light is blue. The true light is white, baby. Don't fall for the false light of the blue bloods and the blue bean. The holographic body they give you ain't made out of pure white light. It's said that our ancestors were the angels in this heavenly abode and they walked around in white robes and they weren't talking about nothing literal. They was talking about the white robe of your anointed soul. The light of your soul is a beautiful, pure white light. When that light becomes stained and tainted with Yahweh's deception, it don't shine white no more. It shines blue. That's the holographic body, the fake body that's being projected by the fake light of Saturn. That light don't shine white. It shines blue. So when you look at all of the artwork with the Big Bang, with Jesus cracking open the sky with Zeus, you're dealing with blue light. Stay away from the blue light, because if you know anything about blue lights, let me show you what they do to you when you grow wings. When you little bugs grow your wings and you want to fly out of this earth, fly away from the blue light. The light of Orion is the blue light. When you die, remember what you're going to remember what I'm saying when you die. Some of y'all going to love me so much when you actually die. <laughs> you're going to say, how this nigga knew we was going to see this and he ain't dead. Because I'm that confident that the ancestors knew what they was talking about. I know it. if they said it, I guarantee you that's what it's going to be like. The st every star in the sky, everything that glitter ain't gold. Some people going to be deceived by fake light when they get out this body. And they going to follow that blue light. You know why? And they going to get cooked and zap, boom. That blue light, see? Let me show you. You know why the bug flew into that blue light? It was looking for the moon, y'all. Every bug that flew in that light was looking for the moon. The moon is your new mama. The moon is your great mother in the next life. Is your mama on earth in the next realm with the ancestors waiting to give birth for you now? Your soul go through the moon. Why you think religion cursed the moon and they gave you sun worship? They don't want y'all to know the way out. The moon is the gateway out of here when you die. And it shines the purest, whitest, purest light on earth. Next time it's a full moon outside, look at the light. It's a creamy, pure white, like sperm, virgin white, Jesus robe white, what the moon give off. But the light of Christ is blue. Go research what I'm saying. When the bug think that it's flying into the moon and it fly into that blue light, it's a false light and it kills that bug. Them bugs using the moon to find their way home, just like we do when we die. But what happens is this thing acting like it's fooling the bug like it's the moon. And the bug get captured in false light and never make it home. That's what they doing with blue beam technology, with this false blue light, blue beam. Just remember what I'm saying. It, none of this stuff is valuable in your life right now. A lot of what I'm giving y'all going to be valuable when you take your last breath and you get out of this body. Oh, this shit going to be so important to you that you're going to be so goddamn happy. You spent six, 10 hours on these kind of streams. I'm teaching you how to navigate the af afterlife. That's what the ancestors was doing. When I woke up to it, I said, I'm going to show others. 
Because if what the ancestors saying is true about the afterlife, we need to know this. These folks are evil, man. And y'all need to help me do this. You better believe it's some bugs that was telling all them dummies that ain't the moon. <laughs> Everybody ain't going to listen. You know how many bugs was looking for the moonlight and they saw that little thing right there? And it was always a smart bug with them telling them, hey, man, that ain't the moon, nigga. Look at the light is blue. You know the moonlight is white. And them dummies, hey, oh, nigga, that's the moon. And they got their ass zapped. You know it was some bugs that was telling all them bugs that flew into the trap, that's not the true moonlight. But they didn't listen. So they ended up getting their ass zapped. So that's why Birdman got that star on his head. Because that's what the Neuralink is. Let me go back to the Neuralink. And I'm going to let y'all go. We wrapping it up now. We wrapping it up now. I just want to do the visual one more time. So y'all can see. Why did they call him Birdman? You know who else was a Birdman? Saturn. Look at him with his wings on. Y'all don't think these rappers know the truth. They get played to play dumb. Most of these rappers ain't even they self no more. They part of the Arconian blockchain. They, the only individuality you see in these rappers it's the last version, the last essence of what they sold when they sold they sold. They all act unique. All these rappers and stuff, but they all part of one big demon blockchain. Some of these rappers get so far into the cult that they give them immortality. But you know what I believe? That ain't no honor amongst thieves. And I think that when these uh, rappers try to keep all of their riches with immortality that these folks actually hijack they goddamn bodies. So every celebrity that's on a certain level start acting different and they look different. And we say Kodak Black different. Birdman is different now. They never look the same way they look when they came in the game. It's like a new version of them. Because they go and get a new avatar. These niggas going to live on forever like Jay-Z doing. That nigga Jay-Z just as old as uh, Queen Elizabeth. Him and Abramovich, the, 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 the witch bitch, Abramovich. That bitch over 10,000 years old. Telling you these celebrities don't want to make all that money and not live forever. But I guarantee you when they get the devil they soul and they trust him. They find themselves in a dark place like on that movie, Get Out. And they realize they trapped in eternal darkness and that they body walking around doing everything, but they ain't experiencing it. Their consciousness is trapped on a hard drive somewhere in, 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 in Elon office. <laughs> and so the shell of their body just walking around still performing for us. But it ain't them in there, y'all. They consciousness on the other side. Look at here. Look at how this thing look on top of your head. And look at what Birdman showing you. Birdman to give you wings to get the hell up out of here. But these Luciferians want you to fly deeper into the abyss. The ancestors want you to fly up out of here. You got to stay away from the false light. These rappers in the soul, they soul. Ain't no more hope for them. They condemn. Ain't no hope for them. Family still hope for you. It's a reason this thing look like a star on our head. And that's what the rapper Birdman telling you. A lot of them do this kind of crap. But I'm going to get on out of here. We're going to go more into it on, in a future one. 
when you look at this symbol of God, which is the symbol of Satan and Yahweh both, it's a circle with the tetragrammaton in it. That's what Birdman giving you, a bald head with the, with the seal in the middle. These rappers know what's going on. A bald head with the star in the middle. That's what this image represents. What Birdman tell it, a circle, the head with the star or the neural link in the middle of it. Like the Bible said, you receive a mark on the head. All right. You receive the mark on the head. Right on your big ass head, nigga. They gonna. They, some of y'all niggas neural links gonna have to be bigger but with your big headed ass and my sin for the people with your big headed ass <laughs> but let me get up out of here man um I, I'm, I'll wrap it up on part two with the rest of it I don't know when I'll be back but I'll be back here with part two probably try to do it tomorrow but I ain't gonna make no promises but I, let me go ahead and call out any donations that I receive because I do appreciate you guys' gracious contributions and supporting what I do. Let me know you appreciate me. I know time's hard, but please donate if you can because it helps me to continue doing what I'm doing. I'm spending six to ten hours on these things and even when I'm not on them, I'm spending six to ten hours doing the research. So I'm truly giving a hell of a lot of my time, which is why I don't want to be a beggar, but I do want my time compensated. You know, you got some people get on this thing for one hour and make three thousand dollars and they just talking bad about women like that's all I'm saying. Like you got some folks that go live for two hours bashing women and make $5,000, I go live 10 hours, giving you, connecting us with the ancestors, giving us some that can save the souls of these children, literally, because they think tech is the answer. And, 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 and the people who promote this New World Order agenda go live for one hour, make a powerful message, and they people show them, we appreciate your one hour, it's the moment they crank it up, you they can't even... Some of these shows don't even call out donations because the whole show will just be them calling out donations. That's how many they getting. It'll be too disruptive. And they there for one hour and people making it rain. I'm, I'm watching the shit. I'm pocket watching, right? <laughs> I'm pocket watching. And I'm getting discouraged. I can't lie to y'all. I get discouraged when I see that shit. It make me want to do less of this shit. Like, it makes me discouraged. Like, hold on, Brother Sanchez. You spending 10 hours researching, 12 hours on that joint getting horse away from your family, and you ain't making, I don't even want to tell y'all. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying, it, it, it hurts. Like, Real talk, I can't even cap. Like, it make you want to say, fuck it. Let me talk about what they talk about. Let me get in on this manosphere shit. Let me kind of water my shit down a little because I don't got to talk for them but an hour and I can make $1,000 as opposed to all them hours I'm putting in to really give them the truth to make 50 bucks. Now, I'm just exaggerating, but it's... It can be discouraging for people to, to it take a lot of patience to disseminate this ancient stuff. And so you really need to compensate if you appreciate a person time because it's really discouraging when your enemies can joke when they go to joking the, in these secular settings. And they like to say, and them niggas be over there streaming for 10 hours, ain't making no money. We go live one hour over here and we, 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 we make it rain because we support our movement and our audience is supportive. And it is. Them people are so supportive with the ratchet shit, with the dog and the women. They throwing $500 donations, man. It's, it's crazy. 
But the people on the truth side ain't as supportive, even though it take way more work to tell the truth. We should be funded. We should be able to show our bank account to these uh, evil niggas and say, ah, how you fucking sellouts. This what the truth could have got you. But everybody know the people ain't going to support the truth. So they can. It's just the opposite now. Them niggas show they bank account to us. And they be like, ah, how you smart ass niggas. This what the lie could have got you niggas. The people supporting the lie. They stun on us all the time like that. Why you niggas over there being deep and getting into all that flat earth shit? How much money you making? Why you on there for 10 hours, right? That's how they talking. They can stunt with their money. And show you how much they people support what they do. And it shocks me that they're right, man. Like, they really got huge support bases for that negativity. Where the positive channels be struggling. And they working so much harder. You don't have to study to go and bash women. You just wake up and go live and do it. I prepare for hours for these presentations. That's why it take me hours to deliver them, to receive pennies. And I got to let y'all know that, that the, the poor righteous teacher is something we got to do away with. It's time for righteous teachers to be able to say, hey, to all of you niggas who sold your soul, look how much money I just made on my show telling the truth, bitch. Nah, you fucking sell out. You could have got this money telling the truth. But we can't do that. I got to agree with them. That if these kids want to get rich, man, you're going to have to go over there with the liars and be on their side because we can give you the truth. But I'll have to tell that young man, you're going to be broke, my nigga. Shit, no. <laughs> that's, I mean, I got to keep it real. That's what these rappers got on us. They can tell these children, you hear all that positive shit they talking over there? Where's your uh, Tommy Hill figure shirt, though? These kids under peer pressure, where your Jordans at? All of your friends who telling a lie and with the demon time, they balling out with jewelry on. You over here with this kumbaya shit, you a little young broke nigga. So what's your incentive for people like Jason. And I ain't just up here to give you gain for money. I ain't begging right now. This shit need to be said. It really needs to be said. We losing when it comes to support. Man, you want to know who got the best support in the world? The demons, bro. The fucking liars. Man, once you move up in the ranks of coming on here telling lies, you'll be able to buy you some land in a year, nigga. The poor righteous teacher telling you the importance of buying land, but he can't fucking afford it. <laughs> the damn demon ain't even teaching your children the importance of buying land, but they can afford it. We losing. Don't you know people can do so much more when they empowered by their support system? Hitler was nobody without Germany. Hitler's support system is what made him. There's no way our community can compete with these folks if we ain't willing to financially contribute the way the enemies are. If you think you can invest $10 to make a better world versus the man who invested $10 million to make an evil world, you're a damn fool. And that's the reason the world's so fucked up. People put their money where their mouth is. Because I know that's true. Evil motherfuckers donate to these evil channels. Bro, they make it rain. These evil folks put their money where their mouth is, man. And these evil YouTubers ain't struggling, bro. I hate that term, poor righteous teacher. 
But shit, I ain't rich, goddammit. So, hey, I'm a righteous teacher. I ain't rich, so I'm one of them now, goddammit. But sometimes, man, I have to say, even though I know it was worth it, I still ask myself the question sometime, if y'all want to know. A lot of my peers pass me on, man, as far as the money go. But the thing about it, they hate on me more than I hate. Like, I don't hate on none of my peers that I grew up with, but they hate on me because of my popularity. I'm in a teacher position. I'm changing people in a good way. Deep inside, they want to do that, but they chose the route of doing what's best for their pockets, not what's best for the world. So they envy me for actually doing what I want to do. I'm living out my soul's will. They ain't living out their soul's will, but they driving in Bentleys and Rafes. Yeah, some of my family members and homeboys and peers that I was competing with, they driving around the hood and Hellcats and shit. They watch my YouTube videos and I be like, how are they hating on me? And them niggas balling out and I ain't making money like that. They hate the fact that they ain't really happy with their money and I'm happy because I'm fulfilling the, the fate of my soul. They can't do both. But I think we can if we support our people the way that uh, the evil people do. Because if it's the will of your soul to ball out and live like the rappers, then for you to fulfill that, you need to be a sellout and demon. And that's what the youth are doing. It's they, it's they soul will to be in a heavenly abode on this earth, which is what the, the lifestyle that the rappers and all them pushing. That's the, our natural birthright. So that's why we're willing to kill for it, steal for it. It ain't the money, it's the lifestyle. So if the people telling a lie got the lifestyle that the people of the truth supposed to have, they winning. That's the spiritual warfare. There's an economic aspect to this. The people that's telling the truth talk about living in paradise every day and being on a beach and being with the trees and not having to work and be slaves. And that's what the people who telling the truth describe heaven like. But yet the people who said that our heaven is that way, we live in hell and stuff. And the people who tell a lie every day is actually living in the Garden of Eden. Most of these celebrities and actors will tell you, oh, I'm a vegan. I don't eat meat. They work out, practice yoga. They meditate. They go to the beach every day. They in the jungle and they evil than a motherfucker. A evil ass demon. Living your way of life in paradise. And here you go with the truth and you know you ain't a demon. You in the projects with the noodles and the celebrity in the jungle, in the, in, 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 in the secret mansion with nature, practicing meditation. You the damn angel. You don't meditate and don't eat right. You got to rush every day, fast food. So you know the life you supposed to be living as a truther, but you look over there at the liar and see him living it. You know what will happen? Future generations of truthers will say, why the fuck am I still telling the truth when the life I want can be given to me by telling a lie? That's what happened when we tell our children to, to, to be righteous, but we don't reward them for it. When society say we want more people like Brother Sanchez to speak out and spend hours deciphering and all that, and you don't reward it, that's what happened. More people like me turn the other way. Because at the end of the day, we're all seeking this lifestyle. And that the evil people who run the world experience their lifestyle more than us because we don't support each other like the demons do. We call ourselves the conscious community and gang members got more love for each other than some of us. 
that gang member, if you disrespect his brother, they'll all get in the car and go shoot your house up. Somebody smack one of y'all in that chat room. Ain't none of you truthers going to help the other one. We ain't nothing like the demons when it come to supporting each other. That's why you can have a group of people with the truth and it ain't setting them free. Shout out the noble yourself, L. And shout out the Quentin Borkin. Shout out to my brother Robert Cardacci, Piff Trip, my sister Ashley, Caroline. Shout out the Peabody Grind, Julian Jarrett. And I'm just giving shout outs from the other day too. Shout out to Nicholas Jones. Thank you all for the Cash App donations, family. I really appreciate y'all's support. Much love. A big shout out to my Patreons on all tiers. And I got to get up out of here real quick because it's been, been too long. So peace and much love. See y'all on the next one. Yeah.